what classifies well, one as real not quick, that not fallacy possible. does exist it's called ad populum and no, i just want to hear what you think i just want to hear what, what you think about that uh, so the ad populum fallacy is same thing, only applies if it's just random people, doesn't apply to actual authorities. Um, no, it you, actually applies to also no, authorities. No, it doesn't. Because you can go to a math professor and tell him it literally, uh, I, 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 plus wait, wait, one equals two, and he can tell you, no, it equals three. Stop. have gonna, to accept it because I'm a math professor. So if you go to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophies on fallacies, number nine and ten, it literally says this only applies if it is a false authority. Authority. It literally says, yes, real authorities are completely legitimate. No, TJ, I'm just quickly, how would you, how would you say uh, you would classify an authority as being valid or invalid? How would you make that demarcation? Um, if they used a methodology that can accurately differentiate imagination from reality, something like that. And, and how? On what basis would that be? How? What, what, what basis? Yeah. Science? What? No, okay, but you're now okay. But okay, but now you're going to reappeal to what authority, and then who's going to decide the science? What? A group of people or the most strongest person? Yeah. No, okay. science is what the differentiates or the authority. No, no, no. Yeah. science is what I, differentiates. I, 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 I want to say something, but uh, you guys are all talking to me. But so can uh, you see, there's going to be a loop here. So how are you going to get out of it? What? There's no loop oh, here. There's, let there's let me just. Okay, no, no, no. Okay, okay. The, the question: Give What validates the authority seconds. and not? Yeah. Uh, correspondence to reality. No, okay, but in the okay, on what validates that in the end, there's going to be a consensus or an authority. No, again, no, like you... no, no. What validates that is novel testable predictions. Okay, done by who? The consensus. Who's going to agree upon by consensus? The group, yeah. The yes, because the, the consensus. The whole point of the methodology is that if uh, two scientists, all scientists hate each other, and they're trying to prove everyone else false, and so if an idea is presented and you can't prove it false then it's accepted by the consensus because they're unable to prove it false. They don't want to accept it. It's not like they're biased and like, oh, we're just going to accept okay. it. It's because they are unable to prove it false because even it's when false you, reality. Exactly. So even when I ask you uh, what makes an authority, uh, let's say, valid or not, in the end, you're just going to basically say authoritative consensus for everything well, you say. No, this is authoritative this is consensus. The, no. you back everything. Grizzly, Grizzly, good, good, after, good after you guys. Good after both you guys. So Grizzly, wait. Um, who would you go to fix a shoe? Uh, well, make... one second, one second. Wait, no, 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 no. Who would you? Electrician. Oh, oh, oh. Electrical. Electrical. Ele... Wait, 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 wait. Electrical wiring in your house. Who's going to be more likely knowledgeable about this issue? Right. Uh, is bro, it the average bit, person? I don't want to derail this. Is it no, 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 he's answering your question. Or is it an electrician? He's, he's answering your question. The question, the answer of what makes an authority is someone who's been demonstrated to be able to succeed at doing the thing. So if they are able... Okay, and demonstrated by who? How are you going to demo... How, what that's, makes that's demonstration the correspondence about it? reality. If they can do in reality the thing they say they but can according do... According to who? Okay, they can do it in reality, but according to who? Who's no going to validate that? Stop fact? saying there is no according. If they can literally cause in reality the thing to happen, there is no opinions. You don't okay, get an opinion. Okay, I get what you're saying. Yeah, so, the, so their true talent for it, the true ability. Right, right, then who gets to decide right. that? No is one. It, no one to gets who? to decide that. If yeah. they can cause in reality the things they say they can cause, no one gets to decide that. If I said I could blow up a building and I blow up the building, you don't get an opinion. There's not a panel who's like, did he blow up the building? It's not up for debate. It either happened or it no, didn't. No, it, because because the, the, the definition of what blown up, of what successful is, of what uh, no, uh, no, certifies something. No, it's not. No, it's not. Let me that finish. Is, hold, not on, let me finish. hold on, hold on, hold on. It's, it's not Please, up for let debate. Me finish, let me just finish something. Right. What well, certifies something as being like, no, okay, we know nothing, that to be a fact. Nothing, so, there's no certification. Reality is what does the certification. If I say an I event... I understand that, stop, but... Stop, stop, stop. If I say this event will happen in reality and the event happens, that is what gives you authority. So whether you want to play word games with whether or not what I said, if my statement was I'm going to blow up a building, and by those I use the contemporary definitions of all of those words, and it happens, that means I'm an expert at blowing up buildings. I understand that, but brother, don't, don't you understand? The wider picture is that people who can make predictions with different models. So you've got your model uh, obtained by consensus, That's great. science, That's a whatever. Great, great example. Uh, yes. Okay, you can make some predictions, okay? But then there are some other people who've got different models, make predictions, and they're also uh, valid. But the thing is, you're not. You're saying, well, that's not. That's not true because of what? Because is that in the end going to be Whoa, go back. So, so the predictions. Calm, if, if, if one sec, if your it's model was able to make predictions oh, and confirm them that they were correct, then your model would be completely reasonable to believe. Now. From my expertise in the field, I know they've all been proven false because I'm pretty well acquainted with the research done on 
predicting personalities and astrology and all those different things. And I know why they fail. Um, but if you have some new model that's able to do them successfully, that would be great evidence. And you would have to present that because I'm fairly certain it's all false. Now, now if you present bro, evidence, bro, you can't great. be just looking, bro, you can't just be looking at through one notice board of your no, you, uh, you uh, reading. You hold the burden of proof. Uh, you, you hold oh, the burden right, of proof. Finish. Right, I, I didn't interrupt you. Hold on, hold on. So you can't just look at one bulletin board of what you see considered to be like you the reason I'm interrupting I'm gonna serve you too. So so the reason I'm interrupting here is because I don't need to do anything. If you claim that you have successful predictions, you need to present them. You need to show I'm not them claiming that, dude. That's what you said. I, I you asked said, you a question. How do you validate on authority or not? And you're basically saying, well, another authority is going to decide No, no, that. that's that's the first question I already answered. And we validated authority by if they have the skills to do the... So you think they actually question. know something, right? Grizzly, stop interrupting oh. him. At one point, are you going to shut up, right? He's the most of the talk. I've right. interjected one, yes. two, one yes. or two words. Yes. And when I tried to make a statement, he interrupts me, actually. Right, because I don't think you're addressing the point. Because your, your argument was, is how do you prove an authority? And I said, an authority is somebody who can do what they claim to do in reality. And the correspondence to reality is what determines them to be an authority. And then you said something about uh, if you have two methodologies that both make Tesla predictions... Um, and, um, I would agree if they both successfully make novel predictions, they're both reasonable to believe. I just haven't seen any of those made in your camp. And, and what would happen, sir, what would happen if two different models from two different uh, uh, vantage points are making predictions that are both uh, correct, but they're, too, but they're doing it from two different models? They're Which both reasonable. Believe? They're both reasonable to believe as long as they make the same predictions or similar scope predictions. Well, that's okay. Fine. So then, so then, so then, your material. So then, when you make all these, like, um, uh, for example, uh, claim that spirituality is false, it's all kooky, and all the rest of it. Right. All you're basically saying is, I haven't seen the literature. I haven't seen enough people agree with with this <laughs> no, stuff. Basically, no, you know no, saying? I'm saying you have provided no evidence. We have provided evidence that it's false. We've proven all of the predictions that people who claim those things are false. Therefore, it is bad. That that is a thing we can say is wrong. Yeah. We can reasonably conclude that, that evidence is something is people have made up. But the reality is that that, 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 that evidence is obtained in a, in a, in a different uh, method rather than yeah. through laboratories. Well, uh, a, novel, a, predictions, a novel, novel predictions are great. We can, it doesn't, I don't care what way you do them. If you make any novel predictions by shaking a magic eight ball, that would be fine. We can, as long as we can observe sure. the predictions, that's evidence. We don't need to test it. Well, in the well, okay, well, well, the predictions, okay, I'll refer to them. In the, uh, the, 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 for example, there are people who can predict. Uh, you you can have that uh, the person finish mm -hmm. the conversation. That's, that's all, folks. Nice and shut up. Well, 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 mm -hmm. There are people who can predict someone's personality traits very accurately. It's people who can predict natural events like no, natural disasters. Right? No, they can't. They, they can. Uh, no. yeah, there are even animals that can do it. That are like humans. <laughs> uh, Wait. No, they can't. You trust those people, but that's science. So, 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 for example, there are, there are, it's, it's a known fact that animals can predict an earthquake. They, they, like they, a, don't, two, they don't predict. Days, they don't predict the earthquake. They have, like, birds specifically have parts of their brains that are. Um, sensitive what? to electromagnetic fields and so very oh vibrations. fields oh those yes. fields which you're going to call physical all of a sudden yeah well, they, yes those they, they can also physical. I, call yes. I call it spiritual you, i call that spiritual that you, you call, can, it, call it you can call it a potato magnetic fields are spiritual. oh you're going to say physical for that yeah i find yes. when it's quantum stuff that's that that's animal is. is a football field spiritual <laughs> yes well i mean Anim okay, animals so, can also hear a Animals can also hear a much that wider range of sounds. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, 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 hold on. so, when, a human, hold on. so when a human being, so for example, when a human being, let's say, meditates and can predict an earthquake, let's say a month in advance, you're going to say, whoa, that's just electromagnetic, right? No, no they can't. No. It just doesn't happen. No one has been able to do that, though. The, the animals that leave uh, in the vicinity of an earthquake almost always do it very close to the time. It's not significantly different. And I'm pretty okay, sure a lot of it has to deal with sound. Someone, could someone mute intuitionistus for a while because he wants to dominate the whole conversation here? Please. I'm, I'm not the one, the one talking the most. Yeah, he, he does, oh, he's actually, not, he's he not over. It over. It doesn't Every... seem like... I would only mute him if he was like interrupting. He does seem to give people the chance to talk, so I wouldn't uh, mute him just for that. If you wanted to bring up a different well, topic, actually, that's fine too. Actually, before he came, Jimmy was giving a Kalama argument. Yes, we were talking about that before. He's an Aussie man, so he he has to talk. You see, they they're just gonna make personal jabs. You see, I'm not even Australian. I say, yeah, yeah, I was about well, to say, like, it's, it's, it's not an insult. British. It's not an he's insult. A, he's to a be. British retard. It's just a jab, that's all. It's all right. I gave him one back. Hopefully he doesn't moan. That's fine. Do we have any other arguments? Oh, stop slapping people with fishes.
But, but oh, dude, what I'm saying is the, 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 the same <laughs> stuff spiritualists would call like the soul and all that. You're just calling it fields. Well, no, 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 no. So again, again, opinion. in science, we have demonstrated. We we say we think this exists, and if this exists, here are all the predictions we can make, and then we confirm them. And because of that, this is all justified. Whereas the spiritualists are just making shit up, and they don't they don't confirm anything they say. They just make shit up. So the difference here is no, that the scientists they don't, they don't one spend second, their one time second, in laboratory. One sec, one sec. Because the scientists have confirmed theirs is real they're allowed to say it's physical the spirits are just making stuff up but anybody can make stuff up and so the difference here is that you need a method to differentiate imagination from reality novel predictions in science right. does that spiritualism doesn't so they're not allowed well, the to say that it's spiritual the, the point is that those spiritualists they, they they tend to not spend their time in laboratories they they're perceiving all this and, and, and let's say codifying all this in a different method not through like let's say spreadsheets how and numbers and that? how do you verify that so they verify on a personal inter, interpersonal level uh, yeah, they on, tell you they level. tell you they, you claim it. they say so yeah how the fuck why would you, know? you believe it that's the question and why, I, I don't know, but that's not it and also and referencing the natural world of course so they reference the natural, natural world, world with their individual. Uh, if, 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 Do you reference the natural world in a verifiable way again? Yeah. So they. So, they, so for example, they. Yeah. Uh, so these spiritualists. Are so may may I example. just uh, send you a private message because yeah. I cannot yeah. speak at all. One second. So so they would refer to things in the external world, things like the uh, astrological alignments and things like plants and roots and trees and all these uh, shamanic activ uh, activities that people have done, and they can make very accurate name. predictions. They can make then, very accurate then, predictions. Then make those predictions, plot those predictions, and do the math. Like, that is something you could literally do. Saying it's interpersonal and you can't do the math would be wrong in this case, because clearly they're making predictions. If they come true, they can plot those predictions and reality and see how much their predictions can port to reality. Like, that is completely doable. And the reason why no one's done that is because it doesn't work. No, 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 let me explain, right? Out of all the po possible uh, potential candidates of people that were going to be going to be doing this, uh, essentially have to be, let's say, high-minded, natural, healthy people, shamanic type people, who then are going to want to go in a laboratory and prove it and, do, and go down that path. M none of those people want to do that. And then the ones that oh. do, such a small amount, you don't get to see it in your Western, let's say, uh, inbox, dude. You don't, you don't need a lab for this. All you need is Excel. All you need is Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> Come on, that's the equivalent of a lab. If you no. can prove what? souls exist, you're going to be the like uh, most well-known scientist on the planet. Right? But I'll give you an example. The people, you wouldn't uh, even uh, need an people. Excel spreadsheet. You just need a notebook to write down the, this the shit. People, hold on. The people that are, for example, the spiritualists I'm talking about, they would be, for example, notifying all this in their own personal life. So they wouldn't be putting it in Excel. They would be putting it like maybe in a diary of how they experienced the natural world when they were on mushrooms or something. And they, would, and they would write down all these predictions in their own mind, in their own diary entries, which you're never going to believe. Actually, how do you verify like it though? This, why, why, why would you believe it? That's the shit. question. Well, well, so so if they do, if they're able to do this, there's this thing called the James Randi Foundation, and they offer a million dollar prize for anybody who can demonstrate the supernatural, any supernatural thing, souls, uh, mystic personality readings, whatever you want, energies around oh. people, any of those things. And they things. give up the prize. Yeah, and they the prize. It's like they can't actually, help win prize. It's, actually, it's actually, unfalsified. Actually, you can't. No, no, yeah, no, 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 no they gave it to a guy who claimed that he could supernaturally, like, uh, know Predict. the songs. No, no, know the songs on like vanilla. You know, like recording discs. You know, the old uh, vanilla like recording discs. Like that, he could touch it. He could uh, touch it and and know the song supernaturally. So the James Brown Foundation. Yeah, vinyl. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and and so they 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 created it. You know, controlled environment, right? With all, all of the things. And turns out the guy could actually do it. His hands were so sensitive. He could yeah. actually. Do it. He worked in the industry, and they gave him they gave him the price because technically he won. He proved something that beyond their scientific. Uh, well, you know, based on their scientific. Um, uh, or you got smart ass lucky. Yeah, yeah, right, right. This, this is be is, is, yeah, right. That he was but it's a beautiful really thing, but it's a beautiful so. thing because the guy, the guy later on just admitted, it's like, yeah, of course I didn't have sequential powers. No, I just, I, I just can fucking really sense it, right? There's a guy who could prove beyond statistical chance uh, something similar in a lab. I can't remember his name now, but uh, he said that it doesn't matter. The 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 establishment is just not going to let a foot in the door. 
so to say. Well, that's, that's what false. Do so, so, so what do you mean? Science you does no. accept things that are non-physical. Like there's an entire journal dedicated to psycho, uh, psychic soul reading mind stuff. And I forget, I've had several interviews with people about this. There, the science does accept papers on those things. They're just proven false all the time. If you could prove it, there are multiple different awards where you could win millions of dollars. Nobody has ever won them because they've been proven false. Uh, that's a bit hyperbolic. What? No, it's not. That, uh, yeah, there's just not millions not waiting for these guys. Man. Come on. Yeah, yeah there yeah, literally, there literally is. So if you prove this in a Nobel Prize, the prize, the monetary prize for winning a Nobel Prize is a million dollars. There are millions of dollars if you prove this stuff available. Metaphysics is just not something that can be generally provable in a conventional way. Yes, well, okay, oh, this, oh, is too where, bad. this is where Tito and I. This is this is. I don't. I'm not defending the metaphysical standpoint. I'm, I'm defending like the idea of proving metaphysics in the constraints no, not, of metaphysics not, is absurd. That's and not like, what he's saying. Like, like often, often people who delve in metaphysics demand the um uh the the, the the dispute to be argued within the realm of metaphysics which okay is, so uh, this is not stuff. this is wrong framing so this is where t t jump and i ended on our last discussion so he t jump admitted that if there is an immaterial realm then it won't be found in physics so but you don't have to find it in physics in order to give a demonstration of something that's not material so for example uh telekinesis or something like that uh, would would check that box under lab conditions now you're not going would, to be able telekinesis to telekinesis would, would would entail the manipulation of the brain especially when it comes to electromagnetism Are, why did you just by, cut by, me off by electromagnetism why did you just cut me bullshit. off how is that bullshit it's absolute bullshit. You, you can demonstrate if, things if you if they exist without using physical processes if well you, so no, but the problem you want to prove telekinesis you must use physical processes right you're moving something manipulation of the brain via some sort of mechanistic uh, electromagnetic uh way well no 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 it's, it's, not, it's, even, just it's not even an just object. that right it's just what, moving an object right telekinesis is about moving an object that's a physical thing you can you could that, test that no no but the energy the, 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 the energy is, the energy that was used to move bullshit. that object didn't come out of nowhere because if you're saying that that process is not a physical one, then you're describing a creation of energy moving an object, which nothing is nothing in the universe comes from uh, from from literally nothing. nothing. Yes. Yeah. So well, that energy has to come from somewhere. No. So the, it, the point it, is, the point is this: that whatever that effect is, is going to have to be reducible to a physical equation. No, if it's, not if, it's, if it's not, if it's not, then. You have good reason to believe did that you, something did that's you, not Did you really see the that. argument of this person like that? Like, I doubt it. Wait, what? Argument of what person? Did you really see the article to, like, to this person that's just talking that said that you agree that if anything, uh, if anything outside of the physical exists, it has to be proven in the context of the metaphysical? Like, I doubt that. I didn't say that. No, what? he said, T-Jump said that if there is an immaterial realm, it's not going to be found in physics. Well, no, no. So, I, yeah, I think it's possible to find an immaterial realm with physics, essentially. I think that if you make a testable prediction that I have an immaterial friend named Bob, and every time I pray to him, he gives me a gold brick, and you pray and you get a gold brick, that would be evidence of the immaterial realm. I think that's perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah but yeah, you think it's possible. Well, how likely is it, right? Like, I'm asking about, like, likelihood. Not as, oh, it's yeah. possible it's, that I, I, in another universe, am Batman, no? Yes, but that's so a, I don't, that's I don't a prediction. find it likely. That's not an equation. Yeah, I don't find it likely anybody's going to be able to successfully make predictions of the the okay, non physical. That makes sense. I agree. So, so for example, let's say let's just assume that there are something like platonic forms, like justice, right? Uh, that thing is, don't sigh. Okay, this is like the foundation of modern of Western thought. So when you say, <sighs> you're gonna get your ass muted. So, um. Let's say that that exists. Now, it might not exist, but let's hypothetically, for purposes of this argument, say it does. Things like justice aren't going to be reducible to an equation. And so on those grounds is what I mean by if that immaterial realm exists, and if it's true that it's informing this one, you're not going to find it in physics. Now, it could be not true, and T-Jump could be right, that things like justice are just fields. And then, oh, yes, yeah. and then you could find those in physics. 
Uh, but justice is just a concept. Like it's not the same as saying is a concept physical or material. It's not. Okay. Well, then there's something an example of something immaterial. Wait, a concept just... is a thought, right? Or a perception. And so these this sure. is my this is my position. I agree with you that they're not physical. They're not material. They're positions uh, in that are mental. No, they absolutely are physical. Okay. So so can you now you now your task. Yeah, no, 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 Hey, hey, no, 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 nothing that can get us banned. No ban or something. Jump, that's not gonna get you banned. That's literally stating reality. That was still, 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 still talking about it. Still, 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 one sec, one sec. I just want to say thank you to Keith X for the super chat. Appreciate it. He says I should charge, charge for these. <laughs> Uh, he's triggered streaming? because he's yes. triggered because he can't yeah, uh, he can't reduce um, um, justice to neurochemistry. So I he's triggered can. now. Okay, give well, you do you have a charm about you. There's get, no question. Get your Nobel Prize. <laughs> if you can, then you've okay. just got a Nobel just Prize. You guys love each other. I need to get it on the computer. You can't get mind. Nobels for metaphysical arguments. You, like, what are you saying? No, yes. no if, you, if you can reduce things, if you can reduce concepts to equations, you you will get the Nobel. That is you people just love worshiping it, it, authority and content. Itself, itself is a fallacy. This is a fallacy. Like try if, if, okay. some weird modification yeah, sure. of fallacy out of authority. Just the guy can. Well, if, you, if you were right, well, win the Nobel Prize whilst I watch Netflix all day. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, it's called it's called solving the hard problem, right? So if he does that, he wins the Nobel. Don't yeah, he, he's he is correct. If you could solve the hard problem of consciousness, you would um, win a Nobel Prize. Oh, really? I'm not. I'm not. So That's I'm correct. not like. I'm not dedicated or claim that I've solved any problems. I'm just That's saying just is that any concept that appears in our brains is due to our like mechanistic, me mechanistic like, uh, machine, oh which is like a like an organic biological machine. Well, that's you're begging the question. Yes, you're uh, begging the question. Dan Dennett. Dan Dennett explains begging, that, right, objects? Begging which question? Well, that's the very question we're asking. Can oh my God, concepts... you're so you're, you're right. like dude, to <laughs> what, so much, dude. dude we're you're asking like, the, the very question is okay. the, 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 the question is can concepts be reduced to physical equations? That's the question. Now you're just okay. asserting they can be without concepts giving us any demonstration of, of that. Humans can be yes. Okay, that's this conversation. Is, there's a concept that is out of like out of, that that was created outside of hum of the human mind. I would agree with you, <laughs> but concepts that that humans what? use to operate within within the material world are definitely like some good job, bro. Uh, are definitely like a pro, uh, created by by proxy by like like mechanistical like organic processes. That's great. Don't you, you ever disrespect the conversation Plato again? By uh, your Plato opinion. is a moron. Also, also wanted to okay. say thank you for Stanley Williams, 19K, for the super chat. Give Zoidberg mods in the Discord. Uh, well, uh, by the way, uh, uh, Stanley, thank you. I am a dumbass, but I try to think. That's all I do. He just uh, gave it. I don't know about that. So check out Sorry, guest yeah, text. Yeah, about 30% of philosophers on the most recent Phil paper survey. Zoidberg, that was me. Don't think no. there is a hard problem of consciousness. Well, that's because uh, they've th that's because they've <laughs> sweeped the problem under the rug with yeah. emergence and complexity. Uh, I mean, we, we can put uh, that's still a hard problem. But, we, but we, can, we, that, we can potentially yeah, just but, think but, that you, because you, you dismiss a lot of scientific things and a lot of that using, things that actually have relevance in reality. You just accept dismiss the stuff though that's objectively verifiable. No, I accept so. the correlate. I accept. No, the no, no. You just dismiss that, and and I just wait. Philosophers aren't evidence. scientists, and no, scientists I, actually I disagree with most boneheaded philosophers, so I don't... What? Yeah, yeah, for oh philosophers God, to say there's no hard amazing. problem, it's like, okay, well, yeah. ask a physicist oh. then for the um, for the equation for the taste of garlic. Go ahead, see how far that gets oh you. Oh, my God. Well, that's not relevant. I went to the Phil <laughs> Paper survey where 30% of them said no. To Comport those. yourself like a Can man. I no, I no, no, no. Wait, no offense, neuroscientists and others override philosophers, so... 
Surveying a bunch of philosophers is means nothing. Yeah, uh, neuroscience. So, 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 so the the hard problem of consciousness is only a problem David in philosophy. Chalmers. So, neuroscientists uh, don't really it. take it seriously as a problem because they don't. Most hard scientists don't even consider look. it. Um, so, okay. hard, so, hard problem of consciousness asks. is specifically a philosophical problem. Right, okay. but if you so ask, if you ask the physicists, can, can I just? At universities yeah, like MIT, they have a center for minds, brains, machines. They get a bunch of philosophers, neuroscientists. It's a multidisciplinary research group. Um, David Chalmers, I'm quite aware of the hard problem of consciousness. It's not just a philosophical question. It actually guides a good deal of uh, neuroscience and neuroscience feedback into philosophy and vice versa. Any philosopher who doesn't integrate across such things is a fucking idiot. No, there's well, absolutely it, no it, incorporation of the hard problem in any science. We wouldn't even know how to do would that. Would you like me to show you? I can't sure, right sure, now. Sure, go for it, because it's not... Yeah, I've had this discussion before, too. Like, there's you are not oh, qualified to have this. I don't know why you're jumping in the conversation. So, yeah. You had a conversation uh, uh, with me. Because, Michael, MPX is literally trying to save your life right now. You're getting into a topic that is just... I am not, because I've actually read these papers. So, do you want me to provide it? If you want to dig your own Papers, right. Put the papers. Put the papers in the T jump oh, text chat. Can I, can I say that it would become a hard problem for a physicist if he if he's asked the question? Give us this know equation the equation for the taste of garlic or some any inequality. If he if he's asked that question, he says this is impossible to do with physics. And so then, if that's if that's what? if he's trying to establish this, that becomes a hard problem what? for the what? physicists. But physicists aren't asked this question. I have no I have no idea what you just said there. Like that was not a coherent sentence. If you ask a physicist to give a, an equation for the taste of garlic, it becomes a hard question for a hard problem for that physicist because it's uh, not within he's physics doing the to quality, give. I mean. No, it's it's not a meme. It is the hard problem. <laughs> the quality of meme. qualities Link to quantities. Desk text. You can probably find thousands of papers as such. I don't know why people know how to learn how to Google. Amazing. Why do you think uh, things taste differently? Like. I don't get well, there are several good. reasons. I mean, there's olfaction. There mm -hmm. is uh, the chemistry um, of whatever uh, stimulus uh, that you're putting into your mouth. There's mm -hmm. also um, your own genetic predisposition that is driving you toward, you know, a certain proclivity. This is called diathesis. It happens. Um, and so, yeah, there are all kinds. It's a multi-dimensional. Hey, but uh, all, all you've named it has been physical, though. Yeah, yeah. Those are, that's the that's what we know. <laughs> now, the metaphysical. So, I, but why would the, you the assume that something else though. not bound you, to any of those? You, by the way, are you religious? Just want to know. I'm not religious. I do believe. Are you white? Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? God, like, a lot. It tells us a lot about a person. When if we're talking about taste buds, then it's definitely agree. relevant. <laughs> I think Where you guys are, over, I think you guys are out of your. I think you're out of your depth. Yo, here. I just want to announce something. Obviously. I want to announce some. Yo, I BTFO with sunglasses yesterday. This nigga shit at debating, bro. This nigga whoa, trap. Whoa, 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 whoa! We just use it in work. Yeah, what are you gonna it's do? Like, it's right allowed on the bro. Discord. Self date is allowed on the Discord. At like, the end of the day, I'm going to virtue signal and say that's not cool. Well, you can Yo, get back on the topic. Can get back on the topic. It's always a white nigga trying to tell you, no, it's not cool. Because I Just get virtue any, by any, saying Let's that. go to any topic. Shut the fuck yeah, up, bro. Dude, dude, he he gets virtue <laughs> points. He can, like, fuck bitches oh, in college. So stop, yeah, I get stop. Virtue I'm going to just start muting people. Yeah, and he's, he's just points just, so up and do a topic. Oh, uh, yeah. So, anyway, um, did you see the paper I posted? Because I can get thousands of such papers. So, um, I'll say Feel free to post as many as you would like. I just did. Yeah, so... People are active in area research. They don't get into these ideological camps if they truly are after these hard problems and say, you know what, I'm a philosopher, only philosophers can chime in, or I'm a neuroscientist, only neuroscientists can. Um, they try to integrate across all pertinent disciplines. Right, so, I agree. Yeah. Just that and, the consensus uh, in science groups. is more so against the hard problem. The people who actually I'm a wholeologist. I don't like philosophy. it when you fucking incels get into my field. Wait, you guys are in the wrong room. What are you doing? Did you just, just say urologist? You're in a guest room, dude. Hoologist. Like... Hoologist. Oh. Uh, okay. Um, Hilarious. Dude. So, scientists, are, are you saying most scientists are pinheaded, like, physicalists? That are getting nowhere on the problem. No, no. I think most yeah. scientists are physicalists because they are actually making progress in the field and nobody else is. Nobody else is making yep. progress in the field besides scientists. So what progress have scientists made on 
consciousness now? Uh, well, since they've made progress in the field related to consciousnesses and brain interactions and how correlates to specific parts of the brain affect consciousness, they're the only ones who really get a say on the topic. No one else has made any progress in anything related to the brain. And so since the one that is making progress is physical, it's rational to say that the consciousness is also probably physical. Prove to me that the consciousness is not located in the pinky foot. So if I go to a collaborative group like MIT Center for Minds, Brains, and Machines, and scientists say, hey, this philosopher helped me out. Um, what? The philosopher says the scientists helped me out. Where, where does this, uh, again, academia... That's absolutely West nothing. So absolutely none of what these... you said is in any way relevant at all. What? So, it so like until until some other kind of that would be wrong. No, no, no. So, so until some <laughs> other kind of ontology makes any progress in the field of related to the brain in any way, it's not a credible explanation of anything. So, like if I said what caused the hoof print in the snow, and we have past evidence of horses existing, then we can say it was probably a horse. Until we actually, but we couldn't say it's a unicorn because there's no past evidence of unicorns. So saying consciousness is anything other than physical when we have literally no evidence of anything other than physical stuff is irrational, just like saying what caused the hoof print was a unicorn okay. when there's no evidence okay. of unicorns. I have a question. I have a question here. So if it, if it is physical, then it it does reduce to an equation. That's just the nature of what physical things no, are. No, not necessarily. They could... They, they can be reduced. No, to that's false. So, the, so that's that's based establish. on the current understanding of what physical things is, is based off of um, how we represent them through interactions, but that is not necessarily the case. For example, gravity, uh, curvature of space-time, would technically exist even if there was no mass, nothing with mass to bend it. And so it would not be able to be represented with an equation because the equation would simply represent what would happen if it was bending and it would still be there even if it wasn't bending and that couldn't be represented with an equation. So no, physical objects can exist just fine and not be able to be represented by an equation. So, so I have a question. So if space is bending, you're saying that that in absence of mass cannot be described with an equation? No, I'm saying gravity is the curvature of space-time, right? So space-time right. is there, but space -time, but math in physics represents changes and in interaction. So if it's not changing, then there would be no way to represent it with an equation because there's no two sides of an equal sign. Like in physics, it's representing it over this amount of time, like, like for what's it, derivative derivatives uh, show over this amount of time this thing will change but if no change is happening you couldn't represent it like physics can't represent um, ontologies it can't say what a particle is made of uh, or what a field is made of it doesn't say those things they're physical they exist right. but they aren't represented by oh. equations equations are do not That's represent right. every physical and, and thing. what you just said was what i what i believe is is true that physics and you've said this before, physics tells you what things do, not what they are. And that's yes. that's when we're dealing with being itself. And that's why you have to go to metaphysics to say, what is this thing? And your gravity example, I think, demonstrates that pretty well. Because what gravity can, can be, or time can be described as X and T, but X and T are descriptions right. of a Hold real on. thing, I, I have giving a... you those dimensions. And, and I, you I agree, I agree with most saying. of what you said there. Um, the difference is, is where you, when you say go to metaphysics, there's no going to metaphysics. There's just making stuff up. So like, like with the brain example, because we have a very consistent model that has made progress in the field, and that's the physical model of physics, it's reasonable what? to believe things are physical. It's not reasonable to believe they're literally anything else. So anything else you could ever say they are, since those other ontologies have never made any progress in reality whatsoever, they're not ever rational to say are what causes... Oh, I terms. totally disagree. Wait, can, so, can I also say I, something? Go um, ahead, go ahead. Quickly. Uh, Space time uh, is a curve. The, the equation for how certain relationships work has curvature is the issue. So Einstein initially filed his paper and called it ether, the scientific community, because their ideological pinheads forced him to reverse this because of the religious connotations ether has with the Christians at the time. And that's when he filed it as space time curves. That's so yeah, but Tom, how... I, I, don't, I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't wanna get past so, this because this just, is important. Just a quick clarification there. Let, let, let me Space say time this, literally though. physically bends. That's what gravitational what, waves are. What Tom, no, it does not. Yes, it does. That's the yeah, equation it, it, that it, describe the relationships no, no between pickle, mass no pickle, bodies no in space. 
Gravitational waves are literally space-time bending. It's literally what it is. They literally bend. Wait, now we're talking about gravitational waves. That's uh, literally the curvature waves of space-time. Space -time. Space -time I'm not going to try to take down Einstein I'm, in this I'm not in waste. this discord. There's There's nothing you wouldn't to take be down. if space-time if space-time space no, didn't bend, bend, you wouldn't. No, I have be problems with GRT as well, uh, pickle. So I'm not the way mass bodies interact in space that is curved, not the fucking actual fabric of space-time. Yes, the fabric itself literally bends. That's literally what you gravitational waves that. are. Yes, we There's can. No That's the that. entire no, point of the LIGO experiment. The LIGO experiment Jeez, literally proves Christ. that. Literally I want to cool. highlight what Tom Jump said. Um, he said that the progress has been made in these physical descriptions, and so there's no good reason to believe that there's something outside of that. The problem is, is that there's something causing those physical descriptions. Wait, wait, that's there's not what I said. So, so I didn't say that it's not reasonable to believe there's something outside of that. I said there's not reasonable to believe in anything that's never made any pr progress. So because the physical descriptions have made progress, those ontologies are reasonable to believe. But any other ontology but, that has made no progress is not reasonable to believe. Well, I, I would say that progress itself and processes themselves are metaphysical and it's driving those discoveries. That, that's so nice, it's the real, it's, but again, it's the, you, you'd it's still the, need... But, but see, you would still need some way to need validate a... that independently of you're just imagining that's how it works. And physical stuff the valid... does that. I would say the validation is the causal efficacy from top down manipulating those material objects that are I have described absolutely by those no patients. idea what any of that means. So so you have a physical description of objects in nature. Okay. Sure. Now the the reason that you have that description is because they are deduced. They are deduced from a qualitative object. Now, the qualitative aspect of that object is only experience. Okay, there I'm still, no I'm lost. I'm still like getting lost in all the words you're using here. So, you got to make progress okay. describe something we this don't is, know it, yet. How how do you make progress so, describe things is, we don't? This know is yet? precisely what you said, T Jump, about how physics say what objects do, not what they are. Yes, that's correct. For what they are, the areness, the isness, that's. The quality. Right, so, so let me clarify. The, when I whenever you try to answer what things are, the only options, the only things you can fill in that blank, is something that has successfully made a do statement. So if it can successfully describe the way things do or operate, then you can say that that is how they are. But you can never say they're yes. anything else unless they can successfully make predictions about the doing. Well, science describes the behavior of objects. Yes, so, objects so it's okay must, to say that because science does that. Objects must be in order to behave, right? So the, be, the, 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 the fact that they are precedes the fact that they do. Because mm, right. these things... Normativity does not prove metaphysical. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means yeah. either. But, but oh, again, again so... That since I, there's like a, a normative framing of an object, therefore it, it cannot be explained without other normative statements about that object... Like the normativity like precedes all physical and empirical things, and therefore there must be a metaphysical. Metaphysics well, we, isn't we, for you. You're, you're, you're ask, speaking at too low a level, man. Yeah, like, we, we're asking what, what we're asking saying. what is primary here. What is primary from a first person perspective, insufferably, everyone agrees with this, is the conscious experience. There's right. nothing that happens outside of that filter. So that's the first thing. Now, what we've done then is we say, okay, I'm experiencing this object, it has qualities. That's the first thing. Now, second, the second thing is I'm going to invent measuring de devices to deduce quantities off of this qualitative object. Then I'm going to throw that object off the table and say, aha, these quantities are what's real about it. This is a fallacy. And that's what I'm saying, that there's something more happening that's giving us the numbers that are deducible. Right, right. And I think that's make, allowing us to make predictions. That part I agree with. There's something more going on. That's perfectly reasonable. But in order to say what that is, the only possible things that are reasonable things to assert are what yes. what it is, are the things that have successfully made the predictions that we can describe or discover what? things about the universe. So if it's never Wait, made any predictions... Come, 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 come. Here, here's the problem with that. That's a bold statement. The, the we problem, never would have problem. discovered anything new if that was the case. We yes, we would. That's science. no pickle. Well, the problem no with pickle. that is that... The problem with that is that you... With, with the process that Tom Jump is talking about, which I agree with to up to a certain extent, basically it, basically it is, is through scientific discovery, it allows us... Well, first, we have assumptions about the object then science allows us to verify those assumptions. But do you know what happens every time you verify an assumption? 
brand new assumptions pop it to the fore. But none of that it's, matters. It goes Literally on none of that matters. So, so well, again, no, and the reason, here's why it matters. It really does. Because, because the assumptions will go on for infinity. Well, it doesn't so matter. Again, not, again, none of the, you can have infinite assumptions, that's it, fine. It, it, you can have infinite presuppositions, that's fine. But if you're going to say, here's some, to un, it's, yes, it's perfectly reasonable. You can assume whatever you want to assume. But in order to make it reasonable to use your assumptions to infer something about reality, you need some correspondence to reality. So if I yes. say, let's say I assume that there's a magical pixie leprechaun named Bob and I say if my magical pixie leprechaun friend exists and I pray to him he'll give me a gold brick I pray to him and I get a gold brick now that's great correspondence to reality now I can say I have a justified reason to believe in the magical pixie leprechaun Bob and now I can say if I see a gold brick on your table oh I can be like you know, Bob, he does that. He could have put that gold brick there because I already have some past evidence that, that my belief that there is such a thing corresponds to reality. Now, if I said no evidence that Bob exists and I just saw a gold brick, you know what, and just made Bob up, like, you know what, a magical pixie leprechaun could explain that. That would not be evidence. So the same thing applies here in the physical reality. We don't know what matter is made of because physics doesn't tell us what it's made of but we do know that it can accurately predict things about reality and interactions therefore right. it's reasonable to infer that whatever this physical stuff is is based on that model of physicalism right. and you're well, not allowed to, wait, wait, you're not allowed on, to on, add anything else in there until it can make predictions also okay the ism is the part that fucks any um, idea like it's the ism you you're it's it a, almost doesn't a matter what isms you yeah, use it doesn't change it doesn't change anything all isms are are fundamentally flawed for this reason you end up what? like marrying a position only strictly you know, everything is physical uh, my dude um everything is physical and and then what is physical we maybe have covered like uh, zero point five percent of all physical things in universe. Okay, but none of that addresses so, what um, I said. Can, can I finish? Can no, I finish? not unless so you're going to address I, what I said. No, I, I literally am, and you're not letting me. Well, no, no, you're not. You're so, scared so of something. What, what I said was, the only times you can infer what is existing is if you have a successful method to demonstrate something in reality. We, There's no ism. We, we don't didn't bring up any ism. Wait, wait so, so, buddy, what? buddy, we, if we only cover zero point five percent of all physical things, and 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 that's what physics is at this moment. You understand? There's like ninety. 95.5% of that's fine. Uh, things that would be unimaginable that's, to current day uh, physics. Well, it, so this, that's so what doesn't, this literally, literally doesn't matter. So, so let's say, let's say you're right. And literally we only does. know 5%. Let's like say you're right. Physics. Stop interrupting. I'm going to mute you. Let's say you're right. And we only know 5%. In order to be rationally infer anything beyond that 5%, you're only allowed to use the stuff in the 5%. You can't make that's up a stupid. new thing. That's that's, that's induction. really stupid. It's called induction. No, I'm sorry. No, dude, dude, deduction is also a thing. Okay. But, right. um, and so I would love for you to prove like quantum physics through induction, induction before we actually understood what the hell it was. Proves it. That's how science works. Science is all induction. Buddy, all buddy. All let science? me just chime in here for to You're teach you up on high school level. Physics. So, so Tom, I agree with you. The, the The reason that that process can happen, the reason that you can deduce those numbers off of those objects is because every object is associated with a quantity in our material realm but there are there are two objects there's one that's experienced that, that there is no equation for that experience let's go ahead and move up then out there right. then there uh, is where, where is it dude taco uh, it's right above uh text channels uh i see five of it i don't see it do i find it Politics, who the politics fuck just info? interrupted me hey i'm gonna who? i'm gonna make it go live right now all right. Who the fuck just interrupted me? Oh, there it is. Uh, we're doing oh, a Sunday smart. stream thingy, so we're moving to a, a event. That's what he used. That's why he interrupted you. So was, that was fine. But, so I'm going to the, okay, the so... events thingy. I'll talk to you guys in a bit, or you can come. Is, to the it, stream. is it the? Is it the does deity exist thing? Or yes. Or it's right now. Uh, yes. you... God, you guys are uh, mostly atheists. Um, with us today, um, there are some others who will be showing up. Um, perhaps later, if, if not right away. Um, Tom Jump will be here. He's an atheist philosopher who hosts conversations with professors, philosophers, and other academics about topics ranging from biology and physics to religion and morality. T-Jump's YouTube channel is at www.youtube.com slash T-Jump. Jefferson Spatchcock is an atheist inquisitor and intellectual who has a particular expertise in analyzing and reviewing debates. He's particularly known for analyzing a lot of Darth Dawkins debates and conversations or interrogations, as some people call it. 
um, his channel on YouTube is um, will be in, is included in the YouTube video description. It's too long to describe here. Uh, JL Warren is an atheist activist, educator, and entertainer. He runs the Bridge the Divide YouTube channel, where he addresses irrational beliefs, the irrational behaviors that often follow, the societal divides they create, and how those divides can be bridged with education, rationality, and reason. His channel is at youtube.com slash JL Warren. That's W-A-R-R-E-N. Uh, I'm Randolph Richardson. I'm an atheist from British Columbia, Canada, and I'm the founding president of the Canadian Atheists. I'm also an advocate for freedom, fair justice, and critical thinking with concerns that oppression anywhere is a threat to freedom everywhere, which is uh, similar to something that uh, another famous person said, um, MLK, he's known as. Um, you can find out more about uh, the Canadian Atheists at www.canadianatheists.ca. My YouTube channel is at youtube.com slash Randolph Richardson. The uh, IX is a Tom and Boxes subscriber and former atheist community of Discord admin who enjoys long walks through evolutionary biology inspired computer science, archaeological, academic, biblical criticisms, etc. Jack Burton, middle aged college educated nobody who drives the pork chop express truck on his spare time, in his spare time. He's a deist and mostly non committal to philosophical stances. Peter de Tucker, also known as Gonna Go For It, is an atheist from the Netherlands who handles the production of various YouTube channels, including Iron Raws, and generously contributes his professional artistic skills to the atheists all around the world. Uh, Peter de Tucker's YouTube channel is at youtube.com slash gonna go for it. Taco, the organizer of this entire setup, is uh, a number one Discord debater who has never lost a Discord debate in his life. Thank you again to everybody for tuning in. And uh, we have uh, some people who are already, I believe, interested in talking with us. I saw one earlier. Um, Taco, are you handling this? Or um, did anybody else have anything they wanted to interject before we begin? All right. So if y'all have any questions, uh, both, I'm sorry, it sounded like we're good. If y'all have any questions or uh, feel like y'all, could convince us a God exists, which is the idea, or goddess exists, which is the idea here. Feel free to queue up here. I did invite up Crux, who I was talking with uh, in DMZ. He's actually got a pretty cool position. Uh, feel free to introduce yourself. Oh, quick, quick question. Did you just say y'all? Yeah, yeah. I lived in Texas for a long time. Hello, Crux. Welcome. The Texas thing. What's up, Crux? What do you got for us today? Um... Yeah, so Taco kind of asked me to join here. I don't know if it's necessarily uh, uh, entirely uh, uh, fitting to the topic of, of deities. Obviously, I'm an agnostic, right? So I don't really use the word God at all. It has no, no meaning for me. Uh, but I have been accused of being a pantheist uh, as well as being an agno uh, uh, as an as an atheist. So, um, yeah. Okay, so, so this is this is pretty simple to figure out. Do you believe in any goddesses or gods? That question has bears no meaning to well, me. Well, uh, why did Taco ask oh, you to come up? Was, uh, Taco, what was the topic? So, wanted... so, so the, I think uh, I think he wants me to expound a little bit on on a particular okay. view of necessitarianism that I hold. Well, the thing is, if that question has no meaning to you, um, then. Uh, how can we have a conversation about whether deities exist or not? Well, I'd or, say let him, let him have a chance. If Taco invited him up, uh, let's let him go into what he means by necessitarianism, because that could be analogous to a god. So so go ahead. Tell yeah, us about it. Just, if, I just, if, I just, if, you, I just if asked, you think that my view fits your definition of god, then... Well, I just, uh, okay, I just asked a question, and I did not get a satisfactory answer, though. So, but go ahead, Crux. Um, yeah, so uh, I hold to the position of necessitarianism, uh, and I think this is a, a, a view that offers a, 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 a nice contrast with, with more conventional views of, uh, uh, of accounts for uh, how the world exists and, 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 and such, right? So I often bring it up in relation to, like, uh, for example, like creationist positions right where you have some transcendental being that is uh the cause of some some uh secondary world right 
So I, I, my, my position is that simply that there is only one world that is possible and that therefore this world is necessarily existent and does not require an explanation whatsoever. So this world, planet Earth, uh, is obviously not the only planet in our solar system or in our galaxy or in the entire universe. Um, so there, there's a problem right there with saying this is the only world and it is necessary. It's necessary for human using it in a modal sense. Yeah, yeah, so so world in philosophy means the entire universe or multiverse, the entire one set of all existing things that we are a part of. So world... Uh, in, Okay, gotcha. All right. But, but so, I, would, I would kind of agree with Randolph's point here is that I don't understand why you would think there's only one possible world. I can imagine a world with no puppies. That is a possible world. Why would that one be impossible? So, um, yeah, so I've never really formalized this in a syllogism. And I only, well, I just did uh, like half an hour ago for the very first time. So um, there's probably going to be a, lots of issues with it. Um, um, I think the question comes down to like how you've elim- like how why why did you feel it why did you feel nece- it necessary to eliminate all other possibilities? Well, like what drove you to art. that? Con- what drove you to that conclusion? Uh, well, well, ultimately, I think it's the most. Uh, uh, well, I, I, like I said, I just formulated a syllogism. So if you'd like to hear it, go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Go. That. Yeah. So I would say there's no contradiction in the proposition only one world is possible, uh, which would mean that only one per world is possible is possible. Uh, there are states of affairs in this world that are necessary uh, since they would be true in this world and it would be the only world. Uh, Wait, what do you mean by necessary under- there? Uh, that they are true in all possible worlds. Okay. And under this proposition, there's only one possible world. Right. Um, no, there's so, a problem with the there's a problem with so, premise one though, is because it's not it's it's still logically it's not logically contradictory for there to be many worlds. I'm I'm I'm, I'm my claim is not that there is a contradiction in that. My claim is that there is no contradiction in the proposition. Only one world is possible. Okay. So okay, gotcha. Okay, I, I, I see. Go ahead. Feel free. Continue. So uh, these necessary facts in this possible world under S5 in modal, uh, in modal logic would reduce to, so these, these possibly necessary propositions would reduce down to necessary facts since, uh, you know, under S5 of modal logic, I think that's fairly uh, uncontroversial. Uh, and so the proposition this, o- this only possible world exists would be a conjunctive proposition that contains only necessary fact, uh, and therefore this conjunctive proposition would also be a necessary fact. So uh, only one world is possible is a necessary fact. Uh, well, that's begging the question. You're saying if you're correct that this is the only world, and it's that means that all the facts in them would be necessary because they're in all possible worlds. But it doesn't seem that that's the case. Like modal ontic realism could be true and all possible worlds could actually exist. So you, none of of the, my view, well, none of the premises that you presented exclude the possibility of other possible worlds existing. You just said, well, the, the the conclusion would, well, that's begging the question. So you're saying if my model is true, then my model is true. Uh, yes, that is true. As would be a tautologous statement. Well, it wouldn't be a tautology. It would be just, it would be circular. So it'd be, well, if you put, if you put one of the premises in the conclusion, it's, it's, you, you can literally do that with anything. So I could take the opposite view. I could take the view that uh, modal ontic realism where all possible worlds exist and take the exact same structure of your argument and it would work equally as well on their view as it would for yours. Therefore, it doesn't justify I, your view or their view any more than one another. No, but but my my world view would exclude the possibility of any other worldviews. Right, and theirs would exclude yours. So I would say that there is a contradiction. Well, then they would have to show that there is a contradiction in the proposition. Only one world is possible. No, because they can just show that it's many worlds are possible. Yeah, that's the crux. That's what I brought up at the at the beginning. They would that... have. They would have to. They would have to assert that. Yes. Well, there's there's no logical contradiction in many worlds, so. 
again, um, my claim is not that there is no contradiction in that. I mean, uh, ultimately, that is going to be my claim, right? Based on this, based on this uh, conclusion, right? Well, Since if there is only one possible world and it's a necessary one, other any world that is distinct from this world would be impossible, right? right. So that's not that's but, not the point. But, J- Jail's making the point. point. So Jail's making my the starting point. point. Wait, wait, one second. So there's two people here. There's a you and a uh, modal ontic realist, and you're both talking. You write your first premise down, which is uh, mm. it, there's no logical contradiction with there being one possible world. And the modal ontic realist, he writes his first premise down. There's no logical contradiction with all possible worlds existing. Now, you're both on equal grounds here. Neither one of you has any more justified support than the other. So, so why would we... What, what can we add to this situation to make it go more reasonable to believe you rather than the guy who holds the opposite view to you? Well, I'm saying if you follow my argument, then it would entail that only one world is possible. Great. So he and has the think, exact same the argument. Has an argument. Wait, wait. So, so he has the exact same argument. He's just changed the nouns. That's the only thing that's happened here. He's changed the nouns. So the structure is exactly the same. It's equally as valid necessarily because it's using the exact same structure yours is and all I did was no, change but, the nouns. No, but the thing is, he can never point to anything being necessary. Whereas uh, I can. I don't know what you mean there. So yes, he can. But the, the thing is, none, none of his statements would be... Like, he, like a, a person who says that there is multiple possible worlds would have to say that there are, in fact facts that are contingent, right? Sure. That are not necessary. Sure, right? not all facts are necessary facts, correct. Well, under my view, all facts would be necessary, and this is why I get to the conclusion that my view must be necessarily true. Well, right? then, because then there's, T-Jump was because, correct. Because, That's... because there's, no conc- there's, there's, no, uh, there's no possibility of uh, a counterexample, whereas the other person would have to say that, that there's a possibility of some, some counter, right? So, and the counter would be my first premise. There is no contradiction in the proposition. Only one world is possible. And then everything from that follows. Well, well, okay, wait, wait, wait. So, so, so I think you're conflating. I one sec, one sec. I think you're I would conflating. Not have to one sec, one sec, view. one sec, one sec. So it's saying, I think you're conflating the fact that it's possible that some facts are contingent with a contradiction. So that there's the fact, accepting that some facts are contingent. It would be a contradiction under my view. Right. So there's no contradiction in your argument there that would lead to that whatsoever so saying that it's possible that there's only one world um doesn't indicate that it's necessarily the case that there's only one world so that premise does not in any way indicate your conclusion one bit i i know this is why i have other premises none of them do that's the point okay how, how how does um so in this view where only one world is possible right there would be fact, right? And those facts would be, by definition, necessary facts since they're true right. in all possible worlds. Right. Okay, so there's, so there's necessary facts in my worldview. You, can you agree? Yes. In fact, all fact would be necessary facts in this worldview. Yes. Right? Including the fact there's only one possible world. If your worldview is true, then that fact would be a necessary fact. No, it's not. It's it's if you accept the first premise, no, that would follow. No, because the first premise does not entail that it's the only necessary world. So if it's possible, no, it, does, it only entails that it po- that it's possible. Right. So if it's possible that there is only one necessary world is a necessary fact. That's possible. It's also possible. It's not a necessary fact. It's a contingent fact. I, I don't agree that with that. Right. Well, nothing in your argument disproves. Nothing identical. in your argument eliminates that possibility. It's, yes, it's nothing it does. in your the argument. Conclusion does. N- well, the conclusion can't eliminate the possibility. No, no, it can't. It's not how it works. Yes, if 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 some if if this world exists, if only one world is possible is a necessary fact, then would, that would inc- ex- exclude the possibility of any other world. But that goes back to the if, and T Jump already pointed out that that's begging the question. But there's, I'm not. I'm not saying if this world is true. I'm saying if there is only if if there is no contradiction in this proposition, which I'm not doesn't. Presuppos- like, I'm like not what? presupposing the 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 existence of my worldview as. I don't true. think you under- fi- understand how no S five works. I don't think you understand how S five modal logic works. Like what you're saying literally does not follow. 
Um, if do I you said think possible necessities do not boil down to necessary facts, they that doesn't make sense. So possible and necessary as being conjunctions in that way don't work in the way that that sentence was said. That's literally made no sense what you just said. Um, so, so like when theists say uh, God, it's possible that God exists. And God is a necessary being. A necessary being is one that exists in all possible worlds. Um, what they're doing is they're taking the definition I'm of the word. not taking that argument. Wait, wait, so, but they're using it correctly. So they are using S5 correctly. You are using it incorrectly. Why there, there, would, there would be things that are under this view uh, necessary fact, right? Right, and that's fine. All worldviews have that for the most part. Okay, so these facts, since you agree that only one world is possible, uh, entails no contradiction. These facts are necessary facts that are possible. In your worldview, right? if your worldview is true. But no, again, if you accept the premise, none of uh, that, if you accept no, the no, 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 I can accept premise one and reject the conclusion because the conclusion does not follow from the premises. I'm, I'm not seeing how it doesn't follow. So I can accept it's possible there is a bunny in the box. And if the That's bunny, in, wait, no, 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 no. So, so it's possible there's a bunny in the box. If a bunny in the box is a necessary fact, because there's only one possible world, then it's necessarily the case that there's a bunny in the box. But it may not be. So, so do you understand that if you say it's possible there's a bunny in the box, no it's, contradictions. This is a distinct claim from what I'm claiming. No, it's right? not. It's the exact same. Because the the because, structure of the argument because, is the because, exact same. No, because in this, in, in, under this view, you're still uh, allowing for the pop possibility of of contingent facts, right? Which no. from under my argument, they would be no. excluded since there's only no. one possible world. No. And no. all no. facts. I stop, stop. I already addressed this. To... No, I said no. I'm saying there is, if there is, it's possible there's a bunny in the box. Second premise. If there's only one world and every fact is a necessary fact, it is necessarily the case there is a bunny in the box. So, so do you see the first premise is it's possible there's a bunny in the box. Second premise, there's only one world. All facts in the world are necessary, necessary facts. Does it follow that there is a bunny in the box? It's, it's different because my... my Just my answer the question. Does about... it follow? Does it follow there's a bunny in the box? Uh, the answer you're looking for is no. Yeah. But... Uh... Again, this is not my. This is not. This is not uh, analogous to what I'm claiming. Okay, here. so explain to me because, how your first because, premise because, is not because analogous. Because my claim is, is is about possible worlds. It's not about some fact in 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 in, in within possible. That worlds, doesn't right? matter. It's about the possible world it themselves. Matter. So it doesn't matter if the fact is about the possible worlds or about the bunny. The aboutness of the fact does not in any way change the structure of the argument. So, how is the structure Listen, if, of your argument any different? That it would entail that if saying it, is it would possible, entail doesn't address the argument. So walk me through the steps. You said it's possible that there is only one possible world, and I said it's possible there's a bunny in the box or only one bunny in the box. How are those different? Because uh, the bunny in the box doesn't get you to a necessary fact. Right. Neither does the possibility that there's only one possible world. You, you don't think that if only one per world is possible entails that if there is a fact in that world, that would be a necessary fact? Um, if there is any necessary fact, it would follow from any possible world. So if there's a bunny in the box, if it's possible there's a bunny in the box, that would also entail a necessary fact. No, I'm saying, I'm asking you, if only one world is possible and there is a fact in this world, right? Right, right. So, so I'm saying that fact, right? That fact would be a necessary fact since it is true in all in all possible worlds. Yes, and that doesn't okay. matter. So I can come to necessary facts under this premise, whereas you cannot do that with the bunny. Yes, you, you can, can but again, it doesn't it. matter. I don't see how you can. Because you don't come to necessary facts. You assert something could possibly be a necessary fact. It could be a necessary fact that there is a bunny in the box. It might be a necessary fact. 
but it might not be a necessary fact. So it's possible the one world is the only world, in which case any fact you pick is a necessary fact. But un, un, under this view, and yes, exactly. So but they, would be, they might they not would be, necessary be. Facts. They would not be. The fact that they could be does not imply that they are facts, necessary facts. They could not be. They may all be contingent facts. So the thing you think is a necessary fact so could then be you contingent. don't think that the first premise is possible. No, you can grant the first premise and it doesn't lead to the conclusion. I've, I've literally just showed you how you can do that. What's, what's the con? Is, you don't, I don't need to show a contradiction. I can grant the first premise, so no contradiction and it doesn't lead to the conclusion. Yeah, I don't see how you get from necessary facts to uh, them being contingent. I didn't say, and you don't have to do any of that. So if you if you agree that there are necessary facts under the, uh, under this argument, then the conclusion your conclusion would doesn't be follow. Your conclusion true. does not follow from that. That's what I've been trying to explain to you the whole time. It, literally, what you're saying, no, it does not follow. I can grant possible necessary one... facts reduced down to necessary fact. No, again, that's wrong. Saying it's possible there is one possible world gets you zero necessary facts. You get no necessary facts from the first premise whatsoever. Again, this, I don't. I believe this is just uh, S five. No, see it's how not. I can reject that. No, it's no, it's not. Possible necessities are necessities. Again, you're not using S five. You're, you're misusing the argument. I think at this point, um, we might want to, you know, leave it at that. That crux. You may need to like write this down, take a look, take a look at it, actually put it to paper, and analyze it. Just it's just a recommendation, but but uh, I don't think we're going to get anywhere beyond um, this point. So obviously there, there's some issues that need to be uh, sorted out. So I'm just recommending that you you put it down, put it to paper. I and think maybe the issue is there, that so. Chief Jump is rejecting S5. Nope, I'm not rejecting S5. You're not using S5 because I've I've actually talked with this with experts in S5 on the ontological argument. You're literally not using the correct structure of the argument. That's why I tried to explain it to you from the Christian argument perspective. Okay, I, I don't accept the I don't accept the Christian argument, but my argument is different. No, no, uh, the structure they're using S five correctly. If you're not accepting their argument, then you're not using S five. You're not using S five correctly. But we should probably move on. I think we so should... we can just, for for time's sake, so we can give another person an opportunity Thank you for to get up. some people up here. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Craig. Sure. Appreciate it. Uh, Very thank interesting. You. Thank you for coming up. Uh, Taco, um, there, I think our next one should be Akira, but uh, I noticed Owens was blinking rapidly. If, if Owens had something to just respond to that, I think that'd be okay to bring them yeah, on sure. for a moment. I'm pulling up Owens and check the message that I sent you. Cause there's, uh, yeah. But hello, Owens, what's going on? Uh, so, so who believes God is this? We're wondering if you do. Oh, no. Doesn't. Oh. Okay. Question, ask yeah. and answer. All right. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That was quick and easy. So I guess we'll move on to the next one, which should probably be Akira. That's one down. We're, we're going to go ahead and pull up Nico for now. Please okay. check your message, Randolph. Uh, yeah. Nico, okay. how's it going? What you got for us today? I think I'm going to have to come back with my laptop because I can't hear you guys on my phone. So if I can go back to the audience and come back, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Hello. We are knocking them down today. Right. <laughs> oh, Will Smith post Oscar joke. Oh, that God. sounds like an interesting one. <laughs> I don't agree. I like life lines today. How's it going today? Hi, um, it's uh, it's going well. Awesome. So you're here to convince us a god exists? Yes, I am. Which, um, if I may ask, uh, which which I say, which religion do you adhere to, and if Christianity, which denomination? Christianity, and it will be non-denominational, most likely. Non-denom. Okay, cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go ahead. Okay, well, um, this is an argument that, that I have made myself. It's a very simple argument. The first premise is that 
actually, I think maybe it would be better if I if I just go more freelance rather than with 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 premises. So, um, basically, all physical things have um, at the quantum realm are are like constantly like moving. You you often hear about um, particles uh, in the quantum realm moving about, you know, blinking in and out of existence. Um, but yeah, basically, physical things are are constantly like changing through time. And I think I, I feel that like this is a necessary fact for physical things that, that they're constantly changing. Would you agree with that? There's some interference coming in the background there for you, but uh, what I said, this is Aquinas' argument. That's from that's King Xerxes. King Xerxes, Xerxes is your mom. You got like some kind of voice <laughs> modulator going on. Uh, he he had he smoked some strong weed. That's just <laughs> running into the speed we are. Um, uh, Will, this sounds very much like Aquinas. Well, the difference between this and Aquinas' argument is Aquinas was an unmoved mover. This is more about change rather than a, a movement. Um, um, so, so change yeah, exists, therefore so, what? Yeah. Change exists, therefore what? I, uh, okay, so only... Okay, so so, so physical things uh, are, are constantly changing. Something that's cr- that, that, that brought about all of physical reality... Um, Given that uh, physical reality would also um, include time, because obviously t- um, space time is like a linked, um, it's, it's almost like one entity. It would be something that that does not change, because if it's if it was something that changed, so the same way physical things change at the macro and and micro level, then it would need to be something within time, for time measures to change. Uh, so no, like physical things can exist without change, and physical things can exist without time. Okay, so um, in what way can a physical thing exist without changing? I mean, it, it seems like every single physical thing has a quantum level, and um, at the quantum level, things are vibrating, things are, uh, you know, there's quantum entanglement and, and all these different kinds of things. So there's, um, for something to actually be completely stationary at the quantum level, it would need to be like at well, like minus two hundred and no, no. So like the degrees. fields, the the fields zero, don't change. The fields themselves don't change. The things in the fields change. The fields don't change. The fields are there. They don't change. Okay. Um. What What would these fields be made of? Um. I don't know how to answer that question in physics. We don't. We don't know what they're made of. Strings. Strings are a possibility. Yeah, um, sh- string theory is definitely a, a decent possibility, but string theory would, would be the building blocks of all things. Remember, these are vibrating strings. No, not necessarily. So you can you can have the building blocks of all reality be a thing which was unchanging and it created the universe was changed, and that's perfectly possible. Physical, you don't need a god for that. The only problem is that instead of for the... down this rabbit hole of high oh. order physics, uh, uh, perhaps what else you here in it? Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, like, why, why like, should, um... King's Air says, your, your audio is really, uh, distorted. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, but it's coming through as an extremely deep voice that's difficult to understand. Yeah, it kind of sounds like I'm actually talking to God himself. Maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's evidence. <laughs> yeah, I think it's slowed that down. Was it sounds really, like... That was really funny. <laughs> to, me, to me, it sounds like it's slowed down, really, and then the slowing <laughs> down causes it to increase or decrease the the decibel level uh i so, think our i think our guest here will smith had uh, the best response that was hilarious <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i mean my, my argument is is uh, it's peter with that oh peter no now that? it's peter too yeah my argument was that pretty simple the only way for a physical thing to be completely stationary is if is is, is for it to lack um any sort of like energy with a kinetic uh, whether it's like heat energy and or, or or any other kind of energy, and for that it would need to be at absolute zero in terms of uh, in terms of temperature. I think it's like minus two hundred and seventy something. Uh, no, all physical Celsius. things can be described in the ways that are interactions in our universe. So there could be another kind of physical thing that's completely stationary, no problem. Yeah, but to the best of our it. knowledge, 
these physical things cannot get to absolute zero. It's it's it. it yeah. always brings so so absolute zero doesn't matter here. There can be physical things that have no temperature that exist just fine, irrelevant to absolute zero. So like if you want to assert that you need a god to be the first change, we can assert a new kind of physical thing that does that. Um, and so just saying that none of the one sec, one sec, none of the known physical stuff can do that. I agree. But God isn't known either. You're just making up a God and asserting he can do it. We can make up a physical thing and assert it can do it too. Yeah, but the only thing is that it seems that all physical things have energy. I mean, well, that's, the, that's, the, that's the thing, that's the thing, Will, is that it's a, it's, an, it's, a, it's a hypothesis is what it is. You're hypothesizing that, you're, well, basically your hypothesis is built off an observation of what we currently have and then looking at what could potentially be the entailment, but essentially you're hypothesizing about something that we currently have no data about. So going like beyond, like, yeah, like where yeah. this all started, where this all get, it's still a hypothesis. And unfortunately at this current state in time with, with our current level of knowledge about reality and stuff, it's unfalsifiable. So the question that becomes is like, sure, you could hypothesize anything as to why things are the way they are, or why things move the way they move and, or why things change. And where did that change come from? What initiated that change? So you can start with that, of course. But any question you ask, we're not going to be able to prove or disprove. It's pretty much going to be a hypothesis. And I'm curious as to why, and because of this, I'm curious as to why you think, or why, you're, why you think you're justified in saying it's God when it could be anything else. Because we can't eliminate the possibility of like what TGM said. We can't eliminate the possibility that it's some natural phenomena that we don't yet currently understand. Because we could just take God out of the equation and just make it X, and X could equal anything, you know? Well, and so, well, what? Um, why God? Well, I think uh, what I would have done is, if you would have accepted something, I mean, to me, it seems, you know, it seems obvious, it seems something that you'd even find in textbooks that physical things at the quantum level are constantly changing, physical things must have energy. I mean, I'm pretty sure it violates one of the laws of thermodynamics for something to be a physical thing to be at absolute zero. And if it's not absolute zero, it has energy and is therefore changing. Okay, then what I about mean, when the universe hits thermal equilibrium? Well, it still wouldn't be um, absolute zero, but, but my yeah, point is... I mean, I mean, there'd, be, there'd be no thermal change. I mean, everything... No, so it's impossible to get to absolute zero in physics because of quantum fluctuations. Uh, Will Smith is correct that's, about that's that. That's exactly but, my point. Yeah. But what, what, so the argument here is that uh, it's an argument from ignorance. It's saying here is something we know about. It can't explain the phenomenon. Uh, the UFO example. So oh look, a UFO. It's an unidentified flying object. It must be aliens. Well, well no. If it's unidentified, you can't then label it as aliens. So the fact that there is an uh, we don't know what would this this unchanging thing would be. You can't then conclude it must be God. That's an argument from ignorance. Um, it could be an unknown physical thing. We don't have any reason to believe that physical things can do it, but we also don't have any reason to believe anything else can do it either. So simply saying that we, the known we physical do stuff... because of quantum fluctuations. Because of quantum fluctuations, you can't get to absolute zero with a physical thing. Like Wait, so, so, um, so my, it, it, what it I said can't happen. Listen, 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 listen again to what I said. So we don't know what can do it. We don't, so we have, a, we have a thing that can't do it. We don't know the known stuff can't do it. Does that mean it's God? No. You can't say because this doesn't explain it, therefore it's God. That's an argument from ignorance. And that's why I was yeah, asking, I, that's why I was asking, like, why do you feel justified in saying that it is God? Because that will help us to understand why you believe in this thing. Like why you feel compelled to say it, it it's God, you know, because what T James T James posited out there is that it's the answer that you're choosing out of a world of a world of uh, possibilities to put in that hypothetical slot. I suppose the reason why I believe in um, that that this argument does eventually lead you to a God is because um, since uh, uh, well, since uh, physical things are constantly changing, that's my perspective. Maybe you disagree, but I believe this because of the laws of thermodynamics. Um, since these physical things are always changing, then they are contingent because contingent things rely on other things for their existence. Um, at, at, at any point in time, um, my current state of, of all the particles, at, even, to, even down to the quantum level, is explained by the previous instant and whatever forces were um, enacting on them. 
So it's, it's clear that this entire physical realm, since at the very smallest building blocks, the fundamental particles are made up um, of, of physical tiny things that are dependent upon the previous instant. Well, so, so what you said there momentum. is the problem. It's, it's not the entire okay. physical realm. It's the known physical realm. There could be more physical stuff we don't know about yet. So the known physical stuff can't reach absolute zero. Sure, does that mean no physical thing can? No, you can't conclude that. So you cannot say that all physical stuff is impossible to explain absolute zero. Um, I don't know why you keep bringing that up, it's completely irrelevant, but um, so we can say that the unchanging necessary thing could be an unknown kind of physical thing. You can't say because it's not like the known stuff, therefore it must be God. That's like saying, oh look, a UFO, it must be aliens. Like if I say, oh look, um, what knocked the cup over? Well, it wasn't a pineapple. Therefore, it must have been God. Well, no, it could have, you know, been the wind. Actually, yeah, well, actually, Will, this is really interesting. And because essentially what you've argued for and the way, like how you postulated it really only gets you to deism. So what, what's really interesting is that if you had just came up and just posited deism, like a, a, a non-specific, sufficiently powerful enough entity that kicked the football in the universe and then pissed off with no evidence of its existence, that's complete, it's an unfalsifiable hypothesis that is entire, that, that could very well be the case. We just don't know. And that but is, that you can, you can logically, conclude, you can rationally, theme. you could rationally conclude that without any logical contradiction. But you say the Christian God, because you're a Christian and you're non-denominational, you think it's the Christian God. So why do you think it's the Christian God and not just deism? Well, um, I, I mean, you are right. Um, it would it would get you to to deism, and that's about as far as you can get um, going by strong facts of, of of science and you know logic. But the thing is, deism is a form of theism. It's just a form of theism in which God does you know brings about the universe and just or or okay something you know that seems quite similar to God brings about the universe and just does nothing else and leaves no evidence. Right. Um, so so why that, so why the Christian God and not say brahma because or brahman because arguably as far as like you know or like his you know like texts and like books and like you know people that talk about it in the nature of such a thing brahman would be far superior to the christian god when it comes to just basic moral stuff so why the christian god well um it would seem that that is the question of you know in the title does a deity exist and i seem to to give you good reason to believe in deism which is a form of theism so surely my work here is done well no so Dev, i don't he's granting that jl is granting that for the sake of the argument to try and move on the conversation oh I'm, okay I've shown yeah, that i that reject i reject that deism is. purely that I, I don't accept supernatural explanations for things i simply say we don't know that's it but and and, and i don't you know when, when we know we'll know but we don't currently know so i'm not positing anything there Okay, well then, um, the reason why I would think it's specifically a Christian God, I mean, right. obviously it's, 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 it's impossible for me to, uh, or it's very hard for me to go and find that every single God that's ever existed and, you know, where there's these massive list of, you know, mythological creatures. Um, that's why I was bringing up on a purely, on a purely moral level, just going by the books, okay. take the Bago, take, 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 you know, uh, if you want to go with the Vedas or whatever, but just just Brahman in, its, in and of itself, and then comparing it to like the Christian, you know, Christian God, Triune God, Yahweh, whatever you want to call it. If you compare the two, one obviously has a better history than the other, especially in the eyes of its followers and believers. So, just on that standpoint, you you could choose, you could be justified in going and looking at Brahman. So, but you chose Christianity is that because you were raised in it, or is it because for some other reason that? Naturally, it's it's because of you know where I was born, the time I was born. If I was born in like I don't know, like 300 BC, maybe I maybe I'd be more into the Stoics than 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 you know. It's it's heavily to do with where I was born and you know my upbringing, but it isn't like I've just you know taken this and not giving it that much thought. When it comes to the weighing up ethically, which gods are are you know ethically better or not. But there doesn't seem I actually don't believe in, in objective morality and I'm still a Christian as contradictory as as that may seem. I do it's think it's intellectually that there are... honest. So I mean you're being intellectually honest there. I gotta agree. Yeah. 
I think that naturally, even if even if God would say that you ought to, for, for example, follow like the Ten Commandments, he is a subject fundamentally. He is an unembodied mind, even to the most intellectual Christians. Um, so he would still be a subject. But I think that his decisions ethically would be superior to ours because his ethics, like whenever I make an ethical decision, I look at the world around me and my perceived future. And when he would make a decision, he would um, theoretically be outside of time and therefore eternal. And he'll be making a decision based upon ha what effect it will have on the entirety of reality. So, you know, I mean, I mean, think about it. Um, like, if, if you were to ask someone, you know, how come you're doing all these exercises and you say to them, and, and, and the person says to you, oh, I'm, I'm putting myself through all this pain so that in about a year or two, I'm, I'm going to look much better and be healthier. But someone who only lives about 30 days, for example, let's say you'll die after 30 days, will look at people exercising and think that it's, it's you know, asceticism or like self-torture and, and, and that it's crazy. It sounds kind of like an, an appeal to emotion. No, no, no. Um, it is subjective ultimately. But I just think that God has more, more of reality to look at so he would know how his decisions would play out in the entirety of reality. Basically like the butterfly effect. Well, it's unique. I, I won't, I mean, I won't disagree with you. It's an, a unique perspective in looking at the Christian God. And there are obviously lots of Christians that would disagree with you on that. And you haven't given the, the, the Christian God any specific uh, attributes, which could be logically contradictory to themselves, like, you know, the Omni properties and such. So I think, you know, like I said, I think but like before, you, you can reason yourself to deism and why you accept that deism is wholly dependent upon, uh, dependent upon you, like your philosophy or, or your ideology. Um, I don't do it because I don't, I don't accept supernatural explanations. Jack himself is a deist. Uh, so, yeah, to ultimately it is subjective. But, uh, you know, I just don't see a reason to, to, you know, to put baggage where baggage doesn't need to go. Because whether, you know, especially depending upon which God you're believing in, especially if you start giving an attribute and stuff and you start adhering to one, I think you get way too much baggage to go along with it. So, Yeah, um, it, just, it just seems like... The only thing that actually could have brought reality um, into existence could be something that is, and and this isn't strictly to do with with the argument I gave. I, I gave it's, it must be something that is is capable of of you know not changing the same way you know a rock would just lie around if there aren't any forces acting upon it, and then I don't know conditionally make some sort or change or bring something about conditionally because if it was something that that was physical physical things just um you know they move or they get hotter or they get colder based upon external things so if you had this one thing in existence like the first thing if you were, if you were to believe in that it would if it was a physical thing or something that wasn't you know that couldn't conditionally um cause things to come to existence like uh like like a rock then nothing would ever exist and, and it would just be on its own. But it seems that the only things that can conditionally bring things into existence are minds. I can choose to get up. I can choose to stay seated. Uh, it seems that, you know, this is the only way you actually get contingent things coming from a necessary start. I, I, see, I see again, yeah, why, you know, how you can come to that conclusion. I still think it's, it's unfalsifiable. So it's um, like I said, if it if it serves a psychological or physiological utility for you, I can understand that. Um, I don't think it's it, it, it if it can ju it can justify it personally to you, but it, I don't. I wouldn't agree that it's just it's like a justifiable reason to believe in these things just because it serves some purpose or answers a question for you that can't currently be answered. Um, but hey, no, uh, no, no, um, not necessarily. Kant had the same conclusion. You know, he had his analogy of the of the ball resting eternally upon a pillow. You know, something that is that is unconscious, something that just um, that acts in a way that is not conditional, um, would just have its effects. Uh, you know, would also be necessary. You know, the ball resting upon the cushion creates an indent upon the cushion um, eternally, as as it lays on the cushion eternally. But if it was my hand on the cushion and and I was et eternal, I can willfully create a change by lifting my hand up, or I can willfully maintain um, the state of affairs by keeping my hand upon uh, the cushion. This is something that 
you know, even even Kant used as an argument. Yeah, but the problem, but the the problem is that there's no logical contradiction in an infinite regress of change. Uh, there's also well, Kant didn't know anything about the modern progress in wills or quantum mechanics. So there's absolutely no evidence that wills or decisions can exist outside of physics. There, it's like saying a pineapple can exist outside of physics. Like, nope, all pineapples we know of are a result of physics. So there's absolutely no evidence that a will could do anything um, outside of space or time or matter because there's no evidence of any such thing. The best explanation is that quantum fields and quantum fluctuations are the only best explanation of what could cause the initial motion or the initial change. Everything else is like wills aren't even an option. It's like saying a pineapple did it. It's completely incoherent. There is a, I mean, that was a good point, but the thing is, yes, there's no, no, I mean, even if it was a grant there's, that there's no evidence for a will existing outside of physics, there's no evidence against it, so it's still a possibility. And then yeah, from the possibilities it's, that we have, it's, it's we then weigh up the best, no, not necessarily, because then we can use evidence, logical evidence, or scientific, to weigh up the possibilities, and which yeah, one's true, the that, most that still likely. Gets you, yeah. It still only gets you to deism, rationally. Well, I, I keep so, disagreeing with, which I, is don't, a, a form I don't know of why deism. you, like, yeah, so it, it doesn't get you to deism, it literally does not get you to deism. Um, so I don't know, like, saying there's not nothing's proven it wrong doesn't matter like nothing has proven magical pixie leprechauns wrong it's still rational to think they don't exist because no positive evidence has been presented for it so saying that it doesn't disprove god is irrelevant you would you hold the burden of proof to provide evidence and what you provided isn't evidence i i mean i wouldn't say so because it's it's obvious that things that change are, are contingent they're yep. Their existence is contingent upon something else. My existence is contingent upon sure, my parents. I agree. None of so that doesn't physical things. God. Okay, physical things are either quantum, like I don't know, like like mm. quarks, for example. Well, no. So anytime you say physical things macro. are either, you're just you're equivocating our known knowledge to all knowledge. So again, you can't say wills have well, anything to do with it. We well, shouldn't use science then. No, you can use science just fine. Well, I just use science. I'm I'm using basic science of, you know, splitting reality into the quantum realm and into the macro realm That's of planets not and, and science. People. But so again, here that if you want to say That's physics, n no, the so physics doesn't do that. But if you want to say that whatever caused the beginning of the universe isn't of the known physics that's perfectly reasonable wrong based off of all the evidence in physics but if you wanted to say that that's fine but you could never conclude it was god ever based off of that that's an argument from ignorance saying it's not x will never be it is y so it doesn't matter how many times you say it's not the physics that we know about that will never indicate god ever for it to indicate yeah, god you need positive right, evidence yeah. Yeah, if I was to say that merely because it's not X, then it must be Y, that doesn't follow. But if X and Y are the only two options, and X isn't the case, then yes. it follows necessarily Correct. that Y Correct, which is, is why I proved that they're not the only two cases. So if I can give one oh. example that shows they're not the only two cases, that means your argument is an argument from ignorance. And guess what? There is what's, another case. What's the third case? Unknown physical stuff. The case? There is a Z. There is, it's not just X and Y. There is a Z. Or whatever other letter you want to choose, there is there's something else. The possibility of something else. If the possibility of something else exists and has not been eliminated, you can't just jump to the other one just because the X has been disproven. Yeah, unknown physical things isn't. I mean, it doesn't seem like an actual option. It just seems that there could be other. There's things no logical that you know about, contradiction, therefore perfectly... it's possible. So possible just means no logical contradiction. There's no logical contradiction with unknown physical stuff. In fact, it's pretty much guaranteed there's unknown physical stuff. So that's actually a better explanation here. That's not well. It isn't it isn't totally guaranteed. It's, it is extremely likely, obviously. Well, but, no, um, it's guaranteed. Like dark you... matter and dark energy, we know for a fact there are things about the physical world we don't understand. So it's a guarantee. Okay, well, um, if 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 we're doing this scientifically, then we ought to just go off the evidence that we have. the The best supported theory should be the one that um, that we champion. So, right. any sort of theory or or, or any sort of um, existent thing that we don't know of, we can't yet use until we actually know of it. Yes, like God. That's right. why God sure. isn't an option. God idea. Yeah, God, God so, wouldn't work if God provides no mechanistic explanation for why. It simply says God did it. It doesn't actually, there's no explanation as to the, the like, like how God has done it. 
So yeah, the search of God just doesn't get us anywhere. Backwards. God is just God's just stopgap. You know, it's just like God did it, and that's it. No, no further, no further. And well, how did God do it? Did God yeah, utilize well, energy outside of it? Did He use like utilize the energy that it's composed of? Do I like like how did it? Where did it pull something from nothing out of it? That it there's no mechanistic explanation there, so we would never use that. I don't know well, if the mechanistic yeah, explanation. Is of, uh, what are the main I, features of a of a scientific I idea? Oh, in order I don't know what's going on with this mic. King Xerxes, you're gonna need to fix your audio. You sound like you hit previously four times, my man. <laughs> sound, sound, sound like a whole god to me, man. Do you smoke cigarettes or eat them? Uh, but, but I mean, I, I, Will Smith, I, I agree with what you said when you said you're not allowed to posit things that haven't been shown to exist yet. Like, you're right, you're not. And one of those things is God. God is not a thing that's been shown to exist, just like unknown physics isn't a thing that's been shown to exist. But unknown physics is a lot more reasonable than an entirely new ontology that has no basis in reality. Saying that there's something of the same known stuff is more reasonable than saying there's a completely new thing that we have no evidence for. So of those two, the better theory here is unknown physical stuff. That's why God isn't accepted anywhere in physics as an origin of the universe. Yeah, but strings yeah. are. But the thing is, we know that um, that if it, I mean, as I said before, um, this isn't like I don't even have to provide um, direct evidence for God. I'm just saying that there are two. Like you can split this up in two ways. Sure, there are things that we may find down the line, but as of right now, we know that um, there are things that we can see in the macro realm, and there are things that we can't see directly, uh, at least certainly not with the naked eye, that are tiny, like like fundamental particles. Yeah, but again, none of that, that's again just saying, oh look, it's not X, that isn't evidence of Y. And there's not just yeah, two well, things here, there's lots of different, there's infinitely many things, it's X, Y, Z, A, B, x1 x2 there's infinitely many things that could be here god has no evidence i think necessarily that actually isn't the case like necessarily what? that's not the case but um let's 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 not get into infinities we'll just we'll just stick to uh, stick to this it's, all it's, i'm saying is that the physical basic realm possible is worlds philosophy yeah okay okay fair enough that that is true um, but but so the physical that... world is not contingent there's no evidence that the physical world is contingent there's evidence that some physical things are contingent there isn't a single physical thing that isn't contingent right, according to our knowledge. Right, but that isn't evidence that all physical things are contingent. That's 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 literally the same statement. No. All better. I'm going purely according to our knowledge. All, all right, swans right, right. are white. All swans I know of are white. Are those the two statements? Are those two statements the same statement? No, they're not. That is the black swan from Tassie. Yeah, I understand my uh, my error. Um, I'm like when doing science you have to go off what you know from yes. all that we know yes i, I agree I, you keep saying that and i keep agreeing but you you keep missing the part of there is no we know of god we do not know of god if i say yeah but um what, what caused that, let, let's say let's say what caused dark matter we know it wasn't protons and neutrons because those reflect light and it's not reflecting light does that mean it's leprechauns no because there's no evidence of leprechauns there's no evidence of That's god really just like there's no evidence of, of leprechauns it's, it's, it's more of a step he's by being step thing. Will, he's being hyperbolic. It's... Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I guess I just have a terrible sense of humor. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I guess um, if he, I mean, he has said already that from what we know, physical things are contingent. Um, the known from what physical we know, things are contingent. Yes, okay. And the known so, supernatural things are also contingent. Well, we, we don't really know, know of any... Right, uh, so a hundred percent of all known supernatural things are contingent. There are no examples of a I mean, non-contingent supernatural thing ever. That that's not the case because you could also then say um, that that they're all necessary because we don't know of any of them, and yet they can't all be contingent and necessary. It would just be neither because it's like ah, dealing with correct. zero. Correct. Since we have no examples of them, we're just making stuff up. But we do have examples of physical stuff. Saying it's physical, a new kind of physical thing, is reasonable. And since we don't have any evidence of supernatural things at all, the only rational conclusion yeah. is, is that all supernatural things are things people have made up in their head, which are contingent, and don't exist. If we're dealing with absolute knowledge, we don't know of anything supernatural, but there's certainly genuinely good evidence for it. Well, that, would be, that would be a good part to start. We, we should start with that one. Start, what is the good evidence yeah. for supernatural things before you start to invoke supernatural things? 
yeah, we, we do this not by investigating any supernatural thing you may believe in, but by investigating the natural world. We investigate the natural world and see that based upon our knowledge, things are contingent. And then we say contingent things cannot bring themselves into existence. Necessary thing does not mean supernatural. Thing. Necessary can be a physical thing I we don't know about. So again, that. how do we get to a well, supernatural thing? Not, not to our knowledge. To our knowledge, all physical things are contingent. I don't care about physical so, things. You cannot reference physical things here at all. How do you get to a supernatural thing? You could have brute contingencies. That's an option. Yes, it is. Brute contingencies are. Um, it's it, it's it's a little bit of a it's it's a little bit of a cheat. I mean, obviously, it's it's possible, but it, that that is definitely non falsifiable. It's not um, any more of a cheat than just defining God with certain characteristics or properties that you think makes it to the case that he must exist. But the whole God is necessary idea doesn't really track because if there was ever a state of affairs wherein God was the only thing that existed, saying that he existed yeah. necessarily is incoherent. And necessity implies a relation to something else. Like, if the universe yeah, exists, you can say God exists necessarily universe. because we exist and we had to be created by a God for whatever X, Y, Z bullshit reasons. Therefore, God must exist. It's a modus ponens. But if God is the only thing that exists in some state of affairs, then in that state of affairs, he wasn't necessary. He was random. No different than any things, other group. No, like things, things aren't necessary based upon their relation to other things. Things are necessary if and only if they exist in all possible worlds. It can be the only thing in existence, but as, it, as long as it exists in all possible worlds, well, God worlds, could randomly exist in all possible worlds. It didn't. It doesn't have to be the case that he exists in all possible worlds. Like he doesn't have to exist in all possible worlds. He just does, or maybe he doesn't. We don't know. Well, we so, don't know so, all yeah. possible worlds. Will, will Smith is correct here in possible world semantics. If there's any like variable, like a randomness thing or whatever, then the possible worlds would necessarily take up all of the possible randomnesses. So there couldn't be like it couldn't just happen like all dices roll sixes because in possible worlds it means every possible option did in fact happen um and so if there's a randomness variable all of the things that could randomly occur must have always occurred or must have occurred at least in one possible world so his definition of god as a thing that exists in all possible worlds couldn't be random in that context but again i don't he's presented no positive evidence of god he's just said Known physical stuff can't do X. Okay, why should we think a god exists and can do X? I'll explain because wherever this this X is, it must be something that doesn't change. For if it did change, it would be within time. For time measures change. I, I agree. I agree with that. None of that indicates a god. There's no positive evidence a god cannot change. And there's no logical contradiction in the infinite regress of things that change. I would disagree. Many people would as well. None of the consensus in physics, but get to the positive evidence that God is must necessarily exist. Yeah, I mean, from this point, it's pretty much inductive. It's pretty much these people from like however many you know, millennia ago, you know, living in the sand, just so happen to bring up qualities of a entity. Um, and specifically, a mental being, um, the kind of thing that could conditionally bring about change, even though it's necessary, and happens to be unchanging, even though they had no knowledge of of, of like modal logic, and um, yeah, 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 basically like something that they brought that they believed in back when they didn't have the tools to investigate. Well, will, will, and will now invest don't, don't will. I mean, when you're asking questions about what that that. You know the 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 lines of thinking of people of antiquity. Put yourself in their sandals, okay? <laughs> when you look at it, the conclusions you have to draw are what you are only from what you can observe, right? Yeah, of course, of course. So they're trying to explain things and trying to understand things given the level of technology, the level of understanding about reality. I mean, we're talking about groups of people that weren't even aware that there was any more land on the planet mm -hmm. than the areas that they that they currently occupied. So we have to look at the limitation of, of what they had and what they were working. So look, look at that framework and look at how many conclusions you can draw from within that very, very tiny, ignorant framework. So, yeah, yeah there yeah. are things going on. There's phenomena going on. There's, there's volcanoes and there's earthquakes <clears throat> and lightning and then there's tsunamis and, you know, and then, you know, like children die in childbirth or, you know, evil people never get punished. And you're, you're trying to find mm. explanations that make these things rational and, and make them line up. 
It'd be like, these occur. What, what's the purpose of this? It seems to have no purpose, but there must be purpose because it happened. And so you try to tr come up with things in your very, very tiny little worldview about to why these things happen. So, and then, yeah, God, you know, coming up with gods is not so impossible or coming up with something extraneous to human beings that in some way comports with what is observed about reality. You're talking about like 2,000 years ago, 25, 3,000, even 100,000 years ago when it was just anima, when it was just animism, like, you know, human beings looking at, looking at each other and animals, like what animates them? What, what makes them get up and go? What makes them move? What gives them feelings? Then you're going to ask questions like, well, it's nothing I can see. It's nothing I can touch. And it, apparently it goes away when I die. And for some reason, it just pops up and it's there when I'm alive. So where does it come from? And you ask you posit questions because you have no knowledge of anatomy, you have no knowledge of physics, you have no knowledge of chemistry. So you come up with the with whatever you can. And for you know, depending upon your culture, it was wildly different depending upon where those people were. We know now that there is not a dragon that exists underneath Mount Fuji that makes it rumble when it when it, when it is angry. So yeah, this 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 is a problem. I mean, um, I like these arguments take steps. A lot of arguments for God's existence take a lot more steps than mine do, or the mind does. It's only about two steps or three. You brought up a lot of moral criticisms of God. Yeah, I also believe that God's actions, to my perspective, is seriously messed up. Like I see, I see death, despair, Ukraine and like Russia and many sort of like like wars even before my existence, and I can't possibly justify it from my own perspective based on what i know that this is okay but um well um, yeah really quickly because you just said that god is an acting thinking agent he can't be the un the unmoved mover he's in motion as well he experiences change he experiences what he experiences change and thus he's temporal he's an acting thinking agent if he's conscious, exactly. he's yeah, 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 yeah. He thinks. So your that initial is, argument is, doesn't even get us to your God because your God not exactly build the conclusion. No, 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 no. That that isn't exactly the case because this is known as simultaneous causation. If you've seen some of William Lane Craig, which is almost inevitable, he does talk about this a little bit. So what what happens is you have and you you have God existing timelessly. God makes a decision to bring the universe into existence, and therefore time as well. The so God in exists in a he, changeless state, and then he just suddenly changes for no apparent reason. Yeah, as in the state is changeless because God has yet to make a change. It isn't like there's something confining him. It just the finest changes because no change is taking place. So then God would will God the universe wasn't thinking. Come. No, no, no. His, his he wasn't even conscious. He was, but the thing is, consciousness his, is non-quiescent. It can't be changeless. Not okay. So not exactly. God's first um, Con consciousness like, is action. literally defined as the ongoing interactions of a mind, thought process, yeah. sequence. Yeah. So yeah. if it you're going to posit changes, to me yeah. that a God exists who possesses a mind, but not in any way that's comparable to any mind that we've ever observed or experienced, uh, then I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You might as well be trying to talk to me about a triangle that ha doesn't have three corners. Yeah, I agree with with everything you said. But the thing is, it doesn't make logical sense, and here's why. As I said before, time is state. God makes, uh, God wills the universe to come into existence with, as in, like, with his mind, because that, that's that's well, that's all there is. He from just... a state of affairs uh, where yeah. he didn't create the universe to where he did create the universe, so he changed. Yeah, the reason. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm. The reason why that state was was changed is because God didn't change anything. His we can we can think about it this way. His first thought was to will the universe into existence, because God will so the universe wasn't into thinking. existence. No, 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 no. He mm. look look. So look. how could you even identify T, his bro, existence? Look, I understand how this is difficult to understand. But you have to let me at least finish. All right. So at time t zero, God exists changelessly. At time what it, one, what sense will... does it make to say that something exists for no amount of time? Something exists for no amount of time. No, 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 no. God, God would have existed probably for an infinite. What does it amount mean to time. exist? For, for something to exist is for something to obtain. To obtain what is he obtaining? He himself obtains. It's an ontological state of of existence. He 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 is real. 
rather than something that you just, isn't the in same the thing actual twice. world. He exists. Okay, he's he exists. in. The, I'm he's, asking what it means. What are you describing world. about something when you say that it exists? It it obtains in the actual world. That's a modal definition of it. Well, it's the actual so anyway, world because in our apparent physical reality, he doesn't appear to exist. And yeah, even but, for your own um, argument, he exists outside of that, whatever the fuck that means, prepositionally speaking. Well, a great response to that would be one that Kant would give. He would say that your perception of the world and reality is not the complete um, set of things that actually exist. You perceive... Okay, that's fine. I don't care. But the point is that your argument is relying on definitions that don't corroborate our experiences. So you're just changing the meanings of, of a particular word. Whenever I say something else exists, like a rock or a planet or a sun or whatever, those things exist. That means they're made of something. They take up some amount of space. And they move through a temporal realm. They change. Right? They have the capacity to alter states. Or to yeah, be affected. Like I said, there's a relationship there. With your god, there's none of that. Your god, your god shares nothing in common with anything else that exists. His mental state changed. completely change. dissimilar. No, no, no. His mental state did change. Okay, but the point is that he didn't even have a mental state prior to his willing the universe into existence. There's no state yeah. of mentality because he's non-conscious. He's... He's, he's he was non- conscious, but his first thought... That doesn't make any sense be... to say that he was conscious conscious, and he didn't have any thoughts prior to creating the universe. No, look, everyone has... Effectively, you're thought. saying that God came into existence at the same time the universe did. No, no, no. I'm saying there is no which, point which in time... Which also rules out that he existence. has a plan. Which also okay. rules out that he has a plan. If he didn't think about creating the universe before creating the universe, he can't have a plan for the universe that he is about to create. Not necessarily, because God first would come in. Yes, necessarily. Okay, well, let me actually give a reply rather than just talking between yourselves. Okay, so God never came into existence. He would exist constantly, the same way numbers exist constantly. That's if you believe They don't exist. That, 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 don't is not, exist. that is not if what I said. Exist. You said he didn't have thoughts. You said he didn't have thoughts before he created the universe. That means, by definition, that he didn't have a plan for the universe that he was going to create. God wouldn't need to construct a plan because he would be all-knowing. He would know exactly what he, he would need to do. He couldn't create a plan, and he couldn't be all-knowing if he didn't have thoughts. So he knew nothing he, until he, he created the universe. No, 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 no. no. Well, that, that is, no, that's, no. that's legit. A, a, that, the, legitimately, what you just said is you, you're contradicting yourself. You, If you, yes. like, consciousness in and of itself, the possession of knowledge, the possession of thoughts, like, like Xerxes was saying, consciousness is not quiescent, Okay. So that's the point. What you're essentially doing is you're redefining, you're, or, or you're special pleading God out of the circumstances that we understand. You're basically saying that a completely different set of circumstances apply to God that don't apply to us. And you can special plead that all you want, want, but that that the you're legitimately saying that God had knowledge, and then God did. God had knowledge. God had omniscient knowledge, infallible omniscient knowledge, before it ever had a thought. And that doesn't make any sense because with the first thought in your in your way you're sitting in its first thought everything was created, but it did not think anything yet possessed all knowledge. Okay, you're so that, the that, could, of that couldn't be because you can't have knowledge without thought processes. E- even even if uh, will you could come up with some weird argument to try and make this work. All you're going to do is wind up using two different definitions of the word exist. So when you say that we exist or that the universe exists or that other objects exist, you're describing something differently about them than you are when you say God exists and the word doesn't have the same meaning. Well, um, but when we say my... when we say does a God exist, we're using the same definition for the word existence as we would be if we asked, you know, do do minotaurs exist or is there a planet with life out there that exists, another planet out there that exists with intelligent life? We, we, we mean like the same thing when we say exist. Yeah, we, we there have is a only one reference. Yeah, there is only one definition of existence, which is that it apparently it not because the the, the way in which your God exists does not possess a reference to the way in which we perceive anything else existing. Well, okay, okay, how exactly? Well, because your God is some simultaneously changeless and he can change. Uh, he's simultaneously present and non-present. He simultaneously occupies space and doesn't. These are all just logical contradictions that don't make any sense. I mean, you're, okay, so, you're arguing that your God is a stick that only has one end. Okay, so... And, and um, he's I a thinking actually, ag- agent without, without having thoughts. 
He is okay. So okay. you didn't actually let me finish um, my my explanation. It is very brief. All it is is that at time t zero, God is existing changelessly, and then at time t one is his first thought. His first thought is within time, for it's in time t one. That's how you can have a changeless being make a make a change. Your, your argument is that God is literally just a mind that he's not made of any kind of physical material. So his yeah, only yeah, real yeah, exactly. definable characteristic is his mind, which doesn't exactly. exist if he's not thinking. You 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 his can't argue that a mind is there if it doesn't think. Like the definition of a mind is a is a conscious will, meditation, which he didn't that. possess prior to his uh, simultaneous decision to create the universe at the moment the universe was created. Which at that point, all you're really arguing is that the universe came into existence and that God was there, but you can't really argue for any sort of facilitating relationship between the two. I can is 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 is, is that this unembodied mind? No, there's was no in a meditative priority. State. Yeah, because because chronology started with the effect. What was God affecting? What was God no, affecting? No, no, no. No, it isn't like I'm not saying God affected something. I'm saying God willed the universe into existence, and the and 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 the and the universe obtained. The universe obtaining was the effect. God willing the universe into existence was the cause. God. Yeah, but you God have a change. You have a universe. changeless. You have a changeless yeah. quiescent state, devoid of any potential, and then God no, just suddenly thinks for some that's random true. reason, and that somehow facilitates the existence of all physical reality. Here's the, here's the here's the here's the the real here's the crux of it will and what it's going to come okay. down to is like it, even if you said like like god is a mind that didn't have any thoughts but possessed all knowledge and then all of a sudden it thought and then everything was created okay that's a change that it made yeah that the changeless thing made it made a change why did it decide to do that change because that was its its desire Okay, it, desire it would have to change. recognize its own desire in order to enact that change, which yeah. would be a thought. But that that posits a thought yeah. before the first thought. No, he, that he would couldn't. Be... He couldn't have desired anything if right. he didn't think. You desire something and then you do it. Okay, well, okay. So to answer that, from time t zero, God desired to do nothing. That was his. That that was that was his state of mind. He desired to do nothing. And then from and oh, at time so T1, basically what you so basically what you're saying is that you're positing a god, and every single time someone comes up and uh, has an objection to your definition of god, you're changing the definition. I don't think that's entirely honest. And, all, that's and ultimately, just and I mean, ultimately, that's, it really, that's like totally reasonable because whenever you have will, a theory will. and you can't bring up evidence, you ought to change it to make sure that it withstands it. But will okay, so ultimately, no, 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 no. Well, you, you have to. You have to come ultimately, up with a this theory. Gets, well, which ultimately, this is where we're, we're really, Peter. How's like, Ultimately, we're just we're really just going around in circles. It keeps going around to you, the contradiction that you have, and then you keep trying to to push God around the logical entailments of what that is. Either you're special pleading it or trying to do that. But we are just okay. going around in circles. Ultimately, this comes down to it, you're, it's an unfalsifiable hypothesis, which still only gets you to de deism and doesn't get you to a get, doesn't get you to a particular God. So, and I think we've addressed this as much as we can for the sake of the other people that we have in the mm -hmm. audience. We do need to have to move on to somebody else because at this point, I was, uh, you, jail. you haven't, at this point, uh, at this point, Will hasn't presented any evidence to support why this thing exists or even why it's necessary. Evidence. So what, evidence. What, what I was trying to, what I was trying to point out, Will, is that you're constantly moving the goalpost and there's no way of having an honest conversation if that is what you're doing. If every okay, single time well, we point out that there's a flaw in your hypothesis, because it's far from being a theory, uh, every time we point that out, you change things around. That's not how this works. Come up with a working model and then present it without having to change everything every single time we come up with a flaw in your well, model. Right. The thing is, I had my understanding of how God would have brought the universe into existence before this conversation. You brought up some very good points. Each time you brought up a point, I changed my theory so that it would maintain its, you know, um, what what I believe, which is that some unembodied mind brought things into existence. And then, okay, so if if you're not exactly satisfied with the fact that I keep changing things, you should go off my most recent um modification the same way someone who who makes code and has to sort out bugs um the best version yeah that's of what the your world you has is bugs 
Your, yeah, yeah, yeah. And your worldview has bugs out, and it's constantly it. collapsing in on itself. Okay, then, then yeah. this is what you should believe. An unembodied mind had the desire to do nothing, the same way a Buddhist monk meditates and desires to do nothing. Why should I desires believe that an nothing. unembodied mind is possible? An unembodied mind, well, 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 because there isn't any logical contradiction in it. I have, I have one serious you question. Define a mind. How do you know? How do you know brain? God's you know what mind? Saying, a guy did. We well, can't, wait. So we if can't I, if I define a mind, if I define a mind as a a the the emergent property of a physical brain, then it would be a logical contradiction. Okay. Well, and, and all the evidence I will. have available to me presently defines a mind. I, leads me to the logical conclusion that a Not mind exactly is that which is the emergent property of a physical brain. There are there are immaterial aspects to the mind. There is qualia, which is sense data. We have no way of actually showing that as a physical thing. We have memories. I'm still and... curious. How do you know God's mind? How do I, okay. you know what He did or did not think? Because Where did you get this knowledge from? I get this knowledge from um, rubbing a. Um, rubbing a crystal ball and no, no no i'm kidding um i literally just just look at all of the options and then any option that is look you know fails logically or because of uh, science i just cut away so far the only thing that is remaining is that a mind uh, from eternity chose to do nothing the same way buddhists millions of buddhists uh, meditate and choose to do nothing we can and cut, we can cut that away as well some... because every single mind we're aware of is reliant on a brain and is reliant on a body. We don't know any disembodied minds. You also okay, run into, you also run into the logical agreement. contradiction. Will, Will, you also run into the logical contradiction of omniscience. Because the problem with omniscience is that if you're saying that God is a mind and God is God is conscious, God is a mind, and oh. God can make choices after it made its first effort, its first thought, which is the point of creation, then God can make choices after that or God can have thoughts after that. The problem is, is that if if God God can't if God is omniscient, God can't change its mind, because changing one's mind when, when you have when there's a mind, changing one's mind entails like you know changing one's position on a thing or changing you know like one's outlook based upon new information. So you have your set amount of information, you receive new information, and then you change your position on it, just like we've been doing in this conversation. The problem exactly. is God can't do that. God can't change yeah. its mind because God Indeed. possesses all knowledge. So if God infallibly knows everything via omniscience, then God would never change its mind. God is just this static mind car traveling down a track that doesn't ever do anything. Yeah, exactly. So that's, well, then, I mean, then that God can't do anything, that God doesn't make choices, that God doesn't enter. I mean, it's, it's all. He does make choices. It's just that his choices are based upon total knowledge. All but it knowledge. can't make choices because it already knows what the next thing is already going to be truthfully. And of all the possibility exactly, yeah. of all true propositions, including the actions of God, it knows what to be. Because if, if, I, if I have 10 possible choices to make and all of them are true propositions, nine of them are false because I already know infallibly what the, what the one I'm going to choose is. Yeah. So that means that the other nine are not true propositions. They're false propositions. They're logically consistent, but they're false because they're not the one I'm going to choose. Which they means if God, no, 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 no. if God it omnisciently is, knows, if God omnisciently knows what the true propositions are, it has no choice but to follow through with what it already knows is true. No. Okay. So um, God. God. Um, way of explaining that is just to say that God prophecy. is following a script. That God's following okay. a script. The thing is, like, a proposition isn't true or false until it comes into the actual world or does not come into the actual world. God wouldn't know what he would do, for example, assuming you're... you're then God you're is not omniscient. No. H how? How's you just said God, then God wouldn't know. God would know what? I mean, I, I, I no, don't... You said that God means. wouldn't know. But no, God no, no, does no. know because God knows yeah. omnisciently. No, okay, I'm saying this. God knows all possibilities. And he knows what he would do in that situation the same way you would know what you would do in a hypothetical situation. And then once he gets to the, well, isn't it even that once he gets there, he just knows what he would do. So he just does it. 
The same no, way, it's not you that know, he knows you... what I would. He knows what I would do, which entails that he knows my actions before I do them. No, no. I, I mean, he knows what he would do. So, so if I was God, no, no, no. I know that. No, if yeah. God is omniscient, he knows all possibilities, but he also knows every single final outcome. Yeah. So there, yes, there's yes, no yes. way of okay, changing so if, anything. So if God knows all possible final outcomes. Yes. Okay. So of all the realm of all true propositions, and of all choices that are logically contradict, that are logically uh, that are logical, that are logical, that that, that uh, then any choice that is made becomes the true proposition. All the other ones become false because they didn't happen. So if God knows all true propositions, then God knows the outcomes of all actions, including God's own actions. And if God yeah. knows the outcomes yeah. of all actions, then everything becomes irrelevant because it only matters because God already knows the ending. Which means yeah, everything is pre which means that. everything is predetermined. It's all running off a script. And God can't okay. change anything. It, and the script wouldn't that God himself wouldn't be responsible for because he's merely just aware of it. And That's therefore everything that happens is be. necessary. It wouldn't be necessary because God's choices are based God upon God doesn't have choices. This is the problem, Will. Your God no. can't have choices by virtue of his own characteristics. He, no, look, look. Um, the logical because... entailment of its attributes defeat it. Not exactly. And maybe I mean, maybe as... I can help. Uh, okay, maybe I well. can help and put up an analogy that, that helps you, Will. To God, okay, reality is a movie that he has already seen. If he can watch it over and over again, it will still be the same movie. There's nothing that can be changed because in his knowledge, it already happened. So we're, we're in this movie. We don't have free will. God doesn't have free will. Everything just happens and no one can make a change in order to, to make things different. Yeah. Because um, if it could, if it could, it would not be omniscient. It also, defeats it, being, the, it also defeats the necessity okay, of prayer we'll because it also yes. defeats prayer because you wouldn't need to pray to the same because it's already all set. Okay, well, it's more it's more like a versus battle, but it's a versus battle between all conscious entities and God knows exactly what would happen um, between all of them. Like, for example, God would know what I would choose in any given situation. So no, he knows no, what no, I you will get that do. wrong. I, God knows true what or, will happen. You get that wrong. God knows what will happen, not what would happen. He, f to him, it already happened. He knows he omniscient. all the things. You know, omni he omnisciently knows all the things that could happen, and he also knows what will happen. And so kind of borders yes, into yes, like yes, the yes, yes. of time okay, where all things that. just exist simultaneously. So then there's no like even even in this this uh, what's I the word I'm looking that, yeah. for this. Uh, I, there's a word I, I can't think of off the top of my head, but in this system where you have an omniscient God, a God that's capable of knowing all things simultaneously, all true propositions simultaneously, these propositions would also all have to be true simultaneously in order for God to know them all at the same time. And if God knows them all at the same time, then this universe is running off of some predetermined program that God isn't in control of because it just happens to be the case that he exists within this reality and that he knows these things, and he never made the choice to know these things, and he never made the choice to exist, he just does. And everything that happens consequently to that just does happen. And God isn't responsible for administering or otherwise initiating those outcomes. He's just kind of a, a, a bystander watching it all happen simultaneously. Okay, well, okay, so here's the error in that. Um, if I have two options, A or B, let's say God knows that I, that mm -hmm. I will do A, and I'm looking at, okay, oh, what, should, what should I do, A or B? There is no logical contradiction in me choosing B because if, if I would choose B, then God's knowledge would have been that I would choose B. And that made no sense. If God that, knows that you're going to choose A, if, if, if the proposition yeah. is that God knows you will choose A, then you can't do anything but choose A. You can't um, choose okay. B. B is, just, not, B is just, no longer an option. One second. Yeah, there's okay. there isn't even a po it's, it's the illusion of a possibility. It's not it's, a real possibility. It is a logical contradiction. So if God knows, you will choose A. Knowledge is a justified and true then belief. B is a contradiction. I understand. Right. But the thing is, God's knowledge doesn't confine what I do. What I do. If God is omniscient, it does. If God is omniscient, it does. It does confine what you. It does what confine well, I mean, what you would, do because it takes it, away your no, your possibility to choose around. anything else than 
the final outcome that God already knows. You have no yeah, choice. But it's the other way around. It's, it's the other way around. What it's I not. would do. No, look. If if, if I it's would the other way around, then God is not omniscient. Then God has to respond to your choices, which makes you more powerful than God, because now God so, has no no uh, control over what you are going to do. Okay. I yeah. Yeah. But like, we got that's, that's, that's my exact point. Like, if if I would choose A, then God's knowledge would would, would be that in the situation I would choose A. If I would choose B, God's knowledge would, would be that in the situation He would choose B. Whether I would choose, but He God would know. know. That can be if God knows the anything. final outcome. If God knows yeah, yeah, the final outcome of what you are going to choose, you have no choice. And God's knowledge is based upon my choice. We no, no, no. God's knowledge is your... not based upon your choice. If God is omniscient, He knows the final outcome. And the final outcome is That's my choice. Based on you your choice. We need to move. We need to move on to our next uh, audience yeah. member pretty soon. So let's let's right, try to keep this down to about thirty seconds to a minute and get this wrapped up. Yeah, Whatever you do is going to be the consequence of some predetermined script that God is just merely aware of. It's not that he's personally influencing your behaviors, but the fact that he has the capacity to know what everything is or what everything is going to be, it means that all those propositions are already true. That there's some external force I, I that has already dictated the every course, every I course the of the writer. universe. You have an illusion of choice. That doesn't mean you no, actually no, no. did anything there. You are just following uh, the script the same way God is, and it appears to be the case that you're making the choice in the moment. No, just because your knowledge is limited on the fact. are literally the storyline. My choices okay, are so, the storyline, so and God knows the script. Does God know what you will choose? Yes, he knows what I will choose, but his knowledge of what I will choose is based upon me. So God knows all the choices you will make before yes. you make them. And yeah. Yes. But that doesn't confine me. It's, it's, it's purely based on what I choose. Whatever I choose is No, that's not the way it works. No, no, it's, no. It's where, will where that is contradictory. God, is the God, truth. will that is contradictory. If God knows what uh, you're going to choose that that's the choice that you're going to make you cannot make another choice yeah but no. oh um, you can't have you a last minute no, no, change if, if of have, mind and have, choose sorry, something if, differently if i have an apple and an orange and i have a choice between the two and god knows infallibly that i will choose apple that is the same as saying i cannot choose orange yeah but the thing is god's foreknowledge could have been different because my choice could have been different and you shift the goalposts again that isn't shifting the goalposts. Been different. That, no, that, that, that is, is that, that is, is a, moving. The, everything that, is that moving happens is a matter post. of necessity at that point. No, it's called the evolution of a theory. If if you make an objection to what I've said, that, and it's good not called the I'm evolution of a theory, theory. it's called this moving the goalposts. It's not fallacious. It's moving you, the goalposts. It's not the evolution of a theory. We can move on. Look. Darwin's, Darwin's original theory of evolution, I know this is um, a poor choice of words, but Darwin's original yeah, theory has nothing difference. to do with your capacity to make choices. Okay, 30 seconds it was have passed. Crap. We appreciate yeah. you coming up. Will. You have an awesome Thanks, day. We're going to go ahead and pull up the next guest. We think, thank you for coming up here and talking with us. Uh, Nico has been waiting for a really, really long time, so I just invited you up. Uh, feel free to uh, begin. Oh, yeah. Hey, so this is... Uh, I mean, I see the title, but I, I don't I'm really... I'm sorry to interrupt you, Nico. Can you turn up your volume or speak closer to your mic? It's uh, Your voice is very faint. Oh, uh, can you guys hear me better now? A little bit, yes. Uh, okay, so I don't think uh, I can convince you guys, but like I'm just here to discuss. So Well, well start off with, like, what do you believe? Like, are you well, a Christian, Muslim? Are you particular denomination? Oh, uh, no, no, no. I used to be atheist. Now I'm just confused, I guess. <laughs> so. Uh, okay, so we need to get some clarity here. Do you believe in a god, a goddess, or a bunch of them, or do you not believe in any? I think a god is more likely. Okay, so you lean toward uh, the, the possibility of a god existing. And can you tell us a bit about this god? Okay, so. Yeah, my... or, or, or maybe more precise, can you express what caused your doubt? Uh, Actually, uh, we're going to go with the first uh, question. Not, Peter, not Peter, he was just about to explain uh, about his deity. We'll just listen to that first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, I think uh, in reality, mm. consciousness is a thing we can be certain of. And uh, did you say non-duality? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm. I'm not saying like 
things beside consciousness can't exist. I just think like, mm. so let me just explain. So I think consciousness is the only thing in reality we can be absolutely certain of existing. And, uh, and I think that would require something like necessarily conscious holding up the thing that we call external world. For example, us being conscious beings, right? So when we don't, look at something um for example let's say a candle let's say we uh mm-hmm. light up a candle and go somewhere else and we come back like we're not consciously perceiving that candle but when we come back we see it still burning so like something is uh controlling that thing so i think that God thing exists is because object uh, permanence uh, in a sense i don't know what that means but if it's like <laughs> what i said <laughs> But right. like, <laughs> uh, N- Nico, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Um, if if consciousness, like this, sounds somewhat like a like a monistic idea, wherein everything is just the the product of the consciousness. Like we we exist purely as conscious agents, and everything else is just a manifestation of that consciousness. So there is no real physical reality. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. What experiment could you conduct to determine whether or not that's the case? Uh. I mean, do we need experiences since, like, we all know we are conscious? No, no, no. My, my, my question is, what experiment can you use to determine that physical reality doesn't exist and it's just merely the product of consciousness? I mean, I, I can't do that, right? Because So what, what you're f- faced with here is uh, a principle of underdeterminism, wherein you have no way of, of determining whether or not physical reality actually exists versus just... But- Everything being a product of consciousness. Be, wouldn't that be assumption thinking like something external to consciousness exists? Like uh, how would you prove something external not, to consciousness? Not any more than it's an assumption that consciousness exists. I mean, if you really want to back this all the way into like hard solipsism, then you could just pretend in your own mind that you're the only thing that exists and everything else is just a, a figment of your imagination. But uh, you're going to run into some predictive problems with that. Uh, we can predict outcomes of our physical reality based on observations and experiences and oftentimes we can be wrong about those things which would incline us to assume that physical reality does exist independently of our minds uh, given the fact that we have been wrong about things in the past and we learn new information about our reality as time moves on uh, you know it's not static so if, if consciousness was truly responsible for our perception of everything around us and that those things didn't actually exist independent of our ability to observe them you wouldn't expect them to change, but they do. They change yeah, and our, our ability to know things about them changes. So like yeah. if I have a box and I don't know what's in the box, right? That yes. doesn't make sense. If, if everything exists as a product of my consciousness, I should know what's in the box prior to me opening it. But I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I have to and open it to I'm find saying. out. That's what I'm saying, that we are not the conscious beings that are con- that is controlling the thing we perceive as the external world. It's something uh more fundamentally conscious like the necessary why would we even make that assumption to begin with because uh something has to uh, run the things we see since our consciousness doesn't affect it so why should we assume it's consciousness at all then if our if our only observable experience with consciousness if the only consciousnesses that we can actually interact with and predict don't possess this ability why should we assume that it's the product of consciousness at all it just seems like because, it's a percentage because of we can't be sure about anything else except consciousness. Like, do you think uh, the TV? I, I can't be sure about anything else except my own consciousness, right? That's the only thing I can know for certain exists. My own self awareness, me, I, whatever that is. But the things that I experience extant to that, the fact that I can not know certain things about the properties of those those extant objects, uh, that that doesn't seem to compute within if I go, if I were to take a like a like a compare and contrast list what would I expect in a world where everything is the product of my consciousness and what would I expect in a world where there's a physical reality that exists excellence of me and I'm just perceiving that the particular reality that I'm existing in now tends to have more in common with that latter list okay so I think like as reality is now I think uh if consciousness was the only thing that existed you see as it is right but if things existed external to consciousness, uh, I don't know how you do that because we can't never know 
things external to consciousness. Oh, that's not the because question. Because I can be unaware of facts about my reality. And I do have a question for you. You mentioned that uh, something has to be running reality. I'm wondering how you come to determine that, that that's the case, that reality must be run by something, and it's not just a, just a matter of natural uh, processes. I mean, okay, it, it could be something natural, but it has to run by something. Like, something needs to be, like, the first cause, in my opinion. Why? Uh, because... I mean, you guys did say that uh, infinite regress is possible. I don't see how, because uh, if things are... Well, there's no internal contradiction in infinite regress. It's just that things happen in a sequence that's not exactly uh, harmonious to our prescriptive way of thinking about things. Uh, but it doesn't necessarily violate any of the conventional laws of logic. Uh, how so? Because, like, as I'm seeing it now, right? So I think, like, if uh, there was uh, infinite regress of causes, uh, we wouldn't come to this cause because uh, the causes before us goes infinitely back. Wait, so in an infinite regress of, let's say, an infinite regress of numbers, does that mean you'd never arrive at four? Or five, uh, or yeah. six, or seven, I, or eight? I, I say yes because there's like infinite numbers, like negative numbers before that. But you would never arrive at four? Yeah, in a sense. So how would you know what five well, I could. So, I can account for I can count from one to two, despite there being an infinite number of variables in between one and two. Right. Uh, but the other thing to consider here is that even if we were to operate based on your idea, you wouldn't get out of this infinite trap, because then you would have a conscious agent who exists infinitely and never arrives at the point where it decides to create things excellent to itself. But uh, isn't that doesn't the first cause have to be timeless? Since like we know time started to exist. No, we know we yeah, have time an observable is just the measurement point. of change. We have an observable point, but we don't know anything beyond that. So essentially, what you're doing is you're you're like you're doing the same thing that the previous uh, the previous person did is that you're applying an answer to something we have no data about. So we have the beginning of observability for our universe. Observability meaning me, you know measurability, and at, at the, we, and anything beyond that, anything before it. We have scant information. We have enough information to create some really, really strong working hypotheses as to what could possibly be there, but it doesn't indicate any one particular thing in, you know, definitely. That's why we have no theories. It's, a, yeah. it's a, like a lot of hypotheses. So eventually, you're, I mean, you're saying, so, okay, it looks like this, and you're taking what we have to work with, which is you know, everything that we can currently observe, and you're applying what we know about this to something beyond what we currently know. Which is the best that we can, really the best that we can do. Yeah, but it's yeah. still it's it's still hypothetical, and it doesn't and it there's no there's no necessity to say it must be a god. In short, we don't know that time had a beginning uh, because uh, uh, it, there's there's stuff as uh, J L Warren is saying we don't have access to, and I, and I think that there's a, a common mistake people make uh, largely because of the way it gets presented in science fiction is that uh, somehow time can be traversed uh, bi-directionally, just like uh, each of our X, Y, Z in our three-dimensional space. Um, I, I don't see time that way myself. To, to me, time is just uh, something that we observe the passage of uh, by uh, noticing change. And uh, so I, I don't see that uh, time is something that starts and stops and uh, begins and ends. It's, it's, just, uh, it's just an emergent property of, uh, of reality. I, I, would you know, disagree. Really I, I would disagree with most of what you guys said there. Time had a beginning at the Big Bang. Time is a specific field, space-time field. It's one kind of a field, and that specific field had a beginning at the Big Bang. But there could be other fields that facilitate change that aren't time. Time is just one kind of a field. But, but it, it also space it also time maybe. Question. But if I was just to use the word time in a colloquial sense, I would literally just be referring to the measurement of change. So if there's any sequence or progress or transition from states of affairs, then that would be time. That'd That's be how I'm looking at it too. Yeah. It's also um, it also so, asks the question if God knew all this, if God existed <laughs> and God knew all this and knew it like mechanistically and all the finer nuances of it, why couldn't it convey this information to human beings? you know right from the no, get-go so there wasn't all these problematic explanations that try to go into it and we didn't have to rely on breaking yeah, reality think, to try and justify okay, these things okay i don't think i don't think like god necessarily has to be omniscient 
I just think no, like, no, no. I'm just saying if God talk. exists and it and it yeah. if, if this thing exists and it conveys information to us, why can't it do it in a coherent way? What? I don't think that had well, anything to do like, with his argument. So his argument was no. That... I'm, I'm going one step further, T Jump. That's what I'm doing. Okay, I'm taking it one step further. It's all I'm doing. So what I'm basically saying is that if we're looking at the entailments that this thing exists and this thing has as just basic knowledge, not omniscient, I didn't even say omniscient, I just said basic knowledge, (laughs) then it should be able to communicate in a particular way and communicate information effectively and efficiently, but it doesn't do that. So I still, it, you know, it, it, we keep pushing I back mean, on this whole, the, the whole okay, God I concept. Never, I never said that it has to do that. Like, I mean, it's not, I never said it's uh, good. Like, I think doing that would be good, I guess. So I didn't say, like, this God has to be good. It's just a conscious, uh, fundamental thing. That this then it thing pushes it to good. deism, and then, then it pushes it to deism. It's unfalsifiable. It doesn't get you to any particular God. It's a sufficiently powerful enough one. I, I never said that, bro. If they show deism, they win. That that's the whole point. I don't know why you keep saying it shows deism. Like that that's just admitting that they're right, essentially. His argument was is that consciousness, there needs to be some fundamental consciousness. I don't see any reason why that's the case. So yes, our consciousness exists. So consciousness is the most uh fundamental thing we can know exists, but we don't know what creates it. We have no reason to believe consciousness is itself a fundamental essence that isn't created by other things. Could it be? Sure. Might it not be? Yes. So why should we think that there's consciousness is fundamental in any way? Be- just by the first statement, uh, that's the only thing we can be certain of. Anything else? We you know it propose, exists. We know consciousness you... exists, but it could be made of other stuff. Yes. It could be, but what is the other stuff? No, no, but there's no evidence it's not, so you can't assume it isn't. I mean, like inductively i know this thing exists right yes i don't know if some other thing exists so right. inductively the most fundamental thing would be something i know exists for sure no i know an apple exists i don't know what apples are made of therefore apples are fundamental like no 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 i didn't say i i don't know what apples are made of like if apples uh were the only yeah, so basically, as I was saying, like, if apples are the only thing I can be certain of existing, I shouldn't uh, assume something other than apples <laughs> are going to be fundamental. Uh, sure you can. You don't have any reason to believe the apple is fundamental. No reason has been presented to say the apple is fundamental just because you know it exists. So we know consciousness exists. Great. Is that evidence that consciousness is fundamental? No. I mean, I, I think you do have a point there. I'm not going to argue against that. But it was, yeah, I, I I don't have a point against that. It was a nice conversation. You guys, uh, I guess, win. And yeah, thank you for this. I'll go back to the audience. I do appreciate your time. Thank you for coming up. Uh, I see Aquila in the audience. Uh, Aquila, I'm sure, is going to convince all of us that a god exists. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, I'm a Catholic and I have to be true to my paradigm, so I can't actually convince you that God exists, but I can question your beliefs, if that's acceptable. You can try. I don't, uh, like, are you talking about beliefs in deities? Because I don't have any in this this department. Uh, Everyone has beliefs, not necessarily in deities. Sure, Um, we're talking about trying to uh, convince us that a, a goddess or a god exists a deity exists so uh, uh if you want to talk about other beliefs uh, we're going to have to understand how they're relevant to the conversation okay well it seems i mean to me at, there's at least three pos- choices of what could be classified as necessary or you know believable uh being and that would be uh, a collection of necessary beings, which you would call the universe, the world, or multiverses, or whatever it is. Um, the self in some sort of uh, solipsistic belief system, or a non finite or infinite being that's outside of time and isn't in place. It's, it's not finite in any particular sense. At least three, there's maybe more. And Believing that you're the only thing that exists, as solipsists do, uh, it's not very, not very appealing. The universe one's more 
tangible and acceptable in many ways. And the one in God is more appealing if it's true. That's my perspective. And so I'd question, (laughs) what is your belief? Do you believe that you exist and nothing else or the universe is and you're part of it and that exists necessarily or that God exists? Well, I wanted to pick up on something you said there. You said, uh, the, the God belief is more compelling if it's true. Well, no, it's more compelling mm. for most people, even if it's false, because the fact that people believe something doesn't make it true. The fact that it's true doesn't make it compelling. Compelling this has nothing to do with truth. Um, so why should we think I, that it's true? Well, the thing is, like, in making this choice, and I think in, in some way people are free to make this choice, like, believe they're they're the only thing, the universe is the only thing, God is the most important thing, and all the other things are true, yourself and the universe included. Um, Those choices come with certain consequences and biases to the choice. Like if you were to believe in God and on top of just God existing, that he became incarnate and revealed himself and established a church and established a means to accessing him and stated there's consequences for not reaching him. Um, the con- like what's tied up with taking that belief, there's costs. Um, and Sorry, as a Catholic, I, want, I can uh, tell can you, you. Can you clarify one thing for me? Did you, did you yeah. say make a choice to believe that God exists? Because you cannot mm-hmm. choose what you believe. I think I can. I mean, like uh, I've certainly at times can, in my life you when choose, I was there. Can you choose? Can you choose this very moment? Uh, for instance, to believe in uh, a great juju on the mountain as the creator of all things. Can you, can you be convinced that that is the case? Can you believe that right now? Uh, I, 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 I could, uh, but it would come at a, a, a cost and it would come at a mental cost. Uh, it would come at a, uh, a sense how, of... How could you do that? I could just... Peter. Yeah, I, I could literally that. adopt a belief... Um, but what I would be sacrificing is my current beliefs as well as some semblance of mental dignity. It's like I'm just going to arbitrarily believe in some nonsense on top of a mountain. I could choose to do that. Maybe maybe, maybe it's just me, but I couldn't believe something that, um, that I'm not convinced of is real. Well, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know if I really care about the choices thing like why should we choose to believe God is real like I, I usually choose to believe things that have evidence yeah. do we have any evidence well I mean if you're asking evidence evidence is only really uh, I guess in terms of the senses like uh, well, to me anyway like what I would accept as what I would term evidence would be things that I can either see touch taste or put under a microscope or see through a telescope or that kind of thing, because my background is scientific, and for the cl- for the option of an infinite being, that's not subject to the senses. And so, uh, so why should we believe? I, I'm it? not going to argue evidence for for God. You can say like some sort of deductive or inductive or abductive kind of arguments, but um, ultimately, they're not going to arrive to the kind of evidence which we have of say. Um, the moons okay. of Jupiter and the number of them. Okay, so, so I, I want to know why I, I, should we believe this thing is more than just a figment of people's imagination? Do we have any reason to believe God is more than okay. just something people made up in their imagination? And, and does your God interact with the real world, yes or no? Because if that's the case, then that changes things. No, yeah, no. Okay, so no, my God is... Um, is... Uh, what's the term for it? It's unchanging. That means Immu- that immutable. he doesn't even he doesn't even watch the world. He just causes the world. Oh, so he has his so omniscience is of pray. the type as cause, not passive knowledge where he's learning anything from it. Okay, so go back to my question. Why should we think that your God is anything more than a figment of your imagination? Well, it's an option that's on the table. And mm-hmm. why sh- should you? Um I guess that's something which uh, true to my paradigm. I can only make the proposition that he exists, that he became incarnate, that he's Trinity, that he's offering to actually give you a participation in his type of existence and his type of knowledge. 
for you to actually be hold that as a true proposition in my paradigm, when you God say, has to when give you that say to you. He's Trinity, wait, wait, are, let, are let you him finish. Let him finish. I want, I want to, yeah. Let him finish. In, in my paradigm, it's paradigm. My paradigm. It's nothing that comes out of the senses. It's nothing that comes out of our logical constructions. I'm, I'm it's just a curious. Being. I'm just Peter, curious. Peter, I asked, him, said, I asked him a question. I wanted to let. I wanted, Peter, Peter, Peter. I asked him a question. I wanted to let him finish the answer to the question. Yeah, it's a why, being. Why so f- so it? different to us that the only way that we actually get to uh, certainty about him is from his self-communication. That is to impart something of his knowledge, his love, or his will to you. And so, like I said, I can pro- give you the proposition, and um, I, I don't see any reason why you would hold that as true unless he move you to hold it as true, which so, I would call grace. So the reason but there are obstacles should, to grace. So the reason we should think this isn't just a figment of your imagination is because you had a feeling in your imagination. No, but then I would ask you, why would you believe the universe is true and it's not just a figment of your imagination? Novel testable predictions. Why do you think I exist? Novel testable predictions. Hmm. Pardon? Novel testable predictions. Oh, well, it just means your sub. I could just counter your subconscious is very, very ordered, obsessive, and consistent, and your memory is faulty, so that sure. what you would pr- perceive as predict- predictable outcomes and consistency hmm. may just be a fault in your memory. Right. That we could be mistaken. So it doesn't give us 100% certainty, but we need some way to differentiate imagination from reality. Uh, the ability to predict the future is something that our imagination is very bad at. And so if we have a model that can predict the future, that's a good reason to think it's more than our imagination. Novel prediction gives us that. Your model seems to be you got a feeling and your powerful feeling is the way to confirm that it wasn't just a feeling. Well, this is why I say uh, the universe being the necessary reality is more tangible and in many ways more acceptable. And... But this Can is why I, I want to question. Can I ask you a completely different question? I, I, ask you a completely okay, different question I did because... want, like, yes, but I want to get around to questioning why you believe what you believe. Go ahead. Well, well it's not really um, the purpose of the stage, you're, you're, to be you're, honest. You're, you're proposing a, a God that doesn't interact with this world, and, and you want to convince us that that God exists, which to me is the equivalent of you saying there's a blue rock with a white dot on Venus. Can you please believe that that exists? How is that going to impact my life? It's it's not going to help anything. It, it doesn't do anything. Uh, what? So why would I even choose to believe that that your God exists if there's, there are no benefits? Doesn't interact. Can't change anything. Doesn't listen to prayer. What's what? What, what does your God do for you? Okay. Well, uh, in terms of interaction it's uh i wouldn't say no he, he doesn't gain anything from it he's like he has it like a unchanging perfection and there's nothing he can learn from it because he's actually causing it so whatever uh, uh, exists is what because he, he what, already what, knows it what he got out of it yeah i didn't ask what he got out of it i got asked what you got out of it mm-hmm. if it doesn't okay. interact with what you, I, doesn't do anything okay. what, what, what i get out of get it out is of that what I get out of it is that the pursuits of something like being the center of my universe is kind of appealing in a narcissistic kind of way, but ultimately dissatisfying. And it relies heavily on self-deception, not self-knowledge. And so practices like meditation, practices like self-reflection to actually hold that mm-hmm. I am the center mm-hmm. would require me to be have complete disinterest in myself because the more you reflect on yourself the more dissatisfying you are you realize that you you are to yourself um and the world itself yes it's very appealing i have gone through you know in my youth hedonistic phases and these reach a point of exhaustion as well it's only so many times you can do something and it's ultimately dissatisfying as well but Moderation what I find key. appealing, what I find appealing in God, is that He's not finite, and it's not subject to the exhaustion of the senses. 
but rather an infinite being. So well, infinitely you know, satisfying. But, but he doesn't That's he doesn't peculiar. do anything for you. So so what's the appeal? Well he does. He offers to share his own type of life and knowledge and love with me. But you said it didn't, he didn't interact. How does he do that? Sorry, yeah, how does he do he that? Did, he, the he same the same way. The same way. Yeah, he doesn't interact. So like my praying to him, he doesn't he, in a in a in a very um in a certain sense, he doesn't, he doesn't hear my prayers. Only metaphorically, he hears my prayers. God doesn't, he doesn't hear my prayers. It's like he's impassable. And he's he doesn't care. Perfect and eternal. So why do I pray and to he him? He doesn't care. Yeah. Oh, I think he does care because I wouldn't exist if he didn't care. Yeah. If he cared, I couldn't he exist would unless listen. he was willing me. Yeah. But the no, reason no, I no, pray. No, if, he, if but, he cared, if he cared, he would listen to your prayer. And you just said he doesn't. Yeah. Metaphorically, he does. But in reality, he doesn't. But why does, do I pray then? He doesn't. Why do I pray then? The if in reality pray, he doesn't, then he, I would love to finish. He doesn't care. Right, I would love to it. finish what I'm saying. Peter, you, I'd you, love you, you got to let him finish okay. the deal. Go ahead, yep. Akila. Um, <laughs> the reason I pray is not to change God. He's unchangeable. It's to change myself. And the belief system is centered around God being a good God who wants to bestow something greater than a pile of money, greater than the pile of mountains, greater than a pile of kingdoms, a pile of huge dick and uh, endless sex. It's to impart the greatest possible thing himself. But the biggest obstacle to that is me, myself. So when I actually pray, I'm praying to receive this thing, which is disposing myself to actually receive it. Because what, for whatever reason, the way he willed us to be as uh, sentient beings is that we actually get a choice, not a free will choice in the absolute free will sense, but in that every action we take, we have a sense of agency about it and a sense of our own growth about things is very much tied up to what we want and what we don't want. We don't want to know about ourselves. We remain ignorant of ourselves. We don't want to um, esteem other people or we don't want to have regard for people's suffering. We don't have compassion. We just don't have it because we don't want it. If we don't want to know do God, any of, we don't end up knowing okay, him. Good. Do any of those things exist in a world where God doesn't exist? What things like compassion and pity? and yeah, Of course. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, self-reflection. Well, I mean, well, self-reflection, so yes, so they do, but need, it's like... What, what I'm pointing out is you don't need a God for all of that. And you don't, even more, when that God doesn't care about you in reality, as you pointed out. Uh, he does care. He does care. No, no, no. You, would... you, 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 said, you said metaphorically, in reality, he doesn't. And I'm no, care, he... I'm, all I care about is what, what someone does or something does mm. in reality. I, I think you've mixed up my saying, he doesn't hear. And equated that with he doesn't care. You you use the word in reality. Yeah, in reality, he he doesn't hear. He he's impassable. I mean, he doesn't change. Exactly. What he does do is so he wills. So in reality, in his reality, he doesn't care. You are because you if are he cared, equivocating. If he cared, you are equivocating no, no, no. between cared, he hearing would, and no, caring. No. If he cared, he would hear. Because uh, he wouldn't so you're equivocating sure that he those would two hear. things. That's true of humans, because if I don't listen to you, I don't know you. And if I don't know you, I can't care about you, or I don't want to know you, or I don't want to care about you. So for us, it's true. If I don't listen to you, it shows I don't care. But the thing with God, mm -hmm. he doesn't need to listen to care. In fact, he knows you better than you know yourself. And in this sense of like, if you were a full narcissist and you actually wanted to probe the full depth of what you are to admire it, it's practices like this classical meditation, which is the same in Catholicism, the same in Hinduism, the same in Buddhism, the same in atheism, if you practice meditation, which is you still your body, you're aware of it. Okay, you can feel your pulse going through your legs. Let me try. Let me try. Hang on, hang on, guys, guys. Yeah, Peter, hang on a sec. Uh, like, Kiel, let me see yep. if I if I get this straight. If I because yep. you've been going on about this, are you basically? I was saying that God, like, like 
are you basically saying that the belief in God is justified because of the physiological utility, physiological and psychological utility of it? No, no, uh, no. Because, because that's what I keep like, getting from this appeal to meditation and prayer. And no, stuff no, like the meditation. It. It's yeah. like what? What, what I meditation? Would, what I was I was just going to make a point. Peter, Peter, let him respond, what, man. Yeah, well, the point I was just going to make with meditation is that when you get to that point where you're not trying to think anything, you're just passively observing your thoughts. You can be thinking randomly like some sort of sensual thing, some boring mundane thing, and you're just observing your thoughts with a stilled body. What becomes so apparent is that you are not identical to your thoughts. And you have to conclude from that, whatever you think about yourself, that is not identical to yourself. And for a Catholic, this has some sort of import because my concept of myself and my holiness or lack thereof, that concept is not what has to go to heaven. It has to be the actual being myself. Okay. When I reflect upon upon the reality of myself. Mm -hmm. All of this is predicated on the existence of this being, right? Well, no. I mean, this is the thing. It's like I can be skeptical whether I even exist because if the holographic universe is real, then whatever I'm experiencing is just a projection of some, you know, 2D surface and what I feel to be a subjective, uh, you know, I, I think therefore I, I am, is just an illusion. Uh, it's right, not then, a real then why being. Believe, then, but then why believe in God? Okay, because that's one option. The other option is that the universe is real as it appears. Uh, other option is I'm, uh, I'm you know, the Descartian uh, cogito ego sum, or that God exists. In terms of propositions that are, are along the way, the reason I believe in God, I can only attribute to God having moved me to accept this proposition uh, as being true and so it's belief it's not gnosticism it's like i don't okay. know appeal for a fact it's, it's an emotional appeal no it isn't it's just it's you an said option. god moved in you. terms of that's an emotional yeah, appeal. But god moved you to believe I, in the thing it's an emotional appeal that provides a psychological or a physiological utility for you and therefore mm-hmm. it's true for you but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's true for the world because just because a thing for just because a feeling or you know, engaging in a in a physical or engaging in a behavior provides a utility to you. Doesn't mean that the thing you're appealing to actually exists. It actually comes at a very great cost to me. So I wouldn't say it's like, and I, I wouldn't ascribe it to a feeling either. It's just this sense, which is a feeling, I guess, of certainty. <laughs> and, and also, and also no, you, but hold, you hold up, you contradicted, yeah, you contradicted yourself. Oh, let, yeah, let me let me get this out. You contra- you contradicted yourself. You, you're you're proposing a god that doesn't do anything in reality that doesn't care in reality yet no. you go to again heaven, i've already corrected yet, this equivocation yet, yet, yet he, he couldn't he exist unless he cared in 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 reality that that doesn't follow but but we can exist even if there is no god uh that's one proposition and i presume that's one that you hold is true well, because there's no evidence to support that we that that God that that our existence is necessitated by or you know requires God to necessitate it. So no, so there's no evidence to support it to to draw this so, conclusion, okay. and it essentially falls into that realm of hypotheses. Okay, okay, I understand. I, I completely understand it, and it's like your position is that you will accept only as true those things which are evidently true to yourself in some way sensible and i mean sensible through instrumentation or directly to your own body like through your own senses right or intermediary through telescopes or microscopes or whatever it is you're doing but you've made the choice that that's your position you're not a solipsist you haven't made that choice by the sounds of it so i'm going to question your beliefs why do you choose the position you hold but that's okay predominantly based upon the based upon the tools that i have to work with which is the evidence that we have at hand, logical, you know, argumentation, wh- whatever comes along to it. The point is, yeah. is the point of the stage is to express why you believe and why should we believe, which you haven't presented okay. anything. I mean, it, it, I mean, I, you've presented something, but it's not sufficient enough to say that this thing actually exists and it warrants belief in it other than an appeal to emotion. And that it provides some sort of psychological or physiological utility for you, uh, which know, is fine. It's fine. You can, you can. I, that's good for you, but it's not a reason. It, does, it doesn't justify that, that this thing. It doesn't say that this thing actually exists. It works for you in a way, and that's fine. But that's as far as we can go. Yeah, 
but hold up. But this it, it is why, as well. right from the outset, well as right perceived, from the outset, right from the outset, I came in and I said, I want to ultimately end up questioning what you believe because right. everything you said of me. Right, I said that's not the purpose of the stage. Okay, but okay, so you say like for some emotional reasons, some utility, some psychological, some neurotransmitter, right. dopamine, whatever. That's why I choose why I'm believing in God and not rejecting that belief in God. That's all I've gotten from what you've said. Uh, I know, but in terms of me, if I became an atheist. And if I be, I'm a scientist by my, my background, chemistry, I didn't have the math to, to become a physicist, otherwise I would become a physicist or astrophysicist, so limitation there. But um, if I chose that, it would also be for emotional reasons, for neurotransmitter satisfaction reasons. But it's for not, him, you know? but, it, but it's not, that's not true, because I'm an atheist, because no, so no sufficient evidence or argumentation has been provided to justify the claim. I am an atheist in response to the claim. It's not like I ran around saying there is no God and then someone said, ah, but there is. No, the claim was uh, made I, first. There is a God. And then someone said, okay, how do you know this? And said, well, here's my evidence. It was like, no, nah, that's not sufficient. I don't accept it. Ipso facto, I'm an atheist. So, but, so your claim now is that you hold only evidentiary things as true and you choose to only hold evidentiary things as true, even rejecting solipsism, which is also quite reasonable in some way for reasons which are not just physical reasons like in terms of your biological systems and your needs you're saying no, i'm just saying i have uh, no reason to accept unfalsifiable hypotheses uh psychological reasons no no peter peter stop oh, oh. i work with the tools that i have available to me yeah and, and you're saying they're not derived out of your psychology whatsoever they're derived out of a number of things Notably, like like T jump, like often like often posits novel testable predictions, which are which go a long long way. My own reasoning, my reasoning compared to other people's reasonings, and you know logical expression. And there's a number of things that go into it, none of which mm -hmm. get you to a god. Yeah, I know. And but the paradigm you've chosen is just out of emotional reasons, dopamine, uh, serotonin, oxytocin, all of that. And if you claim that your choice to accept your paradigm instead of a God paradigm or a solipsist paradigm is for a completely different reason. I'm very interested to know yeah, why you think yeah, your choice. Because it's intellectually honest. That's why. Okay. I, I well, have, I are, have a are you question. saying, well, other than then God, prove to me, Akira, well, Akira, prove Akira, to me. Peter, 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 hang on, let, let Akira speak. Go See, ahead, go ahead. Yeah, because you're trying to assert, and you're just asserting as a raving, uh, you know, believer who's just so convinced that the bible says this therefore you're going to hell it's just arbitrary belief that evidentiary the evidentiary paradigm you've chosen is in itself absolutely true and that solipsism is absolutely false and that deism or uh, belief in god is absolutely false but you're not as stating why your belief system is any different to the other two belief systems i'm talking about which uh, I can point out with the question that I wanted to ask. What yep. other than a God can you point to is real, but we have no evidence for? Um, solipsism. <laughs> because, see, the par paradigm is like, because you're saying evidence, that is through the senses. Sol okay, e evidence Sol solipsism, through the solipsism senses. Solipsism isn't... isn't okay. Solipsism isn't a thing; it is a concept. Yeah, well, yeah, which so may actually what, be true. What, it, which may actually so, be true. God exists. Okay. What, so, what, like, what, what so, thing? I'll, I'll refine my question. What thing that isn't just a concept, but is an actual thing in reality? Can you point to to which we have no evidence, but still know that it's real? Um, again, you're coming to my par your your paradigm is your standard of what's true is what is accessible to the senses. Not an and that is question. like having someone. This is like if I was an atheist and a Not Christian, an like a, a a Protestant, came to me and said, and I made an assertion about the Earth being six billion years old, and they said, "Where's that in the Bible?" You're saying to me, where's that in the sensory evidence? 
or if I was speaking to a solipsist, where is that in my mind? It's not an answer to. It's not an answer to my question because you're still talking about concepts. Okay. So what God, thing? He's... What thing that is actually real? Can you point to for which there is no evidence? And don't God. go to another concept. God. Go to an act. So God is something other than God, which you can point to that is real oh, for which there is no evidence. I, I so God you. is something other than God. I, Sorry, I'm, I misheard I'm you. Completely confused I now. misheard you. I misheard you. So what other thing besides God is real for which there is no evidence? Exactly. And we're not Angels. talking about concepts. <laughs> well, Angels. So I wanted to answer your question earlier where you asked, like, uh, you believe based off of feelings and we believe based off of feelings. Like, technically, yeah, so all of our things that we believe in our brains are a result of chemical interactions and so, yeah, also feelings. But the difference is that feelings on their own are incredibly unreliable. So we accept feelings plus this other thing. It's feelings that have been filtered out with this methodology that can differentiate imagination from reality. So uh, the feelings that we accept are true, because we don't accept all of our feelings are true, we reject many of our feelings, are the feelings that have been differentiated between imagination and reality. And that's why ours are reasonable feelings and yours are unreasonable feelings, because your method can't differentiate imagination from reality, and ours can. Well, well I, don't, I mean, I'd say like, the feelings part, if it is feelings or whatever it is that's moving our choices, like to adopt the worldview of solipsism, um, only the unifysicalism or materialism, whatever it is, or deism, which whatever worldview which you choose, yet you can get very simplistic people. So you have like these uh, dumb atheists, you have dumb solipsists, and mm -hmm. you have dumb Christians. Mm -hmm. But they're not close to the scope of being reasonable. And so as a Catholic, I find Protestants extremely distasteful because all they say is like, here in the Bible, and there's one user, I won't name him, he's elderly. He's got a whistly, uh, toothy kind of a way of speaking. He just goes on these big rants about the earth only being 6,000 years old. Um, I think you can do the scientific inquiry and integrate it into, I believe God exists. I believe he's the creator of the universe. The universe in itself is very interesting and the fact that it's so ordered um uh the aquinas proofs I, I don't consider them proofs i just call consider them as descriptive in some way yeah whatever um the absolute absence of chaos of r true randomness um well that would go against physics seems sort of <laughs> Oh, I know, but I mean, I'm curious. Even you quantum, just you just said you just said you have a problem with uh, Protestants pointing things out in the Bible, and 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 you think that that is silly. Whereas you earlier on pointed something out in the Bible and said that the thing in the Bible was extremely silly, and then and then you came up with another thing that is uh, pointed out in the Bible, which is angels, and and that this seems is very to be generic. So the, a specific. So, so I'm not uh, well, really convinced well, here. Well, what I'm, what I'm getting to is that according to the Bible, God interacts with this world. According to you, he doesn't. He doesn't even care in reality. He does care. No, no, no. no. According, according to you, he can't perform a miracle, for instance, because that would be him <laughs> interacting in real time with reality. That's the part of the Bible that you reject. You so, reject the fact that God listens to prayer and acts upon it because he cares. You dismissed that. You're dismissing an awful lot no, no, in no. the Bible and then come up with angels who exist only in the Bible and you stream say, of accusations. Imagine no what you're talking to a Protestant. Yeah, yeah, so that wasn't that wasn't his point, Peter. His I'm, point just, was, I'm just Peter, point, Peter, I'm just pointing out what, I, what I've heard. Uh, I've already rejected one what your, so, your straw man is of me. It's like, right. so, I don't know, you want to repeat it for whatever reason, There's some psychological reason you feel the need to repeat so, it. So, I don't so know. You so do one, not, one sec, let me let me one sec, let me reject the fact that God interacts with the world. Let me clarify his point. So his point was is that 
a Protestant person is unreasonable for accepting something just because they said it was true in the Bible. That, as a reason of justification, is bad. He's, it doesn't matter whether or not no, no, he accepts no, no, no. certain things in the Bible uh, or not. It's, it's just saying no, that I, it's from the I Bible What I dislike isn't. about Protestants is that they'll take the Bible, some of them, not all of them, some of them will take them it's so literally that they will take that to the exclusion of any other type of knowledge. We, we don't care about um, Protestants. And like, for instance, like when the Bible says the angels exist and then have no evidence for it, but they still claim no, they, like, they exist. No, Something no, like that. Like in the, Bible, in the Bible, they add up a chronology and they say the earth can only be 6,000 years old. And then they come into this ridiculous thing about finding carbon-14 in diamonds. I agree with you. I agree with yes, you so, on that on that piece, yeah. but I'm, I'm what I'm curious about is you earlier said that angels exist. The only reason that you know about angels is because they are mentioned in the Bible. There's no other way you okay. could have heard about angels other than from the Bible. So you're you're doing exactly what the Protestant does, just with different verses. So how how are you different from a Protestant? Yeah, okay, okay so, I, the, so I'm sorry. Akila, so I can I Akila? answer a no, question a, instead of just Akila, a stream of actors? No, I say, Akila, I gotta, I, we got to jump in here. For the sake of the individuals we have with their hands up, we have a bunch of people that want to talk. We've been going on this for a minute. And we really are just going yeah. in circles. So ultimately, okay. I think I think we've come to a we've come to an impasse in this, in that we have pointed out that there is a there are these personal appeals that you're making, which are fine for you. They don't convince us that any that there's a reason to believe that any of these things exist um, outside of what we currently have. So um, possibly if you, if you have if we have more, we could possibly bring you back up a little bit later. We can try and get around to you, but we got some other people got their hands up. Could and, I have a quick sum up, like less than one? Yeah, minute. go ahead and take thirty seconds. Say your say your piece. Okay, so the motivation to choose one world over another is obviously for some uh, psychological or subjective benefits. The reason not to choose some worldviews is because they do come at greater and greater costs. And I think the one that comes with the greatest costs is is to believe in God. And that comes at the cost of so many things like um, sleeping around, uh, lying for convenience. And these things, I just tell you subjectively, are very unpleasant. And it's also in failing in wanting to adopt that and failing and ending up at confession. That's also very unpleasant. So I can fully understand someone who just knows implicitly. If you start believing in God, it comes at an unpleasant cost. But I think in in ultimate, it's like love doesn't count costs, and love comes with those. Love actually enjoys those costs because they're expressions of true love. That was my sum up. Thank you awesome. for joining us. Appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Keila. See ya. <clears throat> I, I think uh, what's interesting is that Keila's presenting some uh, uh, values that seem to be uh, consistent with Catholicism, uh, discouraging uh, promiscuity, like sleeping around and things like that. And, and uh, the, the issue I have with that is you're, you're saying that those are not enjoyable things, uh, if I understood you correctly. But um, there are a lot of people who clearly enjoy those things. Otherwise, a lot of people wouldn't be doing them. So uh, if you have one last thing you want to respond to that, that that's fine. I'll give you that. Uh, it's just sometimes the costs that things come at is worth it. And you'd know, like as an atheist, it's like um, the amount of work and argumentation and having to justify your position. Um, I imagine that there's a sense of like, if there's a God or if there's a heaven and hell, it's like I, I'm pretty much tying my ticket to this position and I can understand it. Um, but for everyone, whatever their belief system is, it does come at a cost. Some out of more love, some out of a more of a, a sense of like. Um, uh, look yourself in the mirror. So thank you for the super chat, genius. Appreciate it. Also, thank you, uh, native atheist. I forgot to mention you earlier. Thank you for the super chat. I don't know. I'm not going to criticize an atheist for being an atheist. Cool. Appreciate it, bud. Thank you. Look forward to talking thank with you. you again. Cheers. Take care. All right. So, thank you for coming up, Aquila. We've got Otangelo in the audience. He's oh, had God. his hand raised a little while. We'll be pulling up Jason <laughs> next as well. But I saw Otangelo, and so we uh, talked with them, and they were cool with it. So we got Otangelo up. How are you doing today, Otangelo? Fine, thanks. Uh, how about you guys? Pretty good. Hi, Otangelo. What have you got for us that convinced us I'm, that I'm God blocked by is? you, Otangelo, so I'm great. 
What you got for us today, bud? I think one of the prime reasons why a creator is a better explanation for our systems rather than not is the fact that besides biology, where there is supposedly a selection mechanism, which is natural selection, there is no natural selection for the for uh, energies, the, the fundamental uh, for energies required in the universe to have uh, stable atoms. And neither there is a selection mechanism for the four fundamental building blocks for life. So if you don't have that select selection mechanism, then there is basically an infinite range of possible forces in regards of the four fundamental forces, which could be there. And in regards of the four basic molecules, it's the same. You have basically an infinite range of possible molecules, which would not be life permitting. But in both there cases, there is a selection forces, mechanism for that, which is called chemistry. Do you, Cedar? You got to let him finish, dude. Go ahead, <laughs> Angela. Yeah. So, um, in order to have stable atoms, you need the right four fundamental forces. In order to have the four fundamental building blocks for life, you need also a selection mechanism. So, if there is no selection, then um, the odds to have the right forces in regards uh, of these fundamental forces and the right building blocks in, or in order to have those which are needed in life, they are infinite. So it is um, very unlikely that no selection mechanism would hit the jackpot to have the right forces and the right building blocks. How did you, so cal think how did you calculate that possibility? Or I think you probably meant probability. Yeah, because uh, the, the, the range is infinite. There is no constraint, neither in physics, in regards of the fundamental forces, nor in regards of the possible um, composition of these building blocks, which are specified and complex. They could be any, any kind and sort of different. Uh, okay, so, so it's Angela. You're looking, when you're... At, you're looking at this the wrong uh, way around. It, what you're basically Angelo. saying is that that we can build something out of Lego for which there are no Lego okay. blocks, and therefore uh, this can't happen. But what we see in this analogy is things that are built out of Lego blocks. So what? Yes. And, and it, so Angelo, uh, like Angelo, when you're talking about odds, things. the odds of a thing happening, we only have a sample size of one. We have one universe, one world in which life that we know, that we understand it, like carbon-based life exists on this earth. So as far as we know, we are, we're only working with a sample size of one. So calculating odds off that, we don't have sufficient, um, we don't have sufficient uh, information or, or I said mathematical functions in order to derive odds from a sample size of one. We do know that it happened and it happened and it looks like this. Now, Given what we know about reality, we can draw a conclusion that for life to appear on this planet as it looks right now requires a certain circumstance of uh, requires like certain parameters be met. But we do not know that if these things were we we do know that if things were shifted off differently, life as we currently know it on this planet could not exist. But this does not preclude life existing by some other means. Or some other, because in this infinite realm of possibilities, you can't say that this set of parameters is the only one that could produce life. It's the only one that could produce life that we see, like human life on this planet existing the way it does, carbon-based in the current circuit. But it doesn't say that if the, if the circumstances were different from the onset, that it could exist in some other form. Because once you start changing the fundamental properties of the universe, you 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 funk you you're not only funking with or you're not only you know screwing around with like gravity or the weak and uh, weak and strong nuclear forces. You when you mess with the fundamentals, you change the fundamental structure of chemistry, and human beings are the result of chemistry. Okay, so if you if you mess with chemistry, then everything functions differently. But that just because it functions differently, because the fundamental forces are different, doesn't mean life wouldn't appear in a in a wildly different manner. You can't eliminate that possibility. So you're basically looking at what we have and saying this is the only way it could be in the infinite realm of possibility. This is the only way it could be. So something must have chosen to make it this way. 
when you haven't eliminated the possibility that it could appear somewhere else and look completely different if the circumstances were different, because you can't say that because we only have a sample size of one. Yeah, I and, and also heard. people have come up with uh, uh, pretty good models uh, that that describe silicon based life. So the life that we see isn't necessarily the only possible form of life because we can already come up with it with another model. So go ahead, go ahead, Angela. Yeah, I mean, I can go even further back and say that even in order to have a universe, you need to the right expansion rate of the universe. And that expansion rate depends on eight different factors which need to be finally adjusted. And if you sum up all these um, fine-tuned parameters, then you come to the order of 1 to 10 to the 400th power. So yeah, but the, is... pro but the problem, Otangelo, is that we only have one universe to work with. So, like I said, if the parameters of this universe are not met, we know that the universe as we currently observe it would not exist as we observe it. It doesn't mean the universe wouldn't exist in another state that we currently that, that that currently we are not aware that you know that doesn't exist or not. So we know we know the okay. setup. We know we 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 got the pitch, we've got the swing, we've got the hit, we got all this setup, and it and it's and that's the way it is. But assuming that it can't be another way, out of the infinite possibilities that it could have been, that does that doesn't track because we only have one sample to work with, and that is what we currently have. Life on Earth in this universe, of which there is one. So you can't derive these odds from this, especially if there's an infinite number of ways it could have potentially spun out. You're basically saying out of the infinite number of ways it could have potentially spun out, this is the only way it could have spun out. And you can't say that. You can't derive that conclusion because in an infinite number of opportunities, anything could technically be possible, which means life could arrive in some other form that is vastly different than what we have in a way that we don't understand or in a way that we can't predict. It also makes allusions that before observability, that that which existed before everything is consistent in a way. So you're, you, you have to presuppose things about this agent that kicks everything off in order for everything to look this way it is. So it still goes back to the existence of this being and it goes back to presupposing things about this being and its intentions in how everything popped out, which you can't justify because you can't demonstrate it to be true. You follow? Yes, I follow. I, I, okay. disagree. I, I disagree because um, there would be no universe, for example, if we would have a too fast expansion rate or a too slow expansion rate. No, we wouldn't if have would this be, universe. We it, wouldn't it, have it, this it, universe. No, no, what would happen is that, for example, if if these parameters would be different, it would be probably then just go back to a singularity. You wouldn't have a, a universe whatsoever. Maybe, and, maybe. If the expansion, and if the expansion rate would be too fast, then you would probably have just a void universe without atoms whatsoever it would that's just, that, that's entirely possible it and there's no be, way that, it yes, okay, just right. space okay, okay so, so you're right what? you're right or tangelo you're right that is possible but that doesn't preclude the possibility that this is one that popped up out of an infinite uh an infinite line because there's no logical contradiction in, in an infinite regress and this just happens to be the one that popped up now and and also b between those two extremes, you have infinite amount of possibilities of other universes that could exist that could sustain life. Maybe in a shorter amount of time, it still would be able to exist. So there's still you still haven't made a single coherent point. So is why is there, why are there even possibilities at all? And why is there? You're breaking. You're breaking um, up. Yeah, yeah, you broke up a little bit, Otangelo. Go ahead. Try again. Yeah, the question also, even going deeper, is why are there possibilities at all? There could also be a state of affairs where there are no possibilities and where there is no movement at all. And 
that that of yes. course that leads to in, the question. In that particular why state, in that particular did, state, your God did, couldn't why even Peter, exist. Peter, you got it, Peter. You got to let him finish, man. Go ahead, dude. I mean, I can co come back to to a first to a. You need a prime mover, something that starts everything. And if you don't have that prime mover, then probably you would be in a state of affairs where there be would be no movement at all. So I wanted to pick up on the fine tuning a little and, bit. And um, go, go ahead, T. JL was correct that even if the expansion rate completely changed, and so all of the particles we know about um, were expand away from each other and can never combine or are collapsed into a singularity, there could be just other laws that are orders of magnitude weaker or orders of magnitude stronger that if our expansion rate was significantly faster, those other laws would then be able to take effect and form new kinds of particles based off those laws and not our laws. So even if we changed all of the expansion rate things to a drastic amount, there could still be life. Uh, there could still be particles. Um, but even so, so the fact that the f way they are now doesn't indicate a God because it could be explained by just the other forces. But more importantly, the probability you listed, the one in 410 to the 400 power or whatever, that's wrong because that assumes that there is no constraint. There could be constraints. The laws could be interdetermined. And if you change one, the others will proportionally change necessarily because they're interdetermined, in which case the probability is significantly more likely, not less likely. And so the fact JL was also correct when he said you can't assume the probabilities are whatever you assume them to be because we only have a sample size of one. And so we don't know if they are, are or are not connected. And so the probability could actually be significantly higher than what you assume it is based off of your conclusion that you can imagine the laws are differently. Therefore, you include the imagined differences as one of the cases that increases the probability. So none of that indicates a God. And even if you wanted to say there was a God, God must be equally as fine tuned as the universe because God's nature, maybe he wants a universe of only puppies or only black holes. So all of the possible ways the universe could be, there is a possible God that could want it to be that way. And so of all the possible kinds of gods, there is a one-to-one -one correlation to all the possible kinds of universes. And so God must necessarily be as fine-tuned as the universe. And if your argument holds, that means who fine-tuned God. Yeah, my answer to that, T-Jump, is that if it comes to the laws of physics, there is also the question, why are the fundamental laws constant and intelligible? And the, the forces for fundamental forces, rather than being stable, as we observe, they could be also oscillating. And the question is, of course, why are these laws stable? What secures them? Because that, that is not something obvious. And also the, the equations which are, um, which are used, they, there are three parameters which are fundamental, and that means they are not grounded in anything deeper. You need to experimentally no. to, fi to, to find them, and once you have them, then you don't know why these numbers are the way they are and which make the universe work. You could put in, in these equations any different number, and you wouldn't have any um, life permitting you. So you're bringing in an assumption that uh, these laws need to be secured by something. They're just uh, an emergent property of nature by the looks of it. Uh, this doesn't necessarily yeah. mean there's something holding them in place from uh, from varying to different values. And that's where we're kind of running into a problem here with your arguments. Well, Randolph, nature and, and we've already what... pointed out that if the laws are different, then we could have a different universe in which life is still possible. So it, it's well, a non argument. What, what was that? Well, R Randolph, to answer what you said, um, the, the, the existence of nature is precisely what we try to explain. So you cannot invoke nature to explain nature. Sure you can. Why? Why wouldn't? That's literally what we're doing in science all the time. Like, why are there earthquakes? Well, because of tectonic plates. We're literally invoking nature to explain nature. That's what you have to do. Oh, what and isn't that ostensibly? Is that... Isn't that ostensibly what you're doing with God? That you invoke God to explain God? It's a good uh, no, I, I believe in God on based on two facts, and that is 
that we exist, and secondly, because he revealed himself to us through the Bible. So are okay. you using, are you uh -oh. using are you using nature to explain God? Uh, nature is the evidence, and it requires an explanation. And I uh -oh. think that God is the best explanation for the existence of nature. They're asking, like, who created God? What reasons, what reasons do you have to to know that the Bible is true? Well, there are many reasons, uh, uh, Peter. I think there is internal consistency. You can Google, for example, in regards of the New Testament of the Gospels, um, undesigned coincidences. Um, there are extra-biblical uh, um, confirmations, archaeology, uh, confirmed, confirmed prophecies. Um, I can accept. Uh, I can no. accept all of those. I and and I can point out that in the books of Harry Potter, there is internal consistency. There is extra Harry Potter uh, evidence for the let's say the existence of London. It it it's exactly the same. My 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 point is, how do you know that any of it is true? Because you people can come up with consistent stories, and people can come up with stories that would include uh, evidence that is not found in the book, that we can verify in, in different means. So it still doesn't get us to the fact whether or not the Bible is entirely fictional or not. Well, you did say prophecy. Uh, if prophecy was true, that would be a difference between Harry Potter. That there is prophecy, there is prophecy in Harry Potter. I also, I also would like to. I mean, if you, if, if it's, and, if it's going to go into the Bible, true. if it's going to go into the Bible, I think we should, yeah, slide it to Xerxes because Xerxes is an authority on the subject. If Xerxes is still there, so he could answer this, I think, pretty succinctly because it's his field of expertise. Yeah, but let me quick answer to Peter. I mm -hmm. think it's pre preposterous to compare the Bible with Harry Potter because. In 2000, I didn't years, compare it. I didn't compare it, and it wasn't. It wasn't meant as an insult. It was meant as an example that people can come up with pretty consistent books that would have that would would include things that are verifiable outside of the book. I'm not. I'm not trying to insult you. That although that may be come across like that, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm also not making a comparison. I'm just pointing out. That people are capable of <sighs> writing such a book. He, he's just he's based that's entirely totally on fiction. He's he's just saying so. He's saying that your analogy to Harry Potter isn't analogous. Here's the difference. That's all he's saying. I just wanted to point out that it's not used in a way to to be insulting or demeaning. That's that's what I wanted to point out. So ultimately, uh, Tangela, you said your your belief derives from what you interpret to be evidence and the Bible in, its, in, in itself. And you, I think you understand that, I think we could agree that, you know, you'd have to presuppose that the Bible, you know, to, to say that the Bible is true, because it's, you know, that's, that, that reasoning is circular. So I think we can agree on uh, that, right? Yeah, yeah, in the end, it is circular, and I think it is a warranted circular, because somewhere you have to end, you have to start. Okay. Wait, wait, what do you mean so, by warranted circular? Like like warranted circularity, what do you mean by that? Well, somewhere reality, um, the explanation of reality somewhere it ends. And there where it ends, you cannot go and explain deeper. Like, for example, God reveals himself as eternal. So why is he eternal? I have no clue. Why does he exist? I have no clue. What I know is that I believe that he revealed himself in the Bible and that through that revelation, we can understand why we exist. Now, deeper than that, I cannot go. So there, it becomes circular. Well, you you can have well, like and exactly, I, you, I you can accept that, I can accept you, that I can accept the fact that you say we have to end somewhere. My question was still, why are you choosing the Bible? Because there are other there are other books that make the same predictions that make the same claims. So why this book? Specifically, I th I would say that the Bible is unique amongst all the world religions, Peter. So I disagree with you that you will find any other religious book which even comes close to the Bible in regards of what it represents and what it communicates and um, what. Okay, it but says. that is that is your claim, Ot Otangelo. In with all due respect, that is your claim. 
And that is exactly what a Muslim told me two days ago. Exactly the same. So why is he wrong and why, is he, why are you right? I mean, the dialogue between Muslims and, and Christians, um, it is a big one. There are many reasons uh, which we could come up with, uh, which we disagree with. And I don't think it is the scope of this um, um, stage here to go into details in regards of that. But I had recently some no, interaction. No, and that's, and that's not what I'm asking. That's, that's Peter, not what I'm asking. Peter. What I'm asking is, what, what reasons do you have specifically to choose the Bible over the Quran, for instance? For example, a prime reason for me, which is the quest of justice. When you compare the justice system in the Bible with the justice system of the Quran, then it seems to me that the justice system of the Quran it is not just and it is incoherent because um, uh, forgiveness and salvation and going to heaven, um, basically it is something arbitrary by Allah. So, for example, they say that uh, Muhammad be peace upon him. Why do they say that? Because they don't even know if their main prophet is accepted by Allah and is in heaven. So it is completely arbitrary. And in the Bible, it is different. The Bible is very clear. The Bible says that the, the, the consequence of sin is death. And um, there is no forgiveness uh, unless blood is, is, uh, is shredded. Is, 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 uh, yeah, but Otangelo, you, there, there's no way to determine if that is true. And talking about yeah. justice is just an appeal to an emotion, is how you emotionally feel about, about their version of justice versus the Bible's version of justice. The problem is, is that and, and assuming the that the Bible is true, Bible is hang on, Peter, Peter, hang on. Assuming <laughs> the Bible is true, you have, to assume, you have to assume that God exists, okay? So that whole reason is circular. It's, it's, it's not just, it, I mean, it doesn't work, Okay. So appealing to the Bible to prove God, the Bible is, is the claim in and of itself. So no, that doesn't work. So you have to go. So I was, I was answering to Peter why I, I prefer the Bible over. Uh, I get that. It, it, it's, an emo I, I, it's an I emotional got, appeal. I, got, I, I, got, I get that. An argument. It wasn't an argument uh, in the sense that you are um, trying I get to, that. It's an, it's an emotional okay. appeal. It is. Well, it's an emotional well, appeal while you prefer the Bible over, over the Quran. I understand not, that. It has nothing to do with emotional. It has to do with justice, where I understand that wrongdoing requires punishment, and the Bible has a coherent system of punishment, while Islam and the Quran does not. It, it is coherent on not. the arbitrary decision of Allah. He can oh, say, okay, that is an emotional a, a tangelo. That, oh, It's that coherent is an emotional to appeal. you. It makes more sense to you. It makes more sense to them that the Quran is it is an emotional appeal, Otangelo, because you don't feel that their level of justice or how they how they meet out justice in their faith is coherent. But they would say the opposite of you. So mm -hmm. yes, it is an emotional appeal. I would appeal. say I would so, say the opposite. I would say the opposite. If I look at the Bible uh, where where it says that if a woman is raped, both the raped woman and the rapist should be stoned to death. To me, that's not justice. So that that only that alone would would dismiss the Bible as being just. So we we've established that you can't appeal to the Bible as a reason why God exists. Or that was not the point, Jail Warren. And I don't e either think that it has something to do with emotion. The quest is what is just. And in my understanding, justice can only est be established if there is um, uh, uh, punishment for wrongdoing. Which sure, is we, we can, where... yeah, humans can establish it. We can establish okay. what justice is. Okay, so, so I see that the Bible establishes that the, the, the result of sin and wrongdoing is death. There is a consequence which you cannot avoid. Yes, but all yes, but done. yes, but but Otangelo, all human beings die. So the consequence of life is death. All right, it doesn't matter if you're sinful or not. You can be the most pious person on the planet. You're still going to die. 
Well, all living things, things die. die. Animals die, die bugs die, die, plants die, trees die, the grass dies. Uh, death being a punishment for sin is kind of stupid when you think about it, because literally everything else dies. Why would we expect ourselves to be any different? As far as a justice system in the Bible is concerned, it's devoid of one. Uh, anything that you do can be forgiven so long as you just follow certain steps within particular soteriologies. For example, just accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So there is no system of justice. It's believe in me and you'll be rewarded. Don't and you'll be punished. It has nothing to do with moral character or behavior. There is uh, someone which has paid for um, the sins of the world. So there is a punishment which is... Uh, Jesus paid for it on the cross, and in Islam you don't have that. Basically, you can do their. Yeah, in Islam, uh, you're responsible you for your want. own actions. Go figure. I would consider that a more uh, coherent system of justice. But doing bad things does not get you punished according to Christian soteriology. Whether or not you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is what determines your destination in the afterlife. You go to hell for not believing. You go to heaven for believing. It does not matter what your moral character on earth was, what you were guilty of, what sins you committed. All of it can be forgiven, with the exception of one, and only one. Disbelief. That's the only one that doesn't get you into heaven. Well, you decide if you accept that Christ paid for you or not. And if he didn't, so you pay for yourself. That's the essence I'm of the I'm unconvinced in the proposition. So it doesn't matter. Like, you just admitted it. It doesn't matter how good of a person I am, what my moral character is. If I'm, if I'm fucking Ted Bundy... Right, and I and after a final meal of fried chicken on death row, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm going to heaven. It doesn't matter what but heinous God, malfeasance I was up to in my life. Yeah, I mean, so you know, you, you don't can... have a system of justice. You don't at all. You have a system of extortion. Well, the thing is, if you see Jeffrey Dahmer, he was a serial killer, a cannibal, and um, he in prison he received Christ as Lord and Savior, and um, he he probably now is in heaven. So he was forgiven, but yeah, why great. So my, forgiven? my reward for accepting but, Jesus Christ is to getting to live my eternal existence with somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer. Sounds yeah, like a great so, system. So, of so, to me. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, Tangela, you basically just stated that Jeffrey Dahmer, oh. a serial killer who committed the atrocities that he committed was in prison, accepted Christ, and then was beaten to death by another, by another inmate. And then now he's in heaven. And yet me, who has used every ounce of his critical faculties and his reasoning and has come to the conclusion intellectually, honestly, that there is no God, will go to hell. That's what you're positing here. And you've you killed less Romans, people. Well, well, if you read Romans 3, it is very clear. And it Why says, would I appeal the to the Bible? Bible? The, you cannot demonstrate that the Bible is true. Why would I appeal to the Bible? Well, I do because my mm -hmm. theology and my faith system is based on the Bible. So I tell you the things from my perspective why? of how I see it. Great. Okay? Why so would I? You why, why, so great. So so this is great. This is great. Why would I ever use faith? No. So answering to what you just said, mm -hmm. why um, uh, can you be a much, in your terms, better person than Jeffrey Dahmer and he goes to heaven and I go to hell. Well, the Bible is very clear in Romans 3, uh, 11. It says there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. And so... Uh, so so you would be in favor clear. of abolishing the, the prison system, Otangelo? Because in basically we're all uh, equally criminals. So why, why would we send people to prison? That, that doesn't make sense, right? The thing is that in God's perspective, we are all doomed on, and on the highway to hell because nobody but shouldn't is able we strive? Shouldn't Shouldn't we strive to, to, to be as godlike as, as we possibly can? can I, Peter, can I finish my sentence, please? Yes, yes, but but I'm, I'm trying I'm, to I'm trying to I, I need to I need to put that in. But but if yeah, yeah, but I think it is more important that everyone has the opportunity to end the the the, the okay, great. Go that ahead. Can, Go ahead. I mean, okay. So Go ahead. Um, I am explaining what I believe, which is God's perspective. And God's perspective is that we all cannot live the standard which would be 
required the holiness, the perfectness to be accepted by God by our own deeds. So we are all doomed. It doesn't matter if it is uh, JL or if it is Jeffrey Dahmer or if it is Putin or Hitler or whoever. We are all doomed. And there is only one escape, which is Jesus Christ, which is the yeah, only that's not a system of justice. Not... That's definitionally extortion. I, uh, yeah. but, but We're punished that, for the mere what for I, the mere, that is what mere I pointed out. Born. We're punished for the mere sin of just being born. Right? Your Bible asserts that it is impossible for any of us to live a life devoid of sin, which would imply that we don't actually have free will in the matter. That we're all compelled by some extenuating circumstances to act in a way that's not righteous or holy. And therefore, no matter what you do, whether it be tell a single lie your entire life or murder 50 people, your destination is the same. That is not justice. That is not any sense of justice that anybody would adopt. You wouldn't want to live in a society that operated that way. As a matter of fact, you don't live in a society that operates that way. And I'm fairly certain I've heard you on, on multiple occasions rebuke societies that operate that way. Societies that chop off the hands of thieves or hang people from cranes for being homosexual. That is not a system of justice. That's not a system of morality. That is dictatorial extortion. That's all that is. God walking into your restaurant and threatening to burn it down if you don't do what he says. It has nothing to do with your moral character. It has nothing to do with the choices that you make in life. All it is is, are you credulous enough to believe that 2,000 years ago a man died and rose again from the dead based on the accounts of four anonymous supposed eyewitnesses who all contradict each other on the matter? Are you credulous enough to believe that? If so, then you'll get this eternal reward. If not, then you're going to a place of incomprehensible anguish where you will be eternally tortured in fire. That's evil. That's not justice. That's not morality. And to defend a situation, a, a system like that is, is just being blind to the reality of it. There's no, there's no consistency or co coherency. Yeah, first of all, I'm not a Muslim, so I don't adopt uh, the Muslim system of punishment and so forth and second why not why not well that would be another topic but i would like to finish my why is it not uh, just to cut off the hands of a thief well it uh, i would like to finish my sentence rather to to sidestep to another topic if that would be possible i want you to answer the question you're you're hearkening to the bible because you think that it possesses some superior justice system so I'm asking you now, how do you determine whether or not a particular system is just? How do you evaluate the justice of an action? Do you think that it would be just if a judge let a child rapist go and punish somebody else on their behalf? Would that be justice? No, that's precisely what I am saying. And that's precisely what we see in, in Islam and in the Bible. In the Bible, there is a consequence for sins. In Islam, it depends on an arbitrary decision of Allah where no no one knows if they are accepted by Allah or not. So he can say, okay, Your God's you have just a as nice equally person. Arbitrary. So you can Allah basically can say, okay, you have you be a nice person, but I don't like you go to hell. And in the Bible it is not. So now coming back to where you said that the system in the Bible is not just because you cannot you you've not chosen to be born as a sinner. Okay, I see it like this. There is the first Adam and the second Adam. We are naturally born in the team of the first Adam, and his fault is attributed to us as a team. But the second Adam is Jesus. And yeah, once so we're being I, punished. Once I, can we're, I finish, we're... please? Can I finish, please? And once I move the camp from one camp to the other, then the justice of Christ is attributed to me. So now it depends on where I want to belong to. Either I belong to the first Adam or I belong to the second Adam. Either the first Adam determines and I, um, I am born and I will die as a natural man being part of the team of Adam and then I will be lost together with him in, the, in that team or I move to the second team where the, the justice of Christ, of the second Adam, is attributed to me and I will be free because he paid for my sins and I will go to heaven and his justice is attributed to me. So there is a balance here and I don't agree with you that this There's is- no There's no balance whatsoever. That's, it's the antithesis of balance or fairness or justice. This is a system which is predicated exclusively on what a person is convinced of and nobody has any choice over what they're convinced of. 
I don't choose to believe certain facts about reality. I just do. As a consequence of my level of information and my understanding of my environment, I cannot choose to believe tomorrow that I have the ability to fly like Superman. Even if I wanted to lie to myself and say that I do, I would never put it to the test because within my subconscious, I would know I can't do that. And if I jump off a skyscraper, I'm going to die. Nobody has a choice over what they believe. So your God's system of punishment is predicated on something that we don't even have a choice in the matter over. You didn't choose to come to the conclusion that Jesus Christ was your Lord and Savior. You were convinced of that, either due to social conditioning or, likewise for me, your level of understanding, uh, well, your, your level of information and your understanding of your environment. Obviously, you and I don't have similar dispositions to believing certain propositions, because if we did have the same dispositions to the same level of evidence, you and I would be at the same conclusion, but we're not. That's not a matter of choice. Well, the evidence that we have is the same which you have, which I have, and I completely disagree with you. I think and clearly your human, God has engineered in, you to in accept that level history, of evidence, and he finish, engineered me not finish, to. Can I finish, please? I think that the, 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 the amount of scientific information that we have at hand today has never been as much as anywhere in human history. And the Bible is very clear also in regards of that. And it says, since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. For all how they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. So, Tangelo, yeah, so much, Tangelo, much like every I other precept who's question? ever used that argument, no, hold on a second, much like every other preceptor who's used that passage to defend their nonsensical, ludicrous position, uh, Paul of Tarsus is talking about Hellenistic Jews in that passage, not every person on earth. In fact, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, or I think 2 Corinthians chapter 2, he says the exact opposite of that, wherein there are people who exist who are not spiritually discerned and therefore are incapable of understanding the evidence that a God exists. Because we have to be given the gift of the Holy Spirit before we can understand those things. So unless God makes the decision to give me that gift, I can never understand any of the evidence that he laid out for me to conclude that he exists. So it's all on him, not me. God has not revealed himself to me. I am unaware of any evidence or factors that would lead me to even believe in the possibility that this God exists, particularly the Christian one. And your Bible has now two contradicting, contradicting propositions about whether or not God's existence is plain to see. In the particular passage that you're quoting, Paul is referring to people who are already of the position that God exists, Hellenistic Jews, who abandoned Judaism and went to paganism. That's who he's talking about. And it makes that abundantly clear if you read past just 18 to 20. That's uh, like, for whatever reason, Christians always just love to read verses 18 through 20 of Romans chapter one. If you read past that, it's abundantly clear that he's not just talking about everybody who exists, but a very small subset of people, which is the same case with every letter that Paul writes. He's talking to a particular version of people, which is why each of his letters are named after the people that he's talking to. It's not that difficult, but I shouldn't expect Christians to have a consistent or uh, well thought out understanding of their Bible. They just pick and choose whatever they want to conform with whatever position they're tending to argue for in the moment. But I've now given you another verse that contradicts the point that you just made. So your own Bible says explicitly that there are people who are incapable of understanding things of spiritual natures because we were not given the gift of spiritual discernment. And how am I supposed to operate and evaluate the world around me if your God refuses to enlighten me on how to do that? It's yeah, uh, three yeah. separate instances in yeah. his letters to Corinth alone where he says the polar opposite of what he says to the people he's addressing in Romans. It's just one of those conveniently left out uh, contexts that the precepts like to throw around. Yeah, no, I, I mean, this is not an argument uh, from a precept perspective, but I mean, the, 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 the contrast between uh, Calvinists and Armenians um, last for over 500 years. I am in the middle of these two propositions. I think if you reject God, then it is your fault. But if you accept and surrender to Christ, then it is God's moving and God's calling and God's driving you to him. And that's because you also were selected. Uh, you made the conscious before. decision to not be a Buddhist? 
Well, I mean, we, we, we listen, right? So we can also uh, check. That was a yes or no question. Did you make the conscious decision to not be a Buddhist or a Hindu uh, or a Jain or a Wiccan or a Muslim or a Sikh or a Mormon? At what point did you go through all of these ideologies and make the conscious decision that you weren't going to follow those ideologies? I don't need to. I mean, Christ has said... To oh, those you don't need to do that, but we do. We need to make the conscious decision not to follow Jesus or else we would have your conclusion, right? That's the most ass-backwards thing I've ever heard in my life, right? Yeah, None of us made the conscious decision not to believe in your fairy tale any more than you made the conscious decision not to believe in Greek mythology or in Islam or in any of the other dominant religions in the world. It's, it's actually a minority of people in, in comparison to the global population who accept Christianity, and that's if you bundle all Christians together, which you don't because you reject Catholicism. So the number is now cut in half. About maybe a billion people believe in some variation of your flavor of the Christian doctrine out of seven yeah, billion. It is probably one out of seven. Otangelo, that. you're quite well, uh, sorry, Otangelo, you're quite well familiar with me as well that I haven't made this decision even on your deities. So, uh, you know, it, it, it's almost like you're asking for some special treatment with your religion that everybody must stop and think about what is being offered and consider it. And I've always consistently rejected that precisely to to exercise our free will but i think the bible is also clear and says that christ said that those which belong to me they listen to my voice and i've done that when i was a teenager i started to read the bible and i recognized christ's voice as my shepherd so that's what he is since i i, I converted and surrendered to, to his love and grace now you have why should we accept that anything the bible says is true well, just read it and then you check for yourself. You use your reason. I have read it. I have a degree brain. in New Testament history. I have probably more information about the Bible than you've ever learned. And I have I've forgotten addition. more about the Bible than you currently know. Well, so, when we're talking about the Bible, um, we, I think it's important to specify which translation now. And this, of course, adds more complication to this whole thing. Yeah, but I'm free to end... use whatever whatever translation Otangelo wants to use. Okay, yeah. tell us which one, Otangelo. In in the end, we will see once we die who was right, right? <sighs> which which translation? Or oh, well, we won't because we'll all be dead and unconscious of the fact that we're wrong or right. Otangelo, well, which which? Well, this is such a right, stupid juvenile argument. Atan Otangelo, I want you to tell me which which preferred version of the Bible you believe. Which which? Thank you. Of the two hundred English translations, do you adhere to? Or if you want to go to the, some of the Spanish variations, because I do speak Spanish and I can read and understand it. So if you want to talk about those those variations, we can do that as well. Ball's in your court. Which version? Otangelo, Otangelo speaks Portuguese, not Spanish. Oh, he speaks Portuguese? Okay, okay. okay. well, first, I don't speak Portuguese. First of all, okay, first of all, I grew up in Switzerland, in Zurich. We speak German there. And we had there mainly in the church two translations. One was the Elbefelder Bibel, which was the most precisely translated Bible, but which had some difficult and antique words. And then we had um, uh, a New World translation, which was more fluent, more easy spoken. And I was able to compare those two. And of course, there are differences, but the core message, um, you can fully understand it. It doesn't depend on the version of the Bible which you read. The differences, they, they are small. So I don't think this is a How do you know it was the most accurate translated version? I don't think because there are some differences in these translations that we are unable to understand the core message of the Bible. I think that was a good question. How oh. did you determine that they, they were the most correct translation? Well, because that's that's what the aim of either one or another translation is, and they clarified that in their introduction and explained it. So, How do you know that? How do you know they weren't just claiming this? Well, so well, so you now, can, now you're again well, well, you you reading something that a man wrote and said, I'm correct, this is my correct translation, and you just leave it there. So you never checked whether or not it was the most correction. Can, most can most use, uh, correct translation. Uh, I can name uh, 20 versions of the Bible off you the top just, of my head that all claim to be the correct, the yeah. most accurate version. You can use the concordance where you have the direct translation of Greek to German or to English or to Portuguese, whatever. Then you can go and check what each word in Greek uh, actually means. Well, there, there's never going to be such a thing as a, di a direct the, translation between Greek and any modern languages because Greek 
has a different sentence structure than most modern languages, particularly English and German. English and German have uh, similar sentence structures in where they placed uh, the, va- the the verbs and the nouns and the prepositions in their sentences. Where in, is in uh, Greek, they don't do that. Some words contain the prepositions in the word itself, whereas we have separate words for prepositions. So no, you're never going to have a direct translation. But what you can have is a consensus of Greek scholars who understand and can read and write Koine Greek uh, deciding which of these is most probably the correct interpretation of the language because it's a dead language. Nobody speaks it anymore. Modern Greek is, is, is less similar to Koine Greek than English is. You know, there's, there's, there's no real similarity to it because it hasn't been spoken in 2,000 years. It was, it was uh, you, usurped but... by medieval Latin in the 5th century, so we honestly don't know what the correct translation of the Bible is. But out of the 200 English versions of the Bible that I've read, uh, the one that most scholars prefer is the New Revised Standard Version or the English Standard Version Bible. Yeah, I think the relevant thing to say here is that I think that independently of these variances, the core message of the New Testament is clear and every one of us can understand. What's the core message? Christ died on the cross for our sins. If we surrender to his love and for his substitutional punishment, we can find eternal life if we believe in him and follow him as Lord and Savior. Great. So the uh, so, uh, the... justification by faith versus faith through works. It's pretty Those are two competing soteriologies in the Bible. Yeah, it which is, is it? Pretty, it is pretty clear that works are not what saves us. What saves us is faith in Christ James, and the works. Can I finish, please? And James works, chapter 2, 14 through 16 says the exact finish, opposite yeah, of what you just said. Can I finish, please? Can I finish, please? But When you say works, something abundantly wrong, I'm going to uh, correct you. Yeah, but let me finish and then you can correct me. The works, they are proof that our conversion was genuine, that it was true. That means if I confess Christ, and if that doesn't follow with a change in my life, and if I continue to do certain things um, which, uh, which are wrong, then it is doubtful that that conversion was genuine. So we are not saved through good works, but we are saved to do good works. According to James you can chapter lose two, salvation 16, if you don't do the works. Peter, hold on a second. According to James chapter 2, 14 through 16, it explicitly says that faith without works is dead, it's meaningless, it's useless, and it will not get you into heaven. According to Romans chapter 4, verse 5, and another passage in Ephesians chapter 1, I believe, uh, Paul explicitly states that even to those who do not work, yet believe in God and have faith, their faith is counted as righteousness. That's a contradiction. Either it is the case, either it is the case that faith alone is enough to get you into heaven, or it's not. According to James and the evangelists, it's not. According to Paul, it is. Which is okay. it? Okay. Okay. The thief on the left of Jesus who confessed him, he didn't have the opportunity to do any good. And he, according to Jesus, he went to heaven. Now, if my dad. Depends on which gospel on, you read. If, if, in, I mean, I don't know if it is in all of the four gospels, but it is very clear. No, it's only in one of them. Very, I would, I would have to go and see in which one. That it is of course written, you would, because you haven't actually investigated this you, beyond your own myopic you know worldview that it's true. You know, this story isn't really convincing was... at all. Okay, there was a thief on the, on the left of Jesus who confessed that he, Jesus didn't do any wrongdoing, and Jesus said, on which gospel today, you read. Oh, Tangela, what he's bringing up is that there are contradictory stories there or there's also stories that don't line up because there's different versions written by different people at different times and it's it's suspect we we can't determine them to be true okay everything that you're stating here otangelo like every single bit of it is all predicated on the bible being true and you can't demonstrate that the bible is true yeah, I don't have. And if to the Bible is so anything. important, why nope. why couldn't an omniscient and omnipotent God make sure there was only one version, and that version would not have any contradictions or anything that comes even close to being a contradiction? If this God that you propose exists, 
then why did he leave such a mess that is called the Bible? I don't think it is a mess, Peter. As I said, right in the beginning when I came in, and I think it was you asking me, give me some reasons why the Bible is true. I said, Google mm -hmm. um, non-designed coincidences. There is a book out there, and it explains that the Gospels, they are complementary. And there are things which you see in one Gospel, and then you say, well, but for example, why did Jesus wash the foods of the of the of the disciples? Strange. And then you go to Potentialo. Potentialo. With all due please, respect. Finish, please. No, oh, with finish, all due please. respect, Peter, what you're doing I, now is diminishing like your God Peter, even further like to, by please. pointing to a man-made book like to, that we Peter, should read. I would like to finish my sentence. You can you can finish why your sentence. You I'm just Peter, pointing Peter, out to you. You do that all the time, Peter. As long as I, know I, I apologize. Here, I apologize. Go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. So, if you go to the other gospel, then you see that the apostles they were competing with each other, asking themselves who would be the greatest in heaven. But that, in that gospel, you don't see the follow-up where Jesus washes their feet. So, in the other gospel, you see the complementary. Explanation. We're not talking Jesus about mere omissions, Otangelo. The Gospel of Matthew explicitly states that both of the thieves mocked Jesus. There was not a Pentian thief. The Gospel of Luke says there was a Pentian thief. Mark doesn't specify if either of the, the thieves were Pentian, and John doesn't mention, mention them at all. We can okay. go through more contradictions than that. You had the contradiction of the birth narratives between Matthew and Luke, all four different resurrection narratives. How did Judas die? When did the Satyrion arrive to uh, to get Jesus? Did Jesus heal the girl after she was dead or while she was still sick? Did Jesus hear, heal one man or two on the road to, to Jericho? There's dozens first of them. Of all, first of all, you need to understand that we are talking about eyewitness accounts. And if the four no, of us would all four be 100% no, the same, then we would have to conclude that the same author authorized... Okay. Or bogus or gospels. So of course, if we, you we know, have, if you have, Otangelo, Otangelo, this accounts, is bankrupt. This is I the most bankrupt thing you've said so far. That you have first, first of all, Otangelo, this is false. First of all, we know for a fact that Matthew and Luke both did copy word for word from Mark, and no Christian uses that as a uh, or, or considers that as a as a, a diminishment of the value of the gospels. Matthew and Luke were not eyewitnesses. We know Matthew wasn't an eyewitness, because even according to church tradition, Mark wasn't an eyewitness. He was a secretary of Simon Peter. And why would Matthew, who was apparently Matthew the tax collector, that is, why would he an eyewitness copy from somebody who clearly was not? Why would he refer to himself in the third person in the, in the omniscient literary perspective, where he somehow knows the thoughts, emotions, and goals, and desires of every character involved in the story? How would Matthew, an eyewitness to some events, also detail events that he wasn't an eyewitness to, like the Garden of Gethsemane or the, de the birth narrative of Jesus? which again contradicts Luke's version. Luke was a physician, the secretary of Paul. Paul didn't know Jesus, neither did Luke. The only one you might be able to make a case for being an eyewitness is John, and even that is dubious at best, considering that it is the latest of the four Gospels written, almost 60 years after Jesus died. So we know for a fact that Matthew and Luke did ex explicitly copy about 80 to 90% of what was in Mark. Then they add their own details in, and that is where the contradictions arise. Secondly, well, I, they're not eyewitnesses. You don't have any evidence for that. Yeah, that's true. I give you that. They are not eyewitnesses. I personally, I think that the Gospels were written down uh, like proto-Gospels, let's say, very early in the beginning. And also they were verbally um, transmitted and then somewhere they were written down. And maybe there was some kind of evolution until having the, the end result, which, which is what we have. But... Um, as I, as I said, I am satisfied to understand that these um, uh, supposed um, contradictions are based on the fact that we are talking here about people which saw the same event and they just reported what they saw from their perspective. And since, uh, I mean, nobody has a photographic um, uh, memory, so there were these these kind of contradictions. But I don't think this is an argument which can uh, permit but to why would an omniscient omnipotent god allow that in the bible otangelo why would would he do that maybe i'll ask him unless, once I unless 
Unless, well, unless I'll, tell, I'll tell you the bigger problem here is that you've just conceded that, in fact, the Gospels do contradict each other, and we don't have any good evidence that they were written by eyewitnesses, and yet your entire faith predicates upon the veracity of the claims made in these Gospels, which we know are mutually exclusive with some of the other claims made in the Gospels. It is not possible for both Matthew and Luke to be correct when one says that both thieves mocked Jesus and the other one says that only one of them did. We know it's not possible for both Matthew and Luke to be correct when one says that Jesus was born during the reign of Herod the Great and the other says that he was born during a census under Quirinius as the governor of Syria. We know it's not possible for both Matthew and Luke to be correct on the death of Judas, wherein in one account he falls headlong into a field and in the other account he hangs himself. Yeah, except because you're, you're each galloping, I think each of these things which you are putting on the table right well, now... Well, then pick one, we'll go over it. Well, I am. I mean, I am not. Uh, I, I have not uh, photographic memory. I would have to Google uh, each of these things to come up with uh, uh, an explanation. I don't have I photographic would... memory either. I've just actually studied the text. Yeah. Okay. You have, but um, I I don't have done that uh, very recently. So I may be. So not you believe it, and you admit you haven't studied the text. That's that's an interesting ideological no, problem for you. No, 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 no. Don't put words <laughs> in my mouth. I freed the Bible more than once, um, but I didn't study spe in specific these subjects and supposed contradictions which you are mentioning right now recently. So before I would give you an answer to how I see it, I would have to go and study it. I'm open to do that. I'm not uh, afraid or something like that, but I would need time. So just... Um, well, the way that you like see it, any, right any now, attempt, Atangelo, any... Any... Uh, Atangelo. <clears throat> Any attempt that you make to amalgamate the stories in the Gospels that are clearly contradicting each other, meaning that one of them has to be false, in any attempt to harmonize that, what you're going to do is create an entirely new narrative that none of the Gospels are saying on their own. So you are inventing your own word of God. Much like uh, in the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 16, verse 8, the earliest copies we have of the Gospel of Mark end there. There's no further details about Jesus' resurrection or him meeting up with the disciples or the women seeing him. But later copies of the Gospel of Mark, much later, several hundred years later, uh, they do detail various different endings. Some Bibles include both endings, some only include one, which is the longer ending of Mark, verses 9 through 20. And most Bibles, uh, in fact, pretty much all modern translations of the Bible, will have a footnote at the bottom of the Gospel of Mark detailing the fact that this ending is not in the earliest copies. So we know for a fact that whoever was originally responsible for authoring the Gospel of Mark did not write down that those latter 12 verses, which detail things that Jesus supposedly said to the Gospels. So whoever wrote those things was most certainly not privy to the events that they took place, because this was 150 to 300 years after all these people would have been dead. Okay, so this so person wasn't an eyewitness. He didn't know anybody who was an eyewitness. He didn't know anybody who knew anybody who was an eyewitness. He is four generations separated, he or she, is four generations separated from any of the events that would have take, taken place after the events of Matthew chapter, uh, chap, or Mark chapter 16, verse 8. It's a complete fabrication. And we can find dozens of these examples throughout the gospel. These, these, these books have been altered repeatedly throughout history. They are copies upon copies of translations upon translations. And these copies and translations were made by hand. Meaning that each individual scribe would copy the mistakes of their predecessor, make their own mistakes, and then all those mistakes would be compounded and copied by the next scribe in line. You don't have any reason or empirical evidence for trusting that anything that is said in these Gospels is true. And I have mountains of evidence to doubt them. Free to do so, Xerxes. I mean, uh, uh, I am not here to impose anything on anyone. I disagree with your conclusion. I think that, um, that the Gospels are trustworthy. Why? And, um, Why do you think that? Well, um, one good reason, for example, we can bring up the resurrection of Christ. We have uh, empirical evidence. But yet another story that contradicts itself throughout all four compies. It's actually the only story in all four Gospels that contradicts itself, funny enough. So you think that the four Gospels, the New Testament, it's entirely made up. Is that what you believe? I believe that it's a legend, and that it evolved the way that legends do. It starts out with a story that's probably seated in some level of truth, and it metastasizes as it's laid down through oral tradition. Okay, so why did so many people die for their belief? Uh -oh. We don't know necessarily that they did, uh, but we know for a fact that the apostles, uh, there's no evidence that they died for it, other than maybe Paul and Peter. Uh, what we have are several different competing accounts of how the disciples died. Matthew, Thaddeus, uh, Matthias, 
and John all died of old age, according to most accounts. Uh, Matthias, there's also an account in the 14th century book, John, John Fox's Book of Martyrs, that he was beheaded. Uh, Thomas was speared in India after having sex with a royal woman. Uh, Matthew, there's another competing account with Matthew where he was killed by an Ethiopian king for attempting to disrupt his marriage to his own niece. Uh, Philip was apparently crucified, but in any of the accounts, such as with Philip or Andrew or uh, Simon the Zealot, where they were actually killed, like, for example, Simon the Zealot was killed in a riot. Uh, he was beaten to death in, in a crowd, which doesn't indicate that he was ever given the opportunity to recant, that recanting would have saved them, or that he was killed for the purposes of eradicating the Christian faith. We have no reason to believe that any of those people died so, for what they believed. Okay, so do you believe that um, there was no cruc crucifixion of Christ, of Jesus? I don't know. Maybe there was. We, we, we can I, say I don't have honestly, enough evidence to conclude that it happened. We can say honestly by just by historical record, just by looking at what the Romans did, is that if someone, that, he, that if he was crucified, he was one of tens of thousands that were crucified. And that crucifixion was not exactly a, a rare thing in the Roman Empire. It typically was what was done to anybody who royally screwed up. And... You know, I mean, heck, after the Third Servile War, 10,000 slaves were, were crucified along the Appian Way just to make a just to make a statement. So you know, was 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 it was an itinerant rabbi crucified in Roman times? Probably. And I'm willing to bet he probably if if if, if Christ was there, as he's depicted, he probably wasn't the only person ever crucified, you know, for being an itinerant uh, rabbi. So, yeah, I mean, this could just good portion of reality. It's it's the it's the the claims of divine. It's the claims of something extreme. It's claims of like things that break reality, like resurrection after three days. These things require a suspension of reality. So, like Xerxes was saying, that most of the, these are this is most likely a legend that is metastasized over time and is probably rooted somewhere in the truth that the leader of a splinter faction who spoke out against the group that he, the, the, the religion that he splintered off from and made heretical claims and was stirring up shit, got crucified for it because the authority came along and appealed to the Romans. and was like, look, he's doing this. And then they punished him for it. That's not beyond the realm of possibility. It, it well, just, it just equates, uh... it just equates Christ to nothing more than the, than the iron age, David Koresh. As far as the realm of possibility goes, let's be clear that just because something is possible doesn't mean that it's probable. And everything that we know about the crucifixion of Jesus runs contrary to everything that we know about Roman politics in that oh, particular well, area and region. Also true. Uh, especially with Pontius Pilate doing anything to capitulate to the Sanhedrin. Uh, if any, it, it, Based on everything else we know about Pilate, uh, he would have been more inclined to give Jesus a job because of how much he frustrated the Sanhedrin. <laughs> Well, the yeah. Romans were not at all fans of the uh, the Jewish synagogue, especially when you consider that the Jews had such a stranglehold on the region, uh, religiously speaking, and it made any of their um, economic efforts somewhat futile. In fact, Josephus' Antiquities of the Jews details an event wherein uh, the Sanhedrin complains about a, uh, a Roman bridge damming up their aquifer and reducing the water supply. So uh, to retaliate for that, uh, Pontius Pilate gathers up all of the Jewish leaders of that particular ghetto, and then he opens the aquifer and drowns them all to death floods them right there in the town square. And then the ones who survived were beaten to death by his soldiers. This is clearly not a man who has any consideration for what the Jews wanted, or what they desired, or what upset them. His interests were clearly aligned to the antithesis of that. Yeah, I, I, mean, I mean, I understand from your perspective, if there is no God, then of course the miracles in the Bible, um, they... they, they uh, I'm not even talking about, like, that was JL's point on Tangela. I'm not talking about the miracles. I'm talking about what we know from history, the evidence right, that we have from right. history, and whether or not yeah. it corroborates the stories in the Bible. Obviously, I have to suspend belief in the miracles and the miraculous on the virtue that I don't accept that those things exist. But if we were to go based on whether or not the Gospels are historically reliable, I would at least think that we could find common ground on the historical events they detail, which we can't. There's, they, they are completely at odds with everything else that we know about history. Effectively, we would have to throw out all of our understanding of Roman history, particularly within that time and region, in order for anything in the Bible to be true or accurate. And then yeah, at that point, I... once we throw it out, we have nothing to compare it to, so we still can't conclude that it's accurate or reliable. We just have to trust blindly that what it says is the truth, even when sometimes it says things that are in contradiction to its own, its, its own wording. 
Right? We, we know that Luke and Matthew, particularly those two Gospels, contradict each other at every given opportunity because both of those Gospels, Gospel authors were copying from Mark. And where Mark failed to input certain details, Matthew, <coughs> I apologize, Matthew and Luke added them. And where they added details, they contradict each other. Almost you know, every uh, given opportunity that they have to contradict each other when deviating from Mark, they do. Otangelo, um, thank you for joining us. We do need to move on to... Uh, right off. I have one more question, please. Maybe just Peter's question first, and then we should try to wrap it up pretty quickly here. I, I have one more question. Otangelo, so we, we go back a while. I, I have seen your blog, and I've gone over your blog. That is an extensive amount of work that you have put in regarding evolution, regarding abiogenesis, all those things. After your conversation just now with King Xerxes, don't you think that you should completely shift uh, your, your goal, start a new blog, and put in the energy that you put into trying to disprove evolution and start over and start a blog on your research on the Bible, wouldn't that be not only a, a much better way to spend your time, but also be more in line with the fact that if the Holy Spirit is in you, and if the Holy Spirit will make you change your ways and, and make you do good works, wouldn't those be the works that would be preferred? Peter, I think that in regards of all these uh, issues which have been raised by Xerxes and by all you guys, um, there are people which are much more qualified, which do that for, for life, to be theologians. To, mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, so there is a lot of work out there. And I think I, I have already broadened very much my, my, my extents of, of research let's say but um uh, yeah it is but wouldn't wouldn't, I, wouldn't the bible be much more important to you to do your research on than some theory that an atheist according to you came up with in order to disprove god wouldn't the bible be the the one and only thing you should focus on and make sure that you have that 100% correct Charles Darwin belonged to the Church of England. Well, first of all, one hundred percent correct is 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 maybe something which uh, nobody. No, okay, will, okay, will, I, I'll will, grant you that. Will, will, will reach that as close but, as you can get to that. But but I think studying the Bible is something which every Christian should do, which I do. I I agree with you that in the last um, five, six, six, seven years, maybe I have spent more time in regards of science and philosophy, less in theology. And it is pretty possible that I will spend more time um, scrutinizing the Bible. But I am doing that. And as I said recently, I uh, did read a book, which I, which I say again, Google um, Undesigned Coincidences, which address precisely these discrep the supposed discrepancies between the Gospels, and it is very interesting. So I recommend anyone to Google for that. And if you need a link to the book, uh, you can just send me um, a message here on, on politics, and I give you, you can uh, download load the book for free and make your own investigation. Well, I, I hope you do put in the time and start investigating it. It, it, it has become pretty apparent that there's a lot of work you still need to do when it comes to the Bible. Namely, it's acknowledging that God and evolution and abiogenesis are not mutually exclusive concepts. Well, that would be an entirely new topic, but I think yeah. Randolph wants to move on, so yeah. that could be eventually well, something. It's not just you're free to revisit in two weeks. Just to clarify, Tangela, it's just not me. It's just that we need to try to bring other people oh, no, in. Of and, course. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You'd be welcome I mean, to come back. You'd be welcome to come back in future episodes. We do this once a fortnight. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Angela. Bye-bye. Have a great one. All right. All right. Jason has been spamming my DMs with pictures of worms <laughs> for the last oh. hour and a half or so. So Jason, I'm ready with a gift. Be before, before he comes up, I just got I just have to I have to acknowledge, I have to take a moment. After all my interactions with Otangelo and all the debates and everything, 
we actually accomplish something that I've never seen before. And that is to get a Tangela to a point where he acknowledges that he has to do more work. My mind is literally like blown right now. That's good. I, I do, think I he agree. Think agree. Here. I uh, think he, well, I think that's, the uh, reason was because of how we uh, talked with him and we let him uh, have a lot to say. And then King Jesus especially was uh, talking Bible stuff with him. And I, I think that really helped him to kind of put things in perspective and realize, oh, yeah, there's some things he needs to correct. So, but I think all of our effort oh. together probably helped. I think it's actually, Ontangelo seems a lot um, calmer than normal. I think Ontangelo has done a lot a lot of work on his personality in debates, and I think he's improved a great deal on his own in being able to have these conversations. So props to Ontangelo. And do you think you think you think in beta blockers? I'm thinking beta blockers. No, I think I think what it is is for a while there he got involved with Darth Dawkins and that's where he started to really show a nasty streak. And yeah. he's dissociated from there, he's gone back to being quite nice to uh, converse with. And I think that's what T Jump is noticing. Maybe you weren't aware that uh, of him before his encounters with Darth. Oh, Dawkins. I was. I absolutely was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I was addressing T Jump, but yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, I was, I was impressed. I was, I was, I was impressed. I was like, I'm kind of like, wow. There's, it's like new ground has been broken, and I'm just, you know, wow. Okay, let's go, Jason. Welcome, Jason. You're going to talk up, about guys? Broccoli, uh, broccoli and worms. Is that right? Uh, no broccoli, but um, yeah, worms, worms all the time, every time. What what have you got new for us today? <laughs> well, it's more of a continuation of a well, let's say last time before somebody got triggered and kicked me off. Um, oh come on, man! Was, don't, uh, don't be dishonest like that. No, uh, speaking of, but anyway, you got no power here. Can, I can have a chat. Argument. So, um, so yeah, so everybody, seven billion people have a parasite in their lower intestine that secretes chemicals into their bloodstream that controls their mind. This is only there because they are taught that animal products are okay to eat, specific animal products are okay to eat when you follow this religious text. You with me so far? Do you have any of those pictures? Um, Jason, I'm starting to wonder if the reason you don't want to talk about broccoli is because it might be an antidote to everything you're, you're suggesting here. <laughs> I, I can't yeah, I don't want, I don't want to bring pictures. it to that. Wait, wait. This is I'm, very, I'm actually really. I don't curious. want to say that. I don't want to th- say that specifically. But I'm curious what T Jump. Please, can what T Jump has to say about this? Because, go ahead. So, so Jason, what is the argument? So, yes, we have bacteria and stuff, and some religious people don't have it because they don't eat pigs. So, what is the point? But those religious pig, people that are not allowed to eat pigs are allowed to eat chicken, goat, cow, which and... also which brings a different type of parasite. And, and that's that's your God. Your it has the ability to control you from the inside using your own brain. No, it is not a God because it was it's younger than me. Those bacteria they didn't exist before I existed, so they can't be God because they couldn't have created what. Me. All those bacteria in your brain, they mm. they have a life cycle of about a few weeks to a few months, and then they die. So they reproduce. So, so all of the bacteria currently uh, in my brain. live with you up to 33, 30 years and plus. Well, that, that's nice. You could have, you could have, a, you could have a parasite so, that you have gotten from your, right, right. when you were so, a child. So, so if there's a 60 year old guy, that parasite, the, the specific cell did not exist that long. The cell reproduced and its children. I'm not existed. here to argue about this. I'm not arguing. I'm, I'm presenting you. Right. Um, I'm answering, I'm answering your I'm question. I'm presenting so, you. So it, no, doesn't, it doesn't matter if you believe it's a God or not. What it constitutes a god. god? It doesn't have to. It doesn't have to create you in order to what? be something. Has to be your god. It doesn't have to what? create you. All it has um, to do is manipulate your entire worldview, manipulate your entire life, d- determine whether you live or you die. And this is what this thing does. I, I'm curious. I'm curious, Jason. No. What is the what you're saying that the these these parasites that live in human beings' bodies and they they secrete they have I the guess secrete test, or in the lower test and then they they secrete okay. chemicals. That induce us to be more sinful. I guess, like, uh... Sinful. Sinful is the word <laughs> that would exactly describe. Okay, it. okay. What? Well, okay, okay. What is the name of the chemical that they secrete that results in mental control? 
Uh, it's a simple. It's a simple proton secreted in the right uh, portion of the brain. Pro proton. What's the name of it though? What is the a proton? Pro uh, mean a protein. protein. A protein. Okay. What is the name of the protein? Oh, I'm not sure. It, it varies depending on what uh, parasite you're dealing with. Do you think we wouldn't? We would not have identified this at this point. We have. Well, no, he's, you're just not. You're just, it's, it's, there's no Disney movies about it, so that so you don't know about it. There's toxoplasmic no, no PBS. Toxic, toxoplasmic yes, sir, yes, sir. So it, it's it's he's it's that's a real one. thing. That's one. That's one, and that affects up to eighty-five to ninety-five percent of the world, well, depending on what source you're you're refer referencing. Well, the lowest you know, the lowest average I can find is fifty percent of the world. He also thinks that Toxo can reproduce outside of uh, outside of cats. So no, no, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to correct you about this because you seem to have spaz out about this every single time. <laughs> Toxoplasma gondii is supposed to be in a cat. The, the object, objective of this is, is to be in a feline, but it can live inside of a human body. It can reproduce inside of a human it body. Cannot. But it often, cannot. It can only shut reproduce up, in cats. Shut up! Tired of you interrupting me, man. Come on, come on, I can't down, down. Dude. Just, Just shut up, chill. man. Just Listen, shut chill, your mouth. Chill. I'm, I'm I'm, I'm not cussing. I'm not cussing. I know, I know, I know. I'm being interrupted. Can you check that goof, please? I'm saying one at a time. Don't attack each other one at a time. Come on. Yes. Thank you. What was I saying? What was I? What was I saying? God we're gonna man. say this. Toxoplasma Down worldwide, oh, thanks, toxoplasmosa gondii is capable sure. of infecting virtually all warm-blooded animals, but felids, such as That's what we're talking about. are the only definitive host <laughs> in which the parasite may undergo sexual. I reproduction. literally just said that. I li dude, sexual reproduction in the intestines, guy. That's, no, what, no, you're no. That's no, what you're missing. That's what you're missing. That's what you're missing. The only known definitive hosts in which the parasite may undergo sexual reproduction are felids. That's it. It cannot sexually reproduce in anything other than cats. Oh my god, dude. That's that's insanity. That's literally insanity considering it's ninety percent of the world. That's literally has it. the bacterium. How that's do you the, think, how the think ninety percent of the world is getting okay, I'm gonna argue with you, since you're so you're ex expert on this now that you Googled something. How did ninety five percent of the world become infected with toxoplasma? They're Gandhi not infected. Ninety five percent of the world is not infected with toxopla uh, toxoplasma. I would rather not I, yeah, it's been fun, guys. Until you get this dork off this thing, I'm not coming back on here. Oh, cats, man. Cats. Boom! <laughs> cats. Wrecked! Oh, Gio got pwned! He came in hot and angry already. So. I want to say thank you, thank you to Alex Stein for the super chat. Alex Stein recently made it big because he was on Fox News with Tucker Carlson, his daddy. Um, now he has like 100,000 subs. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so, what's so on, Goldie? Atheist? Was he well, brought on you little, you little was, traitors to the to the world? How you doing today? He brought on for that ridiculous rap over at, at the Plano City Hall. That guy who was in the voice chat before, yeah. ban him right yeah. now. That was the worst thing I ever heard in my life. So let me ask yeah. you guys: if, a if you need any emotional support, please feel free to DM me because that was vicious. I mean, I hope you you can get past <laughs> that jail. Oh, uh, I'm never going to let, let it, it, no, gonna let it go that he keeps saying things about, really, about toxoplasmosis that are not true. <laughs> toxoplasmosis. Let me just say this, right? Okay, so I'm a, okay. a Christian patriot of this country. I uh, went to Catholic school. I was raised Catholic. However, I'm more so Protestant now. I'm not crazy religious. I usually only go to Mass on holidays or anything like that. But uh, the question I got to ask you guys first before you ask me a question is, what is your proof that a creator doesn't exist? All things, all things, mind. all things start as imaginary until evidence is provided that they aren't imaginary. No evidence has been provided, therefore, God is imaginary. I don't hold that position, Goldie. Oh, okay, okay. So it's just who who all here is a little traitor to the world, a little atheist. For me, it would depend on the on the claim that is made about a specific god, and then we would investigate the claim made about the specific god. And we nine out of ten times we can determine whether or not that god is is contradictory, illogical, and mm. cannot exist. So, well, so the problem with your stance is unless proven or anything imaginary, unless proven is fake. Well, the thing is, is we as the human race, we find out things that are evolutionary and changing on a daily basis. There's probably a million things we don't know about the uh, 
you know, what's under our earth, outer space, sure. et cetera. Sure. And just because we don't know about it yet, just because we haven't fully discovered and proof hasn't been displayed in front of us. Are doesn't you really trying to convince us with the hasty generalization right now? So listen, you little, you little beta male. Don't interrupt me. I'm very polite. I won't interrupt you. Let me finish my point. So, so hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm no, we're not doing this. We're not doing this beta. This beta crap. I won't the reality talk. Of it, the reality of it is just because it exists in the possibility. The reality of it is because. Okay, go ahead. The the reality is just because it exists, it potentially exists in the area of stuff that we don't know, does not increase the odds that it is true. Okay. The reality, I'd so, like to I'm, point out, Jay, I'd like to point out that Goldie did acquiesce and let you speak like a true beta would. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're probably a 45 year old male finishing his wap. Can I, can I suggest no, that no, if we're just, going down on, that just, line, no, that, that no, there are more people, no, no, that there are more people with their hands up and probably more people one, that would be able yeah. to have a decent conversation That's fair. and not I come have, here to troll I or well, insult I, I people. Answer his question. I don't, I don't you know, think we should spend any time on that. I stated my I Goldie? stated my belief in question, Goldie, and then you guys what? interrupted me. I have a troll question for you. Respond. I, I want to answer his question, question because he had a he had ahead. actually Hold a legitimate question. Let him ask his question to me. Let him ask his question to me. I'm I'm wondering uh, what you think of Miriam Adelson wanting to add a book of Trump to the Bible. <laughs> I don't know anything about that, but if that's true, that's ridiculous. Uh, what kind of MAGA general are you then? I'm a MAGA general that's an actual patriot, not a stone cold red coat loser, not an atheist traitor to our country, not a beta male liberal such as many of you, not somebody that has Miriam Adelson pronouns in their roles. And A, A, back she to got an award from topic. Trump for that. The topic at hand, beta. Okay. So here's the point. Just because we don't can we, have, can we move on to a more well, serious I, I, I still, No, I'm going to answer his question. I'm going to I'm going to answer his question. So his question statement. was. Can his I question, make my statement, you little red coat? You, you already did make, make it. You already did make it. Your question was. Is I that, didn't make my statement. Stop! Stop it. Your question was that why should we uh, think that everything is imaginary because there's lots of things we don't know about yet. Well, it's unreasonable to believe anything is true until it has evidence that it's true. So if you believe in God without evidence, you're irrational. So it's rational to conclude it's imaginary until evidence is provided. It's irrational okay, to believe it until you have evidence. Okay, but the same is if you don't believe that there's a creator, that's irrational because there's also no proof that there isn't a creator. It goes no, both ways. No, it the doesn't. Point is, is that's that the proof fallacy. It does not go both ways. Second. Hold on a second. It does that's, go both ways. No, the, point is, the point is, <laughs> the point is, is that it doesn't matter if you don't believe that there's a creator, and it doesn't matter that I believe that there is a creator. I could simply state that there's no proof that there isn't one. So it's opinion rejected, fallacy. lack of respected. But the same thing can be applied to my statement. So at no. the end of the day, I don't understand why you want to see the problem with atheists. Is I've they want already to answered that. I've already answered that. It's a burden of proof fallacy. Atheists, the real question is, why do atheists have to impose on everybody else's beliefs? Why can't you guys just go eat your vegan meals, go be liberals uh, by yourselves, and leave because us alone? Because your irrational beliefs lead to irrational behaviors, and those affect society at large. What, what irrational behavior? Donald explain Trump. that to me now. That's a um, topic. Do Donald, Donald, that Trump. That Donald, Donald Trump. Well, like the if first he, sign of Donald irrational Trump. behavior would be Listen why up, you were kicked out of the Catholic you Church. You see these stone-cold radical We all know what scandal we're country. talking about. You're atheist. I just moved him up. Political buzzword. Political buzzword. Political buzzword. I know you. all the political buzzwords. So my, my, uh, my quick nope. response to him is that one of the problems with a self-proclaimed MAGA general is he's not very well informed on people like Miriam Adelson, who got an award from Trump, personally delivered on stage. So he's he's not convincing me. He's not even convinced about his own stuff. He didn't sound educated at all either. He's just spouting talking mm -hmm. points. Yeah, he's, just, like he's, he, just an, he's just an edge lord. Wait, he wait, didn't even have a wait. position. He was just calling us wait. names and shit. Anyways, I'm gonna pull up a bomb. Wait, that is that is presupposing that there are educated Trump followers. There are. I, I... Hey Obama, Hello, Obama dog. dog. Yo, what's up, Taco? How's everyone doing? I, I always enjoy hearing you guys talk. So From my Trump argument is Obama. the media exists. Say what? Potato. What? I said potato. Oh, damn it. You guys didn't fall for it. All right. Well, I'm done. Thank you. Oh, come on. <laughs> I was so hopeful. We've moved from a MAGA general to an Obama dog. I thought we were really moving along here. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll go. You guys didn't fall for it. I will. Right, thanks, bud. Try again no, next time. Victory is mine. All right. I'm going to go ahead and pull up. <laughs> e, Ty, they're the next in queue here. 
Victory is mine, save the T-Jump. Hey, Ty. You've been keeping Hi, everyone. Well. I think Austin was before me. I don't know if the, that matters, but um, mine's really going to be quick. I was just going to answer T-Jump's question about the guy that um, thought that it's more probable that consciousness is fundamental as opposed to physical matter. And I would say the reason to believe that would be that the hard problem of consciousness, the way it was uh, put out by David Chalmers. What about it? Just it, it's a reason to believe that consciousness can't emerge from physical matter and therefore fundamental. Uh... Even the 30% of philosophers don't cite a hard problem of consciousness, and I'm sure it's even lower if you were to look at scientists. And well, like, he, he just physicalist. said it's a reason, so it doesn't need to be a good reason. Uh, but thank you for the Super Chat Cosmic. Appreciate it. Uh, I'll try to send you a question. Uh, so the hard problem of consciousness is, you're right, it's an argument against physicalism, but it isn't an argument for anything else. So it doesn't mean that there is idealism is true. It just means that there would be something in addition to physicalism, which could be a different kind of thing that we don't know about yet, an unknown physical thing, for example. Uh, the hard problem simply states that we can't conceive of a way to describe how experiences can be arisen from physical matter. That's all it says. But it doesn't say anything about idealism. Well, if idealism supplies a better answer to why it is, then it is a reason to believe in idealism. True, but it doesn't. It doesn't say that at all. Hard problem. The hard problem just says we don't know how to explain conscious experience with physical stuff. That's all it says. It doesn't say anything about idealism. It doesn't support idealism. Well, ideal by idealism, you don't have the the dichotomy. Um, if physical matter is is part of consciousness, then you don't have the hard problem of consciousness. You still have the problem of what is consciousness. So the problem is still there. It doesn't actually solve anything. It's fundamental as opposed to physical matter. Right, and you can just say it's emergent. It doesn't actually explain anything. So just calling it fundamental isn't a solution. It doesn't solve yeah, yeah, anything. Yeah, but, but exactly that's what I'm saying. The emergent theory gives you the hard problem of consciousness that I right. haven't heard any good explanation for it. Idealism, or some form of idealism, doesn't create the hard problem of consciousness. Right, it creates an exactly the same problem. It says, instead of it being, why is it emergent, it's why is it fundamental? So simply asserting that it's fundamental or asserting that it's emergent with no explanation either way just gives you no explanation. It doesn't, it doesn't sure, answer sure. anything. That's fair, but sure, that's fair. But physicalism has the same problem. You have to right. explain why is physical fundamental. Right. So saying, posing the question, why is consciousness fundamental, is not any different problem that any other fear theory of fundamentalism would have to tackle. Right. So I agree. The hard problem of consciousness doesn't add either to either theory. It's just a problem. So there's problems in both. The difference is, is that the physical models have been able to make progress in science. The idealists haven't. That's why physicalism is preferred, not because it can answer all of the questions. Yeah, well, I think my, my main point is it, it creates another problem that idealism doesn't have to tackle. Well, that's saying, not an issue. So, so like, uh, saying um, magical leprechaun sky daddy did it or something, like, that could solve lots of problems, like, every unknown. You could say, what is dark matter? Well, it's just what the magical leprechaun wanted or something. But the fact that it can solve lots of those problems doesn't mean it's a good explanation. So just right. asserting so, so it's a this. solution doesn't mean it actually is a solution. In order to make it count as a solution, you would need to demonstrate it with novel testable predictions. So the fact that you can yeah, imagine so it solves problems isn't evidence. Yeah, so, so let me try another possible proposition to why consciousness, you might think it's fundamental. Because even those physical measurements you're talking about and the novel predictions everything passes through consciousness eventually yes. everything has to be evaluated through consciousness so that's, that's another reason to think that it's fundamental no that's confusing epistemology and ontology so if i said um the only way i can see other galaxies is through a telescope therefore the other galaxies must be made of a telescope well, clearly that's false the fact that everything passes through your consciousness isn't evidence that it's made of consciousness um it's just confusing the epistemic means of getting the information with the ontology of what it is describing. Okay, sure. That's that's really all I had. 
Cool. Thanks for your time. Yep. Thank you for coming up. Thank you very much. And I think he was correct. Looks like Austin's been in queue for a while. I'm going to go ahead and pull up Austin now. Hello, Austin. Pulling you up. I have a quick question from the chat. Uh, Xerxes, do you have a channel? YouTube channel, I think, we're there. it's being asked. Yes. yes. King Xerxes is going to get me the information I'll be adding to the YouTube uh, video description. Um, uh, I guess yeah, I do. Xerxes must be away from the computer right I think now. It is Pornhub slash King Xerxes. <laughs> <laughs> Austin. I do, I do have a YouTube channel. I should have link I'll, it in chat too, so yeah, I get can that. Send that. Please get I'll that. Link in. It. Send it to me in a private chat, and I'll blast it around. Uh, uh, Austin, yep. the San Antonian, welcome. What have you got for us today? Hello, Austin. We can't hear you. If you, I have a distinct feeling I know this guy. Oh no! Wait, no, no. Sorry. No. Okay, so I think okay. what we should do, Taco, is maybe put Austin back to the audience for now until they get yep. their uh, audio problems sorted out, and maybe move on to the next person. Pulling up in Dalek. Hello, oh, Mr. Oh, Batman. Man. Where's Mr. Batman at again? Hello, Indalek. Welcome back. Hello. Hello. How's it going? Hello. What you got for us today? Can Real quick, me? if everybody can help us summon Mr. Batman, we need a at Hello? Mr. Batman ping with a bat signal. <laughs> I thought you had to like say his name three times into a mirror when the lights are off. Should, uh, should I should I hide first because I, I doubt he's going to come in here as long as I'm here. I think uh, I, I wasn't very pleased with, uh, I was actually pretty disgusted with Mr. Batman last time expressing bigotry uh, <laughs> against LGBT people. Yeah. I, I, I won't be sad if he doesn't come back. Sir, 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 okay. can I have a second chance? <laughs> All right, sorry, sorry about that. Go ahead, Indalek. Uh, you're not making any noises. Indalek, Hello. What have you got for us today? Sounds like your mic, mic might not be working. Try refreshing the page. Maybe we'll put Ndalek back into the audience too and try to bring up the next person. Cool. Pulling up Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just had a question. I, you probably hear this all the time, but I was wondering how atheists think the universe like started quantum fluctuations know. in the original quantum field. So it's space and time are emergent from a more fundamental quantum field. And the current hypothesis is that it's uh, the multiverse. So to add to T jumps answer, there are a lot of atheists who take an interest in science and do take that view. And uh, that's a very common and well accepted view in science, as I understand it. Uh, and there's a lot of evidence uh, that seems to support it. Um, there, there is nothing in atheism that says we must be scientific in our views, though. And there are some atheists who do have different views. There are some atheists with some whacked out views that I don't agree with. And uh, there are a, a number of us who just say we don't know. Mm. All right. And uh, have you guys like, like, uh, I don't know. How to... Like, what are your thoughts towards Islam? I know Christianity, like I listened to that whole conversation and it was like, I sided with King Zeres. He had really good points, but. That, as, I... as I host a show for Anra that is going through the Quran. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that I, that's not, that's not a book that I would, would believe or even adhere to according to what it's saying, what it's claiming, the rules that are being laid down. Why that, is that? that cannot be a god. Why? Because he gets uh, a lot of things fundamentally wrong, things about the universe, for instance, which could be one of the easiest things to go to. Why are you asking about I, Islam? Like, I've done tons of debate against Muslims and Christians. What? Do you have any evidence? Oh, for I, I wasn't here. I wasn't here for those. I'm sorry. Okay. So, do you? I, do you I honestly think... think you can just lump. You can just lump it into the the grab bag of all religions, whether it's extreme or it's not extreme or it's you know it doesn't really matter. It's it's a religion based upon people trying to draw conclusions about reality uh, and making it stuff up where they were ignorant. So. Oh. 
All right. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you for coming on. It's nice talking oh, to you. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. All right. We've got a, quite a few more people in queue. Obama dog. Wait, looks what about like he's gonna try to Indalek? Indalek, uh, see if his mic is yep. working. I figured Obama would be quick. Uh, let's pull up Indalek. Hey. Hey. What we got you. Oh, Can you hear working. me now? Uh, yeah, I don't know what's the uh, issue. Is it uh, my mic or do you have problems with other people? It it's it's a sometimes. Discord thing. It happens on Discord all the time. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> so I just want to point people to a resource. Uh, there was a debate uh, a week ago between Jimmy Aiken and uh, Bart D. Ehrman on the re reliability of the Gospels. And Jim Jimmy made a blog where he response to all of the questions Bart raises um, and it's pretty good it, it has a lot of citations from new archaeological findings mm -hmm. historians uh, scholars uh, it's called why Bart's wrong Jim, <laughs> Jimmy Aiken I'm glad he has so an Xerxes can check that yeah but uh, and others can check the debate um, well, when he can when he convinces the consensus of experts to agree with him then that'll be great until then i'm gonna go with the the experts oh just out of curiosity why should i accept uh jimmy aiken who is a catholic apologist why should i accept anything he has to say about new testament history he, he's not a historian he doesn't have any credentials in koine greek uh he's not familiar with the uh, conglomeration of the gospels or early church history he's an apologist he has no credentials on the subject whatsoever so why should i give a flying fuck what he has to say on the matter no comment didn't think so <laughs> well thank you for joining us Indalek oh is it there uh, misunderstood I'm pulling you up uh, just really quickly I wanted to say in response to that other guy um, Bart Ehrman while he is the most celebrity of all the New Testament scholars uh, he's he's not alone in his particular school of thought when it comes to New Testament history. I would say that he's, uh, at least if you if you mitigate all the people who are already believers in that category of New Testament scholars and you focus just on um, the people who are agnostics or atheists, right, um, he would be part of the overwhelming majority. Now, as far as it goes with, like, contradictions of the Bible and stuff, even believing scholars admit that, right? Like Sherwin White, Luke Beatty, uh, Craig Evans, uh, Sean McDowell, they admit that there are those issues in the Bible. So the, some Catholic apologists saying why, why Barterman is wrong, well, I mean, he would have to be contending with the, the consensus of modern scholarship on the historicity of the Gospels. It's not just Bart. So the fact that Jimmy Aiken named his blog Why Bart is Wrong demonstrates that he has no desire to actually investigate the historical evidence behind this, this religion. Did you say Sean McDowell admits that there's Bible contradictions? Do you have a clip of that yes. that I can have? Sure. I mean, he does it on Apologia's uh, channel quite frequently. Ah. Of course, I mean, he uses the same um, the same sort of like uh, watered down admission that most other apologists do is just like, well, it looks like a contradiction and we're not aware of any evidence or information that makes it not a contradiction. But oh, gotcha. we can we can have faith that the authors knew that there was some some is information that made it not a contradiction apparent contradictions yeah well yeah uh, and then he doesn't offer any refutation and he says that based on all available information that we have now this is a contradiction but we can have faith as christians that um there's some information we just don't have access to that made this not a contradiction like for example what jay warner wallace does with the contradictions between matthew and luke on the birth narrative of jesus right like that's probably the biggest obstacle when it comes to the historical reliability of Christianity, or at least the gospel specifically, that Christians are going to have to overcome. Because <clears throat> that is a blatant inaccuracy. Uh, it would be like saying that Jesus Christ was born at the, you know, both when you know George W. Bush was president and when George Washington was president. Obviously that's, that can't be the case. <clears throat> misunderstood. So that's a... Hello, yeah, misunderstood. A... I really like your name. Yeah. Thank Welcome. you. Thank you. I just want to say I grew up Catholic. My mom was a CCD mm. teacher and um, I moved to Maine and then I went out with several Christian boyfriends from different denominations and different Christian things in the past. 
And I did convert to Islam for 10 years, and I've been in several different churches and been brought into several religions because of men I've hung out with. And I, I, I came up with something simple um, that uh, I ran into the Baha'i faith, and now I think I am a Muslim and I follow the Baha'i faith also. And I believe all religions is one, all races is one. And I'm obsessed with peace. And I think all religions are, are like instruments and uh, different instruments and they are played differently, you know, but they, uh, you know, look to the same God. And I do believe that all the Bibles and stuff like that and Qurans and everything, I believe that they're just messages from God, no matter which uh, version it is. And just to take in all the good and and do the best you can for people and love God and, and do the best in the world. Yeah, so and these, are, these are well-known These are well known characteristics of the Baha'i faith. Primarily. So I guess, uh, did you have some question for us or some way you wanted to convince us that a God exists? Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm curious to say that. I'm curious to say how you concluded that the God, like, like what convinced you that the God exists? Because uh, of how everything exists. Something, uh, something made us all. And I believe that God is the source of everything. Why? How do you know and that? We and we yet we don't know yet who we, who he is or okay. what he is and what shape and form and what he looks like. So, so why are you convinced that it's just one god and it's not multiple goddesses or gods uh, working together to create all of existence? Because we believe in one god. But why? why? Because. Jane, she owe me a Coke. <laughs> Have you ever read the Kadabi Ekdas? No. Was that a yes? No, I haven't. Oh. Well, that was the book written by Mirza Ali Muhammad, the person that's responsible for creating the Baha'i faith in the uh, 19th century, middle 19th century, around 1840 to 1850, right? Uh, <clears throat> Persia, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that individual was not convinced of a monotheistic deity. Because uh, I've only been given a couple of, uh, you know, books that were small when I um, visited the uh, the center well, the here. Kadabi Agnes is the Bible of the Baha'i faith. Yeah, I know. So maybe if you want to, you know, subscribe to that faith, you should probably read their holy book, which denounces the notion of a monotheistic God. Seems you have some conflicting interests when it comes to these sorts of religious ideologies. <clears throat> I think there might be a little bit more work you need to do. Misunderstood? Yeah, it's going to be hard um, to be. See, I was given a couple of basic books when I entered the Baha'i faith. And I've been down to the center a mm. few times and have been accepted. And they showed me a room that I can come and pray in all the time. And uh, the a faith place where everybody. I could stay all the time. And <clears throat> and uh, the guy the, the was the guy was really nice to me, and uh, I told him Actually everything. Was, huh? you know, most people peddling religions are usually pretty nice when they're trying to gain a convert, but the Baha'i faith accepts everybody. That's like their whole crux is that everybody actually belongs to the Baha'i faith. They just belong to different sects of it. So uh, uh, Misra Ali believed that all of the gods exist. And they're just I've, fighting with each other. I've even been to quite a few uh, dinners there. Oh, okay, okay. I'm it's, glad you've had a positive it's... experience with that religion. What, um, that's nice. Is there any evidence? And it's they true? have uh, plenty of art shows and stuff like uh, that. Cool. Um, Fascinating. So do concerts. I don't. I don't worship the Foo Fighters. Um, so evidence. Evidence. Exactly. So for me, I can tell you that a book is not enough to convince me because there are a lot of books that are written on a lot of these kinds of subjects. I, I want more than just a book that tells me stories. And, uh, I, I, you know, good for you if, if, if you want to, to, to go with that. Uh, I, I would suggest... Like maybe, I said, like I, re I read from all the books. Yeah, yeah. I, I would, I, 
I, I just maybe think about why is it that these books are convincing to you and uh, uh, maybe try to uh, put uh, some, uh, take doubt as your ally and, and, and consider other possibilities. Uh, one of the possibilities being no deities, another one being multiple deities and, and, and try to figure out if you're um, being uh, 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 coaxed into having a bias toward just one of those views. Actually, I've been try people have tried to make me stay with their church and their church only. And I never really followed any of them yeah, trying to get me to stay with their church and their church only. That is a common thing. Now, do you have something that you think would be convincing to us that the, the deity of the Baha'i Baha faith or the Islamic God Allah exists? Uh, just a feeling I get when I pray and stuff like that and and I've turned my life around around religion. Okay. Um, yeah, there are a lot of people who've managed to improve the quality of their own lives by uh, uh, joining a community or becoming part of something uh, like a meditation practice or religion or other things. So, you know, we're very happy for you that you found something that works well for you. Yeah. I mean, I sit at home alone and I'm praying and I, I'm reading for these books and I also do a lot of meditation. It all works very well and and it's better than, you know, sitting back in a corner, you know, with with a joint or alcohol or pills or something, you know. Misunderstood. Can I ask you a, a quick question? Because I think I think we're we're getting to a getting to a good point where we can move to the next person. But I want to ask you something real quick, just to throw something at you. Okay. The, um, <laughs> so do what? Uh, talking to chat, talking to my chat, forgot to mute. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. So just throwing it out there. Uh, Cause you were mentioning prayer, meditation and these things and that, um, you found it very, very helpful. So I'm just going to throw this at you. Just some, something for you to think about. Um, hypothetically say that I was a Christian or I was a, yeah, I was a Christian and I believe in God and I pray every day and so on and so forth. And, um, say one day I'm in a, I'm in a car accident, right. And I'm trapped in my vehicle. And the firefighters are working to get me out, but I'm stuck in there. And so in this perilous situation, I begin to pray because I believe in God. I, I pray to God and uh, it lowers my blood pressure. It calms my breathing. I use up less oxygen and, and my, in my chances of survival are increased. And then the firefighters uh, get me out of the car successfully and my life is saved. Okay. So recognizing that prayer, much like or meditation, similar thing, you, you, you focus on one thing, you calm yourself, you speak to this thing, or you think about it. Recognizing that prayer and meditation have a physiological utility to them. It, it calmed me down. I used less oxygen. I lowered my blood pressure. I didn't panic. And therefore, my survival odds were increased. Does the physiological utility mean that what I was focusing on or what I was praying to exist? Well, it can, yes. No, no, but does it? Yes. It does? Yes. How do you know that? Because I have a good feeling about it. <laughs> My, oh, ask and answer. Great. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Thank you, Misunderstood, and for coming up with a clever name. <laughs> I love this name. I've been misunderstood in more areas than one in my life. So. Well, you were, can, I you ask a, can I ask a final question? You were very Mr. well Smith? understood in that last exchange, so appreciate that. Yes. So, uh, misunderstood. Yeah, I, I have one question. So, uh, from what I got, you you're a believer in the Baha'i faith, and and so you believe that Baha'u'llah is uh, actually uh, Jesus uh, who came back to Earth, according to what what he claimed. I, I have personally spoken with uh, two different Jesuses, uh, one of which wasn't really convincing. The other one at least took uh, the, the, the time to write an entire new Bible uh, explaining more about the universe and, and how we got here, um, which I still don't think is convincing because he came up with the idea that we're built out of spaceships and that we're all pretty much aliens, which is Sorry. kind of weird. But he's he's Dutch, so drugs may have been involved in, in all of that. What yeah. what made you think that 
Baha'u'llah was was actually correct when he stated that he was uh, the second coming of Jesus? Uh, I believe that there is one God, but I believe anybody who represents a figure of a human or a person or whatever, they're all messengers, actually, but, from uh, God. But, but, but he claimed to be God as as in Jesus being God, uh, being fully man and fully God, he claimed that he was the second coming of Jesus. So, by definition, he claimed to be God. So, what 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 convinced you that that was the case? Uh, I believe in one God, like I told you. So. He, so he wasn't God. He came from God. Yes. Ah, okay. So you're you're not. But I do not believe. I do not. I believe he's a messenger, and he came from God. But no, I I you, don't believe any anybody who resembles a a, a, well, a physical is, being of a human being. I don't think is a god. What what I'm asking is that the founder of the Baha'i faith claimed to be God, and you disagree with that, yet you are a follower of the Baha'i faith. How does that work? It just works. And I told the guy that it runs the place, too. Can you say that again? I, I didn't catch that. I told the guy how I believe in the Baha'i faith, and he said that that was fine. That I take good all, you, from all the readings and stuff like that. So there is a guy that can answer for God that you can go to and, and ask questions. Uh, she just has a different. She has a different interpretation. I think it's fine. It's, it's a very unique yes, I have a different interpretation. I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just curious how that works. That if the main figure of your, if you reject the main figure of your own religion and still then hold to the religion that. Fascinating. But they say believe all religions is one, all races is one. Seems fine. Uh, I'm okay you with you that. reject the main figure of your religion. No, I don't. But you do. I, I don't, no, I don't. I don't. I think he's a messenger. That's fine. That's fine. I think I think we've talked about it enough. It's a very so you reject his claim perspective. that he's God. Yeah. So she's got she's got her own interpretation. I mean, I think that's yeah. that's as far as we can go on that one. So. Yeah, I think probably mm -hmm. we should try to move on to our next caller. But um, uh, thank you very much, uh, misunderstood. Really appreciate you coming on. And uh, Peter, for what you said about the two Jesuses, uh, uh, some lyrics from a song called "Industrial Disease" by Dire Straits come Dire Straits comes to mind for me. Uh, two men claim to be Jesus. One of them must be wrong. Well, so here, here's the thing: the uh, the the Dutch Jesus, he's on Twitter. Um, <laughs> you can you can find him if you type in ha Harry or Harry Jesus. Uh, that's with uh, I E at the end. Um, he he does he does fantastic drawings. I mean, every five year old would be jealous about about his drawings. And and there is a website where you can read the entire Bible both in Dutch and in English, and I think even in German. So I, I'm still trying to to mirror the whole thing on my own website because I, I promised him to do that just because I, I think he's a nice guy and I found it funny, the whole thing. But the way it's set up, it's, it's going to take me a lifetime to make it working anywhere other than on his, his website, because every single link leads to his own website. So I'll have to go through every single page and alter every single okay. link. And I'm, I, I'm wondering if I've done that, if I'm then also kind of Jesus. I have to get back to him. Yeah, Taco, who's next? So we've got a few people in queue. Uh, I see that Austin, who was in queue like the entire time, back in queue so i'll pull him back up hopefully he's not afk now hey austin you were hey, waiting uh, a long time there uh, what's up wow yeah probably nearing four hours be over 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> you are patient. <laughs> Convince us that no God idea. or whatever concept you believe in exists. All right, cool. So should I start off with giving a basic rundown of my theology? Um, sure. Like, yeah, uh, my... Christian, uh, if you're not a denominational, or where do you sit? Uh, all right. Um, my views seem to be very uh, idiosyncratic um, um, when it comes to God. So my, I just wanted to clarify them so that we're on even ground there. Uh, so... Actually, I believe in a very non-interventionist God, um, same as some some other people um, that have uh, come on. Um, I believe that God has um, it, it interfered with the universe in merely two ways. The first being w with its creation, and, and the second being given, uh, and the second being giving consciousness to uh, humanity, which will be a part of my um, argument for His supposed um uh, existence uh it, it's a very i suppose libertarian um interpretation um i i i, I don't believe that christ uh, was uh, divine so very much from um mainstream christianity there um i hold um quite a lot of views uh, in tension with theism um uh, what, what, you, uh, what is uh, a libertarian? Uh, to, what was a libertarian interpretation? Oh, what does that question. mean? All right. So what, what I mean by that, um, and, and maybe using this term wrong, since um, I did um, get this inter interpretation of the word um, libertarian may have been completely incorrect, but essentially it's um, relating to the question of free will in contrast with um, some. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, libertarian free will, so, gotcha. I was thinking like libertarian, like right. uh, Walter Block, like the like politically. Yes, politically, it's like a libertarian interpretation of religion. That's uh, that's interesting. That's a very odd way to phrase it. Uh, I'm uh, well aware. So essentially, there's free will and there's no it's and for existence. Um, so how that would relate to my philosophy on God, uh, um, for example, is I don't believe that God is um. Um, uh, all knowing. Uh, I believe that he is experiencing our reality um, at, at the same time that, that we are. I don't, I don't believe that. Um, so I don't believe that, that he's a, he's aware of um, the future. I don't believe that, that he's aware of um, our decisions, our choices, but before we make them. So he's very much alongside the ride with us. If um, um, that makes sense. Cool. Uh, so right, what is your what argument uh, for him? All right. So it's very basic and it's it's very easy to, to break apart, of course, since of course the burn of proof issue that, that comes with making any argument for a deity's um, um, supposed uh, existence. So um pretty sure that at least one other person uh, made an, this argument and or at least one similar up to this having to do with consciousness right. um so uh this, this actually is my personal uh this actually uh, personally is it was one of my main um uh uh okay justifications so t t tell us what it is existence that i'll um come back to no, no, don't worry i, I am uh, just making sure that i'm giving enough context here uh all right cool so essentially the physical universe um anything that is created initiated and uh, developed um ha um has its has the mechanism that developed it or entity um, that um, the, the, the developed a system whatever term um that you uh, uh, uh want to use um what shares the same fundamental Properties with it in a sense so there's a very clear connection between um those two. So when you what what two what two so so you said the consciousness you said everything that exists shares fundamental properties is that what you said? Well, uh, well it's uh, um uh, actually no um uh so well, let me get an example here uh. For example, um, let's use photo, photosynthesis here. 
what? Both um, um, the sun and um, a plant on the ground um, have in common as have in common um, inevitably will include that one is using energy f f using e energy from uh, from the the other both have both utilize um, solar energy heat um, heat light etc cetera, etc. Cetera. If we apply that to consciousness, we come into a bit of an issue. Um, if we want to use use science, physics, maybe we want to use physics, um, biology, the chemistry in, in order to explain it. Um, since, as far as we know, and yes. I'm well aware that th this very much is, as far as we know, it is not determined that humanity is one um, grouping in the universe that has consciousness. We don't even know if other animals don't have it. Um, but from my perspective, um, it's very hard, extremely, well, it, it, it's extremely difficult, if not impossible, to justify the existence of consciousness through any natural process that we know of. Again, yes, as we know of, well aware, um, we don't, our current knowledge of science is limited, you know, I, I get that argument there. Do we know but, of any supernatural processes that can explain consciousness? No, we do not. And, and this is the issue with discussing God that's completely inherent to every conversation that we have about it. We're dealing with Pose properties that are separate from physical ones. We can't use science to prove it nor disprove it. So I, 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 I'm not going to claim otherwise. To to claim otherwise would be would be to preempt, preemptively dismantle my entire argument. Okay, uh, so uh, why uh, should we uh, believe that? that consciousness leads to God? Uh, well, uh, it's not so. Uh, hold on. Oh. Uh, Austin, Austin, just to just to so, ask a clear, just to ask a clarifying question. When you're considering consciousness, and look at the things that we have to work with, just look what's in the toolkit. Don't step outside to anything you know that you know is outside or supernatural, or whatever. Just look at what what do we have to work with. We have consciousness itself, the you know, measurable attributes of it. Yeah, you know, what we interpret to be consciousness when when we are one agent looking at another agent, we have human brains. We have brains, right? And then we know that the brain needs to be formed, or uh, basically kind of like developed to a specific point when the consciousness becomes detectable, and that if the brain is damaged or destroyed completely to a degree that the <laughs> that the measurable consciousness or observable consciousness, we say, disappears, right? That's pretty much what we have to work with. All right. Correct. Yeah. Correct. That's where to put it. That's without assuming anything else. We just look at the you look at the what we have in hand. So we, as, as far as we can tell, the scope of neurology, neurophysiology, you know, everything that we've got, we can tell that brains are somehow connected to consciousness. We know that without a brain. This is what we know so far. It's not saying that anything else, just what we have. We know that brains are somehow connected to consciousness and that without a brain, you, there's no consciousness to detect. So there's no reason to think that consciousness is there without a brain. It could be, but we don't know. But we, there's no reason to think that it would be because all of the prevailing circumstances we have would say, okay, so it seems that we need a brain for a consciousness and that if we destroy the brain, we can affect the consciousness in a, a predictable ways. Depending upon how I mess with the brain, I can screw with the consciousness and I can predict the effects in the consciousness by where I stab the brain. And that the brain develops over time as this consciousness in tandem with the brain itself. And then once the brain is destroyed or it dies, the consciousness seemingly disappears. Correct. I agree with and can you no longer be, on all of that. Yeah, it can no longer be observed or measured. So why well, why this okay, so why are we jumping to anything beyond what we have to work with? Very good question uh, and very good explanation of that um, of all those um, examples there. Uh, great job. Um, well, a bit of an assumption there implicitly, and don't worry, maybe wrong. Um, well, aware of that um, that uh, brain is 
Yep, is our primary acting force on consciousness there. Um, well, yes, you're com we, well, 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 yes, you're completely right that um, by affecting the brain in a multitude of, of, of ways, um, go it, parent, neurochemistry, all that jazz, it heavily affects the, the detectable traits that we consider as consciousness. Um, well, if the clear definitions here with consciousness um a bit um oh by consciousness although yes i am somewhat um referring to um that measurable state that is very much really in tension with um the brain with neurology uh with a uh, a uh, 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 psychology um referring to in uh uh, in a sense, a more so higher entity that even though it it can, even though the the the, the broader a broader higher entity that has that aspect of it that can can be affected by physical um, processes, um, um, such as being um, prodding with say the frontal lobe, um, uh, or through genetic. Um, I'm lost. Um, I'm disorders. lost in, in the. I'm lost in the flow of. Right, the <laughs> well, Austin, Austin, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can provide some. Let me see if I can provide a machete to your intellectual thicket. So, take what we have in the box, everything I described, and that's what we have to work with. Okay. Now we can take what we have, and we can hypothesize about things outside of the box. All right. So we've got our we've got our toolkit, and then we can hypothesize about things outside of the toolkit. What would justify us in claiming that anything outside of the toolkit is true? Since what we have with the toolkit, it in itself does not share that similar property um, of. It defines consciousness. That that being, I suppose, in, in this case, for lack of a better term, self awareness. Yes. Oh. All, again, uh, yep. Yeah, uh, all of these ne 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 neurological processes that, that we are able to affect on the ground em 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 every day, <laughs> yeah, you don't have an, an effect on that. But the issue for, for me, at least, is that. Those processes on themselves, the, the very, the very tissue. How do you explain how that leads to something such as, for example, metacognition? I mean, <sighs> well, even if we can't, that wouldn't be evidence of a god. So, say we, there's something right, we can't explain. Not, yes, both sides have again burned a proof again. Jewish all of the. Ultimately, we can hypothesize a lot of things outside of the box. Yes. We can say, right. are we tapping into something? Does the consciousness exist without the mud? Does consciousness exist without the brain? Does it just continue on after the brain has died? But these are hypoth these are hy hy hypotheticals. We're just assuming it's like, hey, well, what if this? What if this? What if this? But I'm also we can ask we can ask these hypotheticizing uh, um, that that the brain has that much of an impact on consciousness. But we know that without yeah. the brain, well, we know we can, we can determine with what we have to work with that without the brain, there is no measurable consciousness. And that if we affect the brain, we can affect the consciousness in very predictable ways. Whether we go right. after the occipital lobe, we go after the temporal lobe, we go after the hippocampus, we go after the brainstem, that we can actually cause predictable outcomes in consciousness if i do this to your brain you will no longer be able to do this consciously or if i do this to your brain this will occur and this will suddenly happen we can we can predict these things so we can conclude from the evidence at hand that the two go hand in hand where where's where okay the, where my conclusion is is essentially i'm in the school of thought that a mind or consciousness is literally the is literally the property of a functioning brain. That's why right. a brain can function in a variety of states, but you can have consciousness in a variety of states as well. 
So functioning right. neurology no. results in a conscious, in a detectable consciousness, just like it's an emergent property of the system, just like a heartbeat is an emergent property of all of the cardiac cells put together to form a heart. Then it receives neural transmission so that the heart beats and it's, it's a completely autonomic process. So the brain itself, by virtue of the system, because the level of consciousness that we have when we're like 40 years old is obviously not the same level of consciousness we have when we are in gestation. So there's a progression there and then a decline as we get older and those cells begin to die off just by virtue of old age. So all of this is understood. We can hypothesize outside of this, but, and sure, that's great. We can do it. It's all thought experiment. It's all fantastic. What justification do we have to accept that any of those hypotheticals are true beyond personal Objectively, design? none. It's all subjective. This merely is my interpretation. It's, uh, yes, both of us agree on all of the facts. And, oh, hold on. D d d I actually, I have a, a, a another question here first. Um, mm -hmm. um, does everybody else um, in the call who's contributing to this discussion share the same um, school thought that uh, JL does on this issue? For the most part. As far yeah. as the mind being dependent upon a physical brain? Yeah. Much. All right, cool. Yeah, so, me too. Yes, I agree with you on all of the uh, all the facts, of all the fundamentals, all these specifics. I, I just personally can't convince myself that something as complicated with as many near infinite possibilities as consciousness, as self-awareness has, can be explained by any process that they were, they were going to find by delving deeper into the um, physical properties of our, uh, um, of our neurology, of the brain. It just, it just seems to be too much of an evolutionary uh, uh, jump. Uh, At one point, the sunrise was equally as complex and unexplainable by the natural world. Have you heard I, of I would, I would, I I will, uh, let me Let me just point out that our intuitions have an incredibly poor track record when it comes to explaining complex issues in our reality. Well, I would actually and agree with I don't with think that we think... should be relying... I think we are going to find something more fundamental, but I think it's going to be a physical thing that we're going to find that's more fundamental in the brain. I don't think we're, we're definitely going to make progress. We definitely don't know everything about the brain. So I agree. We will definitely find things that are more complex and more fundamental than what we currently know about the brain. There's no reason to think it's a soul though. Sure, but his, his, his incredulity is on the issue that yeah. the brain is the, the brain is responsible for producing the consciousness, that consciousness is an emergent property of physical interactions. But I, I will say this much to you, that um, consciousness, w whether or not you agree that it's explicable naturally, the alternative is that it's not explicable at all, because if you're going to posit that a god exists and that he's consciousness, you know, he is conscious, and he created everything, well then all you're doing is just positing that consciousness is the default state of the universe. This is the default state of existence. And it's equally as inexplicable as it was ten minutes ago when we assumed that it was uh, some uh, part of some un uh, unknown natural process. Well, then we're assuming an, an in a more interfering God than, than I initially set up with my explanation of my theology there. So, Does your God have a consciousness? Is it a thinking so, agent? Much of the, um, well, because the answer is either yes or my God. the answer. Also, the answer is either yes or no. Uh, either it's a conscious thinking agent or it's not. If it's not, then it's indistinguishable from just blind natural process. Correct. Uh, oh, all right. Um, yeah, I yeah, um, uh, understand. Um, I mean, there. Uh, um, uh, yes. That's my answer. Yes. All right. In order, in order for uh, consciousness, like consciousness, can't be explained by like some creator deity, regardless of what you believe, because this deity also possesses consciousness. Because a, a a deity can't choose to have consciousness, and you have to have consciousness to make choices. So the mere fact of the matter that this thing is conscious is just a random fact of reality. It's a proof fact. There's no account for why it's conscious. There's no account for why it has an effective will over an ineffective will. 
It just randomly is that way. It's just randomly aware of itself. And therefore, you haven't explained consciousness. If anything, you've added more questions. Yep, yeah, correct. Yeah, so, correct. so very, very the, the mystery of consciousness of can't be solved by a god. Well, the history of human consciousness can be solved by a god, but the entire really, it can? landscape of it of course, cannot. So, yeah. Wait, how, right how, how? How can the explanation... how, how is it explained by God? Uh, I'm pretty sure that we already covered that there. But I, I didn't hear you cover it. Um, all right, cool. Um, uh, or maybe I, I didn't clarify it well enough. <laughs> no, that, you you yeah, might I be able to sure. explain how we, in particular, possess consciousness. That God uh, created us in such a way that we could possess that, but. Consciousness as a separate entity to our physical reality, which is what you're positing, that is not explained. That's just a brute fact of reality. And so you have really no way of determining whether or not God is responsible for facilitating our access to consciousness, or whether or not that's a natural phenomenon that he doesn't have any control over, any more than uh, he has control over his own consciousness. My belief that um, <clears throat> our consciousness um, is... Um, of consequence to um, the actions of God. Now we're getting into pure faith. And now I no longer can argue here in any objective manner. So, but my, my point, Austin, uh, is that even point, if well, I had faith in the God that you believe in, he still wouldn't be a viable explanation for the existence of consciousness. Consciousness would be something that transcends even him. Yeah. Hmm. So why would I bother contemplating the existence of this being if he's not even a useful explanation for this mystery that I've encountered? Well, he's a useful explanation for the mystery on your level, but he's not. A, but he's not a useful explanation for the mystery on your level. Which in, there is no mystery on my level. On his I'm, level, I'm, the, yeah, the mystery on my level is well, is is I have a brain and it has the capacity to. Uh, in, like produce consciousness throughout through the chemical and in, electrical interactions within that organ. No, no different than my my stomach it emerges the pro the. Well, that's uh, the process a whole other digestion. proposition, as we've already clarified. Mm -hmm. No, I mean we've 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 substantiated pretty thoroughly. My that, proposition that, that uh, also we've, we've substantiated pretty thoroughly actions. that human consciousness, human human consciousness has some relationship to the physical brain. Of course. Right? So we don't. That, we don't. We, we don't need to like really on what what that relationship is. So the, mis the mystery there is going to be in the particulars of that relationship. But as far as like where yes. consciousness comes from, God doesn't answer that question, and we already have an answer to the question of how we have consciousness: the brain. What is it not? The exact mechanisms that, that facilitate that, or maybe a, a present mystery. But history shows us that we should be a lot more optimistic in our scientific ability to explore, investigate, and come to conclusions about the natural world. You know, we put a man on the moon 50 years ago. It's it's not exactly a stretch to think that we're going to figure out how consciousness functions in the future. I, I just, I fail to see any, any, any place where you can put your God that he answers questions. I, I fail to see how this doesn't account, uh, how my intuition doesn't count for the existence <clears throat> of human consciousness. I I I, I completely How does it articulate that, that for me? Agree that it doesn't account for the existence of consciousness Ar overall. Articulate how your God accounts for that's completely right. Actually, is a very good counter. But as for human consciousness, how does that not work? Why is there a distinction between human consciousness and other consciousness? Consciousness is just the, the mere ability to be self-aware. Human self consciousness is displayed displayed in physical reality it's constrained by the physical reality according to me to clarify and as of right now i don't have any reason to believe there's anything but the physical reality so this is just more assumptions right. being piled on top of one another right like your, exactly. your initial this... assertion here was that your god has the capacity to explain the mystery of consciousness we've we've now gone through that and have determined that that's not the case and then you've now Correct. moved the goalpost and said that he has the capacity to to explain human consciousness and I don't accept that distinction. Because you've disproven my original claim, and now aware. I'm modulating it, since, no, I'm, I'm really... You're shifting the goalpost. If you want to put it that way, then I guess it... That's I what you're doing. 
Well, 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 how, you, how well, does God explain do, do, human do you want consciousness? To, how, the, the, the how? Hold my same supposed the, the dogmatic position throughout the entire discussion. No, that, that's perfectly fair. So, you've, so you've changed my mind. On that no, no, just calling it consciousness overall and uh, saying that, that it explains the entire mystery doesn't work. And going by your alternative the definition, that consciousness okay. also also includes God's realm. Okay, so, uh, so ex uh, can you explain yeah, so, how does God explain human consciousness? Mechanistically, please. All right. All right. Cool. Because just Definitely. mechanistically, because just saying God did it is not an explanation. All right, mechanistically. Uh, Let's be mindful of the time, too, because there are other uh, people who want to get on stage as well. All right. Um... Oh, if we start get, getting well, well, first of all, what do you mean by mechanistically, um, spe um, specifically? Uh, for, for, going what are the mechanisms that God uses to facilitate yeah. human consciousness? Well, I'm, yes, I'm happy. You, you can explain it any way you want to explain it. Just explain it however you think it's best to explain. Just go, go for it. All right. So, of course, I'm not going to know exactly what these mechanisms are by my own philosophy. Um, but essentially, my belief is that whatever conception occurs um, with in the human reproductive process, um, there is a system outside of the physical universe that mandates that um, um, that uh, what you may call a soul um, uh, um, ends up with a direct. Um, a direct connection to that entity um, um, uh, eh. uh, all right so um and, and then once at the once that organism has fully fully developed um a brain um um that soul then um, has what we would call consciousness in a neurological sense, but it's limited since we're working with the, the, um, the very narrow physics, um, chemistry, um, biology of our physical universe. So, so it's not so. Um, although that that uh, so although consciousness is going is going to be heavily affected by neurology all those natural systems um in, in the physical universe its origin is outside of it okay right. so so the first so, thing that comes to mind for me is that for something to count I as, that question right there? yeah yeah that's good that's good so um for me for something to count as an explanation it has to uh not just be a thing you imagine to do the phenomenons so like i can imagine a leprechaun uh knocked a cup over but that isn't an explanation of of the cup falling over. It's just something I made up. So there's a difference between well, it's explanation. An explanation, but it's not empirical. Well, no, no, no. So, so like there's infinitely many things we can make up to explain everything. Leprechaun did it. The wind did it. The unicorn so fart. My individual interpretation. Right. But, but so the fact that you can make up infinitely many different ways to explain the data means that none of those are actually supported more than the other. So we can make up an Correct. explanation that consciousness is caused just by physical processes emerging from the brain. And that would also be an explanation. But the difference here is that one of those has a lot of evidence and the other one doesn't. I can conduct several experiments off the top of my head to determine whether or not my brain plays a role in my consciousness. Like JL said earlier, you can manipulate the brain using any variation of physical trauma or pharmaceuticals. Again, and... I've already... Result in different that I variations agree with of consciousness. You on all of that. But here's here's another thing that I haven't heard anybody bring up yet is that humans are not exclusively the only conscious uh, organisms on Earth. Uh, in fact, there are several other animals which are close to, if not rivaling, our own uh, self awareness. The only difference is they don't possess the anatomical features to be able to experiment with their environment in the way that we do. So, if I were to That's assume perfect. or to predict that. Uh, you know, the consciousness was a product of biological evolution. It was an emergent property predicated upon a series of chemical and electrical interactions in the brain. I should be able to find animals at various stages of that conscious evolution, which I do. 
I can find different birds, elephants, dolphins, a different species of primate, who are all at different various levels of consciousness. Obvious, hu obviously, humans are at the high, the highest level that we've uh, we've been able to observe so far. And there's even, I would argue, uh, various levels of self awareness between humans. You know, not every not every human is as uh, conscientious as every other human. Some lack that necessary self awareness, which I'm sure we've all encountered. Those types of people, they're usually called presuppositional apologists. But um, <clears throat> there is a there is a gradient here, right? This does appear to be an evolutionary process. It's it's something that starts out simple and becomes complex over time, over a, a great many changes. It's not something that's given to anybody. It's not something that's just granted or anybody just intrinsically has. It's developed. Even within humans, it's developed. Your your capacity for self awareness is fundamentally different than it was twenty years ago, probably depending on how old you are. I know it is for me. So if if the information, very good point. You know, yeah. If 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 my my presumptions about where consciousness comes from, I can make predictions based off those presumptions, and those predictions then come true. That would lead credibility to my my hypothesis about the development of consciousness and where it comes from. It's a perfectly it's both, it's both a perfectly fair, but also has a button of scientific back, backing um, um, of a hypothesis there. I, uh, yeah, um, and there's no real reason not to believe in that, um, aside from personal subjective caution. And I will admit that uh, that this, the entire predication for my broader point here is based on my own personal caution that is far more than what you should, uh, appear to have. Um, it's, it's, it's very much philosophical there's not that much basis for it and you're completely right on that and it and from a scientific viewpoint it makes far more sense to, to just assume that there's some um process or series of processes that leads to what we see as consciousness as self-awareness as meta metacognition as all of these supposedly um unexplainable uh, unexplainable processes we're just going to find it there and i have complete respect for anyone and everyone who believes in that even though i am a staunch well not entirely staunch sometimes pretty um, agnostic theist i have complete respect for that um and even though i clearly am not going to be convinced uh, to be convincing you of whether or not a deity exists which is perfectly fine um uh i am glad that we've gone to have this um, very um, informative and enlightening, at least for me, uh, um, discussion on uh, what's usually very um, down um, and dogmatic uh, uh, topic. Thanks. Uh, now, considering how many people um, also have been spending a whole bunch of time um, with their hands up, so from the looks of it, not, not as much time as me, which is no issue. Um, I'm going to be uh, I'm leaving now. Ugh. Austin, thank you. thank you so much for joining us. It was a good conversation. We appreciate the honesty. All right. Yeah, we've, got two... yeah. well, we've got two more okay. in queue. We were trying to finish it four hours today, but it looks like it's going to be five hours. Um, I have okay. pizza. Yeah, it's totally fine. I have pizza. Come on up. Oh. Hey. hey. Hey, what's up? Well, Hello. I don't think you know what the subject of this program is. Uh, what have you got for us? All right. Um, first of all, I need to put this on speaker. I don't know how to do that. Or do I have to, like, kind of hold it up to my ear now? We can hear you just fine. Okay. So, here's the thing. Um, so, there is one theory that I kind of have been playing with in my head. And I'm not sure if you heard of the single electron theory. Yep, I've heard of that, it. That, like, every single thing in the world and every single thing in the universe is all trapped in a I've single electron. What? <laughs> Pardon me. I thought about this when I was a kid. So, uh, yeah, these are kind of fun ideas. What, what are you thinking of this? Does this somehow lead to proof of a goddess or a god? Well... The big thing is that 
if we are in an electron, that would have to mean that we are in an atom. And if we were in an atom, that would mean that we'd have to be in, like, in an object of mass. Of course, we can't really say that... Okay. Of course, we can't really say that whether that piece of mass is a living thing or like a cube or whatever. But something had to create that mass, which is how I believe that would be a proof of God existing. Why? Why couldn't it have just existed forever or been created by a natural force that isn't a god? Because... The... All right, hold on. Okay. Because the second law of thermodynamics um, indicates that something cannot just poof into existence. Uh, the second yeah. law of thermodynamics says Wait, not that... the second law... Oh my god! No, that's I, the law of entropy. Oh my god! That's, that's no, the second okay. law. I think, yeah, second I law think of you're referring to the first law. The f yeah, the, the first law. First who, law. Who sent you notes that you're reading off of, or did you write this down while you were in you? Oh, I was just no. I just kind of had it off my brain. It sounded okay. a lot smarter than I thought. It, it sounded a lot smarter than it. So, so the you first, know, head, the first, the the first law of thermodynamics is energy cannot be created or destroyed, but nobody thinks that happens. So you can have displacements where there's a large group of energy that's a positive set and a large group that's a negative set, and then when you add together, they equate to zero. And so nothing's been created or destroyed, it's just been moved. That's what the Big Bang is, essentially. So no one thinks it was ever created in physics. It just had a, a state change transformational see okay so, so it is diving, in, diving into topics such as these is really important to, to it's really important that you have a grasp of the the finer points of like the laws of thermodynamics and um it, it's an interesting idea and uh, it, it's one that i considered when i was really young i i never thought of it as the electrons being created by God or anything, and I wondered if our universe might be different if we were in a proton instead of an electron or a neutron or something. <laughs> um, the, the, I guess we're, we can accept this idea. It, it's fine. I mean, the, the, the problem is how you get from us being an electron, let's say we accept that, uh, to uh, a deity creating this electron. That, that's, I think, that's the connecting point that we're looking for. So here's the thing. Um, I think that this might be a little bit crazy. Maybe we might be God. How do we create electrons? Okay. Um, you know, by heating. Okay, I'm so sorry. This is kind of a... Oh, no, you don't have to apologize. This is uh, the whole point of this to have these conversations. And uh, what you've brought is a unique idea that uh, nobody else has brought in this show so far. So you're doing great. So it's not necessarily that we were creating electrons. It's just that we kind of exist within. Like, it's like the thing. The one I started describing the thing about mass and amongst other things. It might either have to be created by God, or sh can be that we are a part of God. What evidence leads you to that conclusion? Um, so... Uh, so, like, we have... I don't really think that... The thing is that there's it hasn't really been explored a lot. So let me let me uh, let me try this. Is this uh, from your perspective? Is this really more of a of a faith based position? Well, there has been effort. I mean, there has been like you know evidence in psychology, and whatnot. Like for example, you are how you think, and your world is based on how you think um, is going to happen. And basically, what. And basically, um, which, I mean, there is a study where people, okay, there was a study where people, um, like, were tested for heart disease, like, when they were in their 20s, and then um, one of them, like, got told that they were, 
like at risk for heart disease. And uh, you're getting toward the psychosomatic effects, and yeah, the the way we think about ourselves uh, can uh, definitely influence uh, the quality of our lives, but the environment around us also influences how we think. There's somebody in the YouTube chat named uh, Aaron Reese who has just uh, suggested to me that someone should refer you to pantheism because that's where you're heading, but perhaps you're not aware of that. Um, I I'm not so sure if that's the case for you, but um, I just thought I would share that with you. I, I think you are right that this is an area that people probably don't discuss very often. Um, again, the, the the connecting point that seems to be missing here, and, and your ideas are very interesting, uh, is that uh, between a god creating this whole universe as an electron or whatever form it's in, um, and the electron itself, so the electron and god creating it, that the creating part is, is where we're stuck. This is the part that that that's missing from this. The rest of the idea, I think you explained it just fine. Okay. Um, I think another way that I can see some evidence that universe might have been created is there was like a lot of um. We have. Okay, have you ever noticed that our lungs, our brain, um trees amongst um okay okay calm down alone this is not oh, okay sorry no, um, no, no. Take, take a pizza. breath take a, for, formulate your thought yeah, here, right. here's what i suggest just imagine we're all just kind of sitting around in a park enjoying a barbecue okay i am actually eating some barbecue brisket right now all right so it's more than just an imagination here at this point <laughs> right. welcome to our barbecue it's very tasty. Thank you. I would love to have some brisket. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's mine. You can't have it. Ooh. <laughs> so, um, the main idea is that we always, we kind of have a lot of um, patterns that are rather similar in our environment and in ourselves, as well as in our DNA, and as well as like every other, the DNA of was every other living thing ever so you're, um, you're talking about like the the similarity uh the the somewhat similar structures in living organisms on earth yes okay so we understand that evolutionary pressures result and natural selection result in certain traits being optimal for survival and other traits being non-optimal for survival this uh, selective, this is what we call selective pressures, positive selective, selective pressures and negative selective pressures. If one particular set of pressures, it was essentially, let's start at the beginning. So if all species on the planet derive, which you know, the, the model say that we all derive from the same organ, from pretty much the same thing, follow the same path and the circumstances of the planet, the evolutionary pressures pretty much apply all over the place. And one particular structure that uh, that proves the most optimal for survival amongst species. If that turns out to be the same, would that not be a result confirming that these were the things that were selected to survive and that things operate differently depending upon their environment did not, which is why respiratory systems in mammals look very similar. Respiratory systems in fish are all pretty much similar. It's because those are the systems that were optimal for surviving in those particular environments. Right. And I was about to say that we all kind of have the same, I mean, even though we do have um, environmental selective pressures and even like epigenetics, for example, we might, we all have like the same um, codons, basically. But it's actually kind of, I mean, but even then, I feel like that's kind of a little bit debatable. Well, it's not debatable. It's actually. Um, well, we're carbon based and we're products of chemistry and we all put in everything living possesses DNA. Or everything that, you know, every organism on this planet you know, possesses DNA. So it all derives back to the, to what you call the, the LUCA or whatever you say, but the phylogenetic tree all. So if we're all composed of DNA and that DNA is subject to selective pressures, 
and then one particular or you know like, uh, depending upon where you're at those selective pressures you know select for a particular uh structure that is optimal yeah. for survival then the members of that uh family or the members of that species or however you want to delineate it would uh, would kind of operate the same because that's the system that works which is why we have mammals that breathe air and have lungs and then we have amphibians that do as well but are, are semi-aquatic and then we have fish that need gills so are we gonna wrap up was, uh soon oh yeah um i was trying to tell him that we, i was i was trying to tell him this um i was going to say that due to the i was thinking that um are your dna um that basically we are literally re um created as a program with things like our DNA as a code. And DNA like, is the result of abiogenesis. It's a natural process. We weren't created. Okay. I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> okay. Um. Well, I guess I Thank should you. probably go. Okay, well, you know, it was a pleasure. Uh, if if you'd like to come on and expand on this idea again in the future, you'd certainly be welcome. All right. Appreciate your time and effort. Thank you. Thanks. It was an interesting idea. Keep asking questions. All right. Yeah, um, appreciate it. I uh, kind of screwed up. I should be more prepared for these. It's okay. Fine. These, these are casual. It's okay. Well, thank you for coming up. We do appreciate you coming up. Um, we, we're going to start closing down here. Uh, we're going to pull up Hacker. Hacker has been in queue for a while. Um, after Hacker, we'll go ahead and call it. Uh, we'll put a hard stop at, at like 10 minutes from now. So if, if we're still going like 10 minutes, we'll go ahead and stop it there. Um, but Hacker, come on up. Uh, we're we're kind of beat. It's been a it's five hours, you know. But thanks Hello, for Hacker. listening, everybody. And, and welcome, Hacker. Welcome. Uh, we can't hear you. Okay, on to the next one, I guess. I, I guess we can bring up Booney. Booney was actually in queue a lot earlier for a while. What's going on, Booney? Hello, Booney. Uh, no mic. Hacker, uh, hacker's saying that he's fixing his mic in the chat. Oh. No problem. <clears throat> and Booney's mic is also not working. All right, I guess I we're on the floor. Discord. I think that's a problem with cell phones and Discord. It makes you like it reload it. There's similar issues with like StreamYard and cell phones. So it seems like it's Discord and cell phones. From what I've seen, I'm sure StreamYard does too. But who's next? Is shall we bring up Polar? Sure, Polar. Come Can on, try Hacker again. Did Hacker I, fix I, his I don't mic? See him with... Hello, oh, Polar. Man. Welcome. No, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. How's it going? What you yeah. got for us today? Yeah. You can speak up a little bit. That right. would help. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Uh, sorry, my mic was up before. Uh, so my argument that God exists is, first of all, what does it mean to actually exist? Because they're... Well, okay, this is going to get a little bit philosophical. To exist means to have a place in somebody's mind. Like, I think that there might be life on Mars, and there exists life on Mars in my head. It, can this not be... a uh, plausible argument uh it exists means it's a part of reality you well, part of reality is i'm sorry my english is not that good uh yeah. oh shit okay gotta go it sounds uh, fine you're you're swearing like a native person uh a native english speaker <laughs> sorry have a good one that's good then yeah Okay, so right. they insulted right. their own ability to speak English, and we can try... Booney, hello, welcome back. Nope. <laughs> okay, Booney, it's still not working. Hacker, all right. All right, so uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Welcome, thank you for joining us. 
Uh, you're welcome. Uh, so this will be short, be, uh, and I'd like to get uh, T Jump's take on this because I know he's one of the uh, uh, debate bro, uh, philoso kings of debate the internet. Debate me, bro. But uh, no, yeah, sure. But I basically believe in a deistic god. Um, and looking at what we've seen from the cosmic microwave background radiation that manifested. I think 400,000 years after the initial expanse of subatomic particles and their respective wave functions of the Big Bang, I just think there had to be a mover uh, to move those first elementary things into existence. And, you know, like, Why? there had to be something. So are you thinking there was only one Big Bang? One Big to produce this universe. Okay, so um, Penrose and Hawking did update the theory to support multiple Big Bangs happening simultaneously so that uh, it could be consistent with quantum physics. Um, does your idea need to be adapted to uh, consider this? Well, I, I, I still want to know why do you think you need a first mover? Like, what, what is it in the CMB that indicates first mover? Like, something had to manifest that into existence. Right? Sure. Because so, I think it was a quantum field. I don't think it was a god. Why would you think it was a god? Well, I, when I define god, especially in this context, I just mean a creator of the universe. Like, are you saying the quantum field manifested itself and its own particles into existence? Well, the quantum field created all the particles, the space, and the time. So, space, time, and matter were all created things that came about from fluctuations in the quantum field uh, there's no mind in the quantum field there's no consciousness yeah i don't think it really necessitates a consciousness or a mind i'm not really like um, an adherent of that unitarian philosophy but unitarian. you're saying that like as if this god is a mind but are you saying that the quantum field i guess created all particles but you know what gave way to the quantum field you know it, it's always existing it never would be my question exist. the quantum field has always been there it never didn't beginningless are you saying the quantum field is eternal yes or it could be outside of space time is a better way to phrase it well you know in response i could say to that like if the quantum field was in its and of itself eternal, did it take for us? Did it take an eternal amount of time before we had this conversation? Like, no. did it exist eternally before this point? No, because uh, just like even though there's an infinite amount of ways a particle can decay, like a uranium particle, um, the quantum field picks a specific time to to cause the decay. So, even though there's infinite amounts of times it could decay. It picks a specific time through the quantum fluctuations. Similarly, the way the Big Bang was created at one particular time, rather than any of the infinite past particular times, is simply because the quantum field fluctuated in such a way that it caused it to happen then and not at a different time, even though there's infinitely many times. So it's like if I pick the number 47, there's infinitely many numbers before 47, but I picked 47. So it's the fact that there's infinitely many things before it doesn't mean you can't pick 47. You should have picked 42. I'm just uh, kidding. I think, and I think using the, using the word pick might be, might be confusing. Like, like, if you were to say like if 47 was the number, 47 was the number where it occurs. Sure. So it doesn't like say, hmm, I think I'm going to do 47 today. And then we've got everything. Just that's where that's where it occurred. Yeah, so I guess T Jump is saying that we're experiencing this specific point in time, even though time is eternal and forever continuous. Um sort I just of haven't heard this one before. Well, I mean, I think time had a beginning at the Big Bang. It's a time, space time is a field, and that field was created at the beginning of the Big Bang, and the quantum field exists outside of space and time. Um, okay, like, I, I'm, I think you think, I, th no, yeah, 
I think you think I think God is a mind. Um, and we don't necessarily know that yet. Um, like, I don't know if he's omnipotent or omniscient or whatever properties theists commonly associate with a creator. But I think there had to be some sort of mover um, to necessitate where we exist in space-time. Is that reasonable? Uh, sort of. I mean, if you think that the two options are there's an infinite past and the second one is that there's a a thing that has existed either necessarily or as a brute fact. So you can pick any of those you want. None of those indicate a conscious mind. And that's as long as you don't think it's a conscious mind, that's fine. I just wouldn't call it God. Are you defining God in this instance as just any creator or something more than that? A non-physical mind that created the universe, everything other than itself. Yeah, I don't know if there was a mind involved, um, because knowing the way planets and life are created, it seems like uh, a much more chaotic hodgepodge of things existing at once, rather than something organized and succinct. But... Right, so what you're saying it, is just there was a thing in nature, and it started the chain of nature stuff, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Like, there was a thing to first manifest um, what we would come to know as the universe, essentially. Yes, that is one of the hypotheses. Do you agree with that? I... Uh, I go with the consensus in physics that an infinite regress is the best explanation. Well, okay. Um, can I, can I, I ask you well, a quick question? When it when when you say there had to have been a creator to make sure that we exist in this point in time, that would entail that that creator had an end goal which is us cre being created in this point in space and time, that would entail that that God needs to have a mind because otherwise he couldn't have formed an end goal, let alone coming up with something to get there. I don't think um, so. I don't think his definition of creator yeah. has any intent or desires. No, 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 but he, and I got that from the conversation, but he also said in us, in order for us to be here at this moment in time, there had to be a creator. I, I think that's if, the infinite regress. If argument. We are supposed to be here in this moment in no, time. No, Peter, Peter that's the and, infinite regress argument. So the infinite regress argument is that if there's an infinite number of things of points in time before us, if you start at those and started to count, like from negative infinity and just started to count up, you'd never get to 100 because there's infinitely many numbers yeah, of points. That's not at all what I meant. That's, that's what he meant. That's that's his meant. argument. His argument is that if there's an infinitely number of past points and you start time at, at somewhere in the past negative infinity, it will never reach the current time. Um, Maybe maybe Hacker can answer my question because I'm I'm be very curious what what you think of my question. Uh, I don't really know where you're getting the idea of an end goal from. My general thought on this is maybe, that maybe I misunderstood then. So you're not saying that that the creator made sure that we existed at this point in time, not at any other point in time. Um, we, I don't think we have any way of knowing as to whether a creator intended a, for us to exist in this specific time frame, but like, there had to be something, things exist, obviously, so there had to be something, not necessarily a mind, but something to necessitate that, and, you know, if you think that it was the quantum field in and of itself to manifest that, then yeah, I, I guess that, what... That would be what I mean by God, quote unquote, in this instance. But yeah. Um. So you just defined okay. it. Well, like, are we um, in agreement with this? Um, 
you just if you just want to call the fundamental thing God, sure. The, a creator. We don't know if it has a mind or not, but you know, like if first. Yeah, I wouldn't right. call it a creator. So I'd just say the quantum field is what um, was the original foundational thing in reality, but I don't think it is the creator because creator the word yeah. creator has a connotation of a mind so when i use the word creator i use it exclusively to refer to a mind with intentions yeah okay i think i, I can't i can't get further than just a first cause there's nothing we know about this cause whether or not it created something or it caused something to uh come out of something else but we're still at the first cause thing um, yeah, like, I think it's just a semantical disagreement because T-Jump says that the creator implies a mind, but yeah, I don't think there's any way of knowing that, and that's just uh, my opinion, so. I think, I think overall, since, since everything I do and have done to sustain my life was creating things, I think creator has has some kind of meaning it it also means that you have an end goal when you start creating even though the the goal may end up differently while you're creating but you have to start out with something knowing yeah. that you're going to create something yeah we have, have, have no an way... idea uh, we uh and that... i agree we have no way of knowing what the creator's intention is if there is a creator but exactly so that's that's why i think that the, the thing you came up with is more along the lines of a first cause not necessarily a creator yeah because... i just believe in a first cause no. okay something to necessitate the universe cool oh, that's it well, thank you for coming up. Um, everybody, thank you for hanging out and enjoying the stage. Everybody's links is in uh -oh. Heathen Hangout. The people who aren't yet will be posted in there. Uh -oh. I know. I think I forgot. Uh -oh. to yeah. What's up, Randolph? Oh, sorry. No, never mind. They just put their hand down. I thought that would be a quick one. That's no problem. Carry on. Carry on. Oh, no problem. No problem. And uh, I know I forgot to put Peter's on there, so I'll get Peter's updated and pinned. Ethan Hanger channel will be around for a little while, so make sure you guys click all their links. Uh, Xerxes, if you put a link in there, I'll pin it as well. Uh, and then Randolph and T Jump, you guys want to close out for your viewers? Go ahead, T Jump, because I'm going to close my stream after everybody else has finished talking. Sure. Uh, check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash T Jump. I do lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. And uh, uh, JL Warren, did you have some final thoughts? Yeah, yeah. So uh, appreciate everybody coming out. Thank you so much. This has been a really, really good one. Uh, more positive experience than some other things, but this overall was a was a fantastic stage. Thank you to everybody that came up, and uh, everybody in my live chat as well. I appreciate you all uh, coming out, and hanging out with me. And that uh, we do this every two weeks. Uh, so if you like what you heard and uh, you want to see content that's uh, along these same lines, check out my channel, Bridge the Divide. And uh, you'll, you'll find the link there, and you can subscribe there if you dig it. And uh, I'll see you in the live chats. Thanks so much. You mentioned two weeks, which is correct, and uh, that we've been mostly marketing this as a fortnightly program. So every fortnight or every two weeks. And mm -hmm. we've had a number of people uh, comment that uh, they've learned the new word, fortnight, just because of this show. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that uh, people find this interesting. Um, Peter, did you have some final thoughts? Um, one mainly, and that is that um, ever since I've joined, and I, I can't tell whether or not yet that has happened for the other people as well, uh, during the show, we have people on, and then they will contact me in DM uh, with uh, just complimenting on the show and, and having had a nice conversation which I think speaks to the show and speaks to the the goal that we have, uh, wh why we do this. So I want to thank everyone who came on. 
uh, whether or not they they got back to me in DM or not. I really appreciate the people who come on and want to have uh, a good cordial conversation about it. Uh, it's it's not about winning something. It is about bouncing ideas off each other and see whether or not they hold water. And um, I truly enjoy coming on these. Uh, if people want to check me out, you can find me on youtube.com. I'm going to go for it. Or as a producer on, on several other channels. Thank you, Peter. And uh, yes, I've received some as well. I know Taco has. I'm, I'm sure everybody's received some uh, uh, messages, people giving us feedback on the show. Most of it's positive. Um, Jack Burton. My, my paradigm is still blown because we got Otangelo to admit he needs to do more work. I'm just... I, I still, that, was, that was great. I, I thought that was... I thought that was very... <laughs> That was very good, actually. I, I liked that. Uh, Jack, did you have some final thoughts from the Pork Chop Express? Oh, yeah. I uh, want to thank all the uh, trolls and the precepts, but I repeat myself, <laughs> <laughs> for uh, being so manageable. And uh, thanks for all the keyboard warriors out there for uh, helping me hone my typing skills. Yeah, you were busy today in, in the live chat on Discord there. I saw you uh, going back and forth with people quite a bit. <laughs> But the important question, have you finished your drink? I know Randall spends a lot of time creating a new one for every single show, so I think so much. Bottomless that. glass. <laughs> it's a different color. Is the, time, is the drink ever really finished? I got to figure out something else to change. Some, some people have noticed, but uh, they weren't quite sure if it was intentional. Uh, it was. Um, thank you, everybody. Uh, King uh, Xerxes, uh, maybe you can teach us how to pronounce your name properly and uh, give us some final thoughts. Xerxes. Xerxes, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit of an oxymoron because King Xerxes is the name of a Persian king who was featured in the Book of Esther in the Bible. A little bit of an inside joke between me and another user. But um, no final thoughts where this was actually one of the first uh, full-length stages I was able to participate in. And it will probably be the last for quite a while. However, I am pretty frequently active in the Discord servers. So if you guys ever want to chat with me or engage with me about a subject, then you'll probably find me two, three times a week in T-Jump's room here on politics or in any of the other major debate servers <clears throat> i also have a youtube channel which i'm fairly certain taco is going to link to you guys so subscribe to me if you want to hear some more that's how that to me by the way the uh I, the and way. I put it in the in the chat on uh, randolph okay. stream as well yeah by the way these, these links will all be in the youtube video description and uh, as we always include, uh, and we'll be adding King Xerxes in there as well, because uh, I didn't have this uh, ahead of time. So uh, thank you, uh, Taco. You're the one who's organized this. Um, before I uh, uh, before I say some final words, because I'm live streaming this, I'd just like you to give us some final thoughts. Holy crap, you guys made some progress today. Well... I mean, I'd, I'd talk more about y'all are amazing, but uh, y'all made some progress today with a couple of people, Otangelo for one, and then the other gentleman who you um, got to acknowledge that uh, you changed his position some, which was huge. So good job there. That's the first time I've heard that in a few weeks. Um, but that's everything I've got. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. This was fun as always. Okay, yeah, well, thank you to everybody, and thank you for everyone in the audiences for tuning in on the live YouTube stream and the live uh, Discord chat. Uh, my uh, website is at www.youtube.com slash Randolph Richardson, and that's spelled R-A-N-D-O-L-F, no matter what autocorrect tells you. Um, there, We also have a Discord uh, here. This is hosted in the Politics Discord, which you can get to it. Uh, discord.gg slash politics. Uh, we're grateful for them hosting this They've uh, and providing a platform for us with a large audience. Uh, it, it's been fantastic. They've been great hosts. So thank you very, very much to Politics Discord for, for this. Um, 
uh, I also have a Discord for the Canadian Atheists. At uh, You can just type into your web browser, discord.canadianatheists.ca, and it will take you there. It will set up the invite. And uh, if uh, people would like to uh, uh, see us again, we'll be here in a fortnight from now, two weeks from now. Uh, thank you once again to everybody, and uh, I hope everybody has a great rest of the weekend. Take care. Thanks, y'all. Thank you, everyone. We're closing out the stage now. Bye, everyone. Nap time. <laughs>